Over the past year, I've purchased many consoles from DK Oldies while also diving into their business practices to see what was really going on behind the scenes. And in this video, we're gonna go through everything and see if they're worth buying from. So guys, welcome to the full compilation of the DK Oldies saga. So I bought this refurbished PS3 from DK Oldies and in this video, we're gonna see if they actually refurbished anything and if it's worth the $300 price point. All right, so here's the box they sent me. Let's go ahead and open it up. All right, so open it up from the side. We've got some paper in here. We've also got my order details. So here's my order slip, and I bought two complete in box games, one game only, and then of course the PS3 Slim 120 gigabyte complete in box. So we're gonna see if it's actually complete in box and see what kind of condition it's in. It's supposedly refurbished, so we're gonna open it up and everything and see if they refurbished anything. But here's how it's looking in there. Wrapped up in bubble wrap. We'll take that out, see how it looks. All right, here's two of our games, and maybe the maybe the disc only is in one of these cases, but we'll we'll take a look in a second. So packaging wasn't anything special, but it was good enough to get here in, in good condition so far. We got our two games. I'm getting a look at these actually. So uh, Uncharted 3 is supposed to be in very good condition. It, from the outside it is. We've got our manual, got our game. And we're gonna check and see what kind of condition the disc is in. Looks really nice. It's good to see them. We got Call of Duty Black Ops, which should have, there we go. We got our disc only game. We also have our complete in box game with our manual, our disc. Disc looks pretty good. And then we'll take a look at the disc only game as well. All right, so yeah, that one looks pretty good as well. Cool, so the games are good. We'll test them out, of course. And here is our complete in box 120 gigabyte PS3. Now, if you don't know who DK Audis is, they're an online retro gaming website where you can buy uh, basically retro video games, pretty large inventory of stuff. Now they're known for having really high prices. Uh, just for reference, I paid about 300 bucks for this. I'm talking about that PS triple. And I actually sold a console on my website almost just like this for about 150 a couple months ago. Yeah, so their prices are pretty high if you compare them to like eBay and stuff. But let's go ahead and take a look at what they sent us here. So this one's supposed to be complete in box. And so far, each side of the box looks good. Great games for PS3. You got Infamous, Madden, NFL 10, Tekken 6, Mag, Uncharted 2. Some good stuff there. Now let's go ahead and see what's inside of here. Got a little bit of tape to hold it shut. To be honest, I'm not a huge fan of when shipping tape is put on these things because um, it kind of, you know, just creates some more tape on these outer boxes. So looking down inside of here, I see a few things. Hard to tell exactly what's in there. So let's go ahead and turn it on its side and see what's in here. And I'm curious if it's actually, you know, fully complete in box because you can buy consoles with a bunch of stuff in the box, but not quite complete. So we're gonna see if we have like all the manuals and controller and all that stuff. If I can get anything out, let's see. It's kind of stuck in there, honestly. All right, so I finally got the DualShock 3 out and, oh, it doesn't look the best. I'll take a closer look in a second. We've got some manuals. We got whatever that is. Blue, we got a manual for the Bluetooth headset. I don't know if there's actually a Bluetooth headset in here. And then down this socket right here, we've got cords, more cords, and, oh, oh, hold on. That's weird. <laughs> we have like a is this an old, no, that's not the same. This is looks like a PS2 maybe. There's a random trigger just sitting in the box. That's weird. And there's our console. And then one more thing in here, we have our Netflix streaming little pamphlet there. Um, it does appear that all the cardboard's in there. Now let's take a look and see what exactly was included. So actually the first thing we should do here is look at what's supposed to be included. So we should have the system, the DualShock 3, AC power cable, AV cable, USB cable, printed materials, and yeah, so that should be it. Now let's take a look and see if that's what's included. All right, so here's our printed materials. We've got our uh, quick start guide, all that good stuff. Actually still sealed, that's good to see. We've got this little Netflix thing here. We have a mini USB charging cable here, and it's like the thinnest cord I've ever seen in my life, but as long as it works, that's fine. We've got our power cable here, which I'm being nitpicky here, but I think it's a bit sloppy to not have a rubber band or zip tie around this, just kind of tossed in there. Not a big deal though, obviously. Uh, Bluetooth headset manual, not sure why that made it in there. And then we have our uh, AV cable. So I don't think the PS3 and 360 consoles came with HDMI cables, even though you can use HDMI cables, obviously. And then here's the controller, and it's actually a bit dirtier than I was expecting. So let me zoom in and show you guys. All right, so here's the controller, and looking closely, it actually looks pretty dirty. And I, it's hard to tell if it's dirt or like cardboard dust. My theory is that maybe in shipping, it was rubbing against the cardboard and got a bunch of cardboard dust like ingrained in these thumbsticks, but the, the thumbsticks are like, almost brownish because of the cardboard like threads ingrained into it. And then uh, looking around the controller, it looks kind of like dusty from the cardboard. I'm assuming it's from the cardboard, it might just be dust in general. Looking at the sides, we actually have some some gamer juice in the sides, <laughs> which is some dirt. Now I'm being nitpicky here because this costs so much and it's not in quite as good a condition as I would have expected it to be, honestly. So moving on to the console now, we do still have it wrapped, which is good to see. And then I'll take a look at this thing. So first of all, 
uh, like I said, it's supposedly refurbished. Um, now, refurbished is a weird word because usually when you refurbish stuff, you open it up and clean out the insides. Now, clearly this thing has not been opened up because you still have your warranty seal. So um, I'm okay with it not being opened up if it's still got the seal and it's working, but I'm not quite sure if it should be called refurbished. Now, just looking closely at this console, looks good on the top, no scratches at all. Looking at the side, got a few like smudges and stuff, but nothing crazy. And then same thing looking at this side, got some smudges and stuff, but nothing too crazy. And then here in the bottom, it looks good as well. No scratches at all. And then looking at the back, it looks good as well. And you can see our model number is CECH2001A. And then last thing to look at is down here on the top slash front. We got a little glossy spot right here, which uh, looks like it's got fingerprints and dirt on it and stuff. There's actually some dirt ingrained in here, which to be honest, like if it's refurbished, I thought that would have been cleaned out. I, again, I'm being nitpicky, but I'm being nitpicky because of how expensive this console was. So let me let me just zoom in, zoom in a bit more. Yeah, so looking at it, you got dirt ingrained all the way around those cracks there and also in this, the disc slot right there. Uh, so I thought that would have been cleaned out considering how much it cost, but you know, not a, not a huge deal. So now let's move on to the true test, which is if this thing works. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see what it does. So we're booted up into the console now and unfortunately I lost some of my recordings, so I'm gonna show you some stuff I did. So first of all, I booted up and I scrolled down to uh, system settings and then go to system information, it'll show us our software version. So when I booted up, we were on 4.082, which is pretty recent, uh, but I updated to 4.89. We also have 111 gigs of free space, which which sounds accurate because we should have 120 on this. And, and there's always a little bit taken up in the console, so 111 sounds about right. And I'm gonna try to connect to the internet, so I already well, connected to the internet. We're gonna see if it actually works though. Make sure we're not like banned or anything. So um, internet browser is working. It's kind of ridiculous using the, uh, oh, hold up, page cannot be displayed. Kind of ridiculous using the, uh, the built-in web browser on PS3 in 2022. It's just like so pointless because it's so, so ancient. But why is, why was that not working? That's weird. So it loads up the Google search. That's odd, but let me try to connect to the PlayStation services and we'll see if we can like download some stuff. So I tried to boot up the store and it says the service is currently undergoing maintenance, which I don't quite believe right in the middle of the day. Um, so I'm going to search this online and see if this is a certain problem on the PS3. So after messing around for a little while, it looks like I just needed to update my date and time. And now the PlayStation Store is updating or up, opening up now. Pretty weird issue, but uh, you would have you thought I would have updated my time automatically, which I even had it set to automatic, but I had to like go manually do it. And now it's now it's loading up. And here we are, the PlayStation Store is working, and I have a PS4 bundle. Oh, nice. So <laughs> they take you straight to this site to buy, buy a PS4, and uh, I'm sure that site, I'm sure that page has been there for, you know, a decade now when the PS4 came out. All right, cool. So the store is working. Let's go back, and let's try out a game. So I have three games like you saw. We got Black Ops 2, disc only, Black, or excuse me, just Black Ops, disc only, Black Ops, uh, complete in box, and then also Uncharted 3. We'll try out Uncharted 3 first, and we'll see if it loads up. I think it's pretty dang loud, but I think that's just the normal noise for the PS3 disc drive. And uh, man, the, the more I look at this controller, the more unimpressed I am. There's just like dirt in all the crevices, uh, dust in all the crevices. There's actually dirt around a lot of these triggers and the edges of the of the, of the controller, which like like I said, it's a refurbished console. It's what did they refurbish if it's got dirt all over it? I don't. I don't know. I mean, like, I mean, I sell stuff for half this price and, and clean it up better than this. But I mean, like I said, I'm being nitpicky, but I got to be nitpicky for something that costs double market value. So, all right, we're finally into the game. It took me like half an hour to get into this game. Uh, first of all, you got to install the game. Well, actually, you don't even uninstall it. You just install an update. And then it took like a whole five minutes for the game to load up, which I I was trying to look it up to see if that's normal. I don't know if we have a bad disk drive or if just I don't remember how long it took PS3 games to load up. Or maybe it's just Uncharted 3 in general. Um, it's, it took forever to load up, but we're finally playing. The Uncharted games in general are some of my favorite games of all time. Uh, they're really basic, but they're they're just fun games, adventure games. You don't have to think too hard when you're playing. Got some nice combat, good visuals, especially once you get to the PS4 games. And uh, just like interesting stories. Honestly, I don't even remember exactly what happens, except that I hunt for treasure for, you know, hours on end and then beat up some bad guys in the forest. It's very, very movie-esque, which is why they have a, Uncharted movie now, but uh, yeah, fun games. I'm trying to punch Sully now. It won't let me though. <laughs> but this game seems to work. Ooh, that hurts. This game seems to work. Let's go back to the main menu, and I'm gonna try out Black Ops as well. I don't see why it won't work because Blu-ray games in general, or PS3, PS4, that sort of thing, with Blu-ray discs are like, you know, 99% of the time they work just fine as long as they uh, don't have any crazy scratches because uh, they have that nice coating on them, which which really helps out. So I'm actually gonna try out Black Ops later. I'm like 99% sure that the game will work fine. Uh, cause like I said, Blu-rays work like 99% of the time, as long as there's no crazy scratches, 
But what we're gonna do next is try to PS1 game because I almost forgot PS3 game, PS3 consoles can play PS1 games. So we're gonna try that out. Try out Gran Turismo 2. See if it loads up and works. All right, we gotta create an internal memory card for our PlayStation game. Oh, so that's actually interesting. It lets you create an internal memory card for the PS2, even though the PS3 Slim cannot play PS2 games. That's that's interesting. This internal PS2 memory card is actually just so you can save your games when you're downloading like PS2 games on the PlayStation Store. Yeah, they had some PS2 games on PlayStation Store if you didn't know. All right, so Gran Turismo 2 is working as well. Uh, not surprising, but it does work. And yeah, so what I wanted to do next was open up the console and take a look at the inside and see if they actually refurbished anything inside. But obviously they did not because the warranty seal is still intact. Let me just let me just show that to you in a second. So if we flip this upside down, you can see right here, this is the, uh, you open this up and you can take the screw out and you can take out your hard drive. That doesn't involve opening up the console. But then right here, there's a screw under this little sticker right here, which is the warranty seal. And since this is intact, that means it has not been opened before. You could take a heat gun to it, peel it up carefully and put it back, but that's very difficult to do. And it does not look like that's been done. So I'm assuming this has not been opened up and refurbished um, in any way. Now, when I bought this console, they called it refurbished, which I think is a bit misleading in this, uh, this context because they didn't, they didn't refurbish anything. Like, uh, you know, they, I don't even think they cleaned anything. I mean, the PS3 is very clean, except for all the dirt on this front part right there, which is a bit disappointing. But the controller, like, honestly, the more I looked at the controller, the more disappointed I was that it's not refurbished at all. It's, uh, I mean, it works fine, looks pretty good from a distance, but then you get up close, there's like dust and dirt and all the crevices. So I thought that would be better, especially for the price I paid. Like, if I bought this off eBay, then, you know, who cares? I probably paid a cheaper price. Uh, with this, I paid basically double market value. So I expect something very nice, um, which we didn't get. So I'll give it a rating. Um, so in terms of refurbishment, I'll give it a three out of 10, just because they didn't refurbish anything with the controller. It's still dirty. The console was not refurbished at all. Uh, now, if they called this a used console, I'd give it probably like a seven out of 10, because it's, you know, it's, you expect a little bit of dirt and stuff. They, you're not expected to completely refurbish everything, but when it's called refurbished, I would expect something to be refurbished, which it wasn't. So. I don't know, a little bit misleading of a term. Overall, I'm mostly upset by the fact that I played double market value, which is kind of typical for uh, DK oldies from what I've seen. So let me know down below what you guys think and thanks for watching. I bought this refurbished Xbox 360 from DK Oldies for $145. And in this video, we'll see if they actually refurbished anything and if it's worth the $145 price point. Now, I don't know much about this 360. Uh, all I know is it's called a standard player pack with 60 gigs. It looks like one of the original ones. I don't know if it's like a Jasper or one of the original ones without HDMI. I, I have no idea. They didn't say. So we're going to see what we get. All right, so the big reveal. Got some paper on top. All right, taking out the paper and... Oh, nice. Okay, so we got a power cord here. And we should have... Yeah, so we have the power brick. Oh, interesting. So we have a black power cord to go to the power brick. I uh, guess it doesn't really matter. Random bubble wrap. We do have an official controller, it looks like, which is obviously a good thing to see. Oh, that's, oh, that's not official. Dude, that's a third party controller. You're joking. They sent me a third party controller. I paid $145 for this. Okay, all right, we'll take a closer look at that in a second. Uh, I also ordered Modern Warfare 2 just because uh, it's supposed to be complete in box, and indeed it is. Let's check a look at this disc. Looks pretty good. Cool. So the game and disc are good and then here's the console we've got some more packaging and barely any bubble wrap wow so here's the packing slip included as you can see i got modern warfare 2 also got a 360 standard 60 gig player pack white whatever that means so i just wanted to jump in here and talk a little bit more about the whole player pack thing now when you scroll through their website you can see that all of their systems for the most part are called player packs like player pack white uh e4 gigabyte player pack player pack player pack system pack console only black so that one's actually not a player pack so i'm not really sure what it means it seems to indicate that it includes a controller i don't know why they chose player pack not really a big deal just a uh, something interesting to point out and then something else interesting you'll notice when you scroll through their website every single product is marked down all all the time like as you can see oh that one's not marked down but everything else 199 to 129 249 to 174 309 to 224 and you know i don't know if they were ever actually at these prices but every single product is marked down like all the time. There's a couple things here that clearly aren't marked down, but uh, in general, most things are marked down all the time. Now, taking a look at this console, not too impressed with the packing job. Uh, I mean, there's not even any padding on this whole side of the console. 
a little bit sloppy, but I guess if it arrives in good condition, I, I can't complain. All right, so taking the console out of the bubble wrap. Uh, oh, they included a system and game startup thing. This looks pretty generic, but uh, let's take a closer look at it. Yeah, so it's definitely generic for pretty much all systems. Um, yeah, I'll just put that to the side. And here's the console. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at it and see exactly what they sent us. Wow. Now, the first thing you notice is memory unit A is completely missing, but the cover is gone. This is a good condition system. I paid $145 for it and that it's gone. Wow. I, <laughs> not a great start. So I just wanted to jump in here again and talk about the whole condition thing. So first of all, you can see the condition is refurbished and then you have two options. You can select good condition system or cosmetically flawed. Now, obviously I selected good because that was 145. Cosmetically flawed was a little bit less, but I selected good. And so I would expect that if I select good, that means that there's nothing wrong, nothing cosmetically flawed about my system. But the fact that the memory card little slot is missing to me would indicate it's cosmetically flawed. That That's just me though. I, I don't know. I mean, let me know down below if you think differently, but since I did not select cosmetically flawed, I would think that there would not be any cosmetic flaws with the system. But I will say other than that missing piece right there, the front looks really good. I don't see many scratches or scuffs or anything. Top looks pretty good as well. Um, about as good as you can get on a 360 that's used. And then here on the back, this is a 2007. I, it's not even a Jasper. Wow. <laughs> it at least has an HDMI port. Uh, let me take a look at this power port and see which motherboard it is. Now taking a look at this power port, it appears to be a Zephyr motherboard, which is one of the worst ones. Uh, it's one of the original ones, not quite original, but still from back in the day when most of the consoles red ringed. So, so yeah, long term, this thing will probably get red ring of death one day. Not ideal. And uh, I think it's a little bit sketchy. They didn't even tell me what, what motherboard I would get when I bought it. Now, moving on from that fact, it does appear it's been opened before because I see some, I definitely see some wear and tear on that hole right there. So it appears it's been opened. You even got this like DK Oldies warranty sticker, I guess. And then if we open up the front plate, let's see what we see. Now, face plate off, looking at this uh, warranty seal right here, it appears to be tampered with, but it's not actually broken. But I would still assume this has been taken apart since it's been refurbished. You know, I would assume they clean out dust and, and replace thermal paste and all that good stuff. Uh, but we'll, of course, take a look at that later. Now, let's go ahead and plug this stuff in and uh, see if it works. But actually first, I forgot, they sent me this third party controller. Let's take a look at this. Now, you can tell the triggers feel really cheap. It's actually a really good knockoff because it looks so similar. The only difference is there's no X on this button here. Everything else looks just about the same. That's amazing. I can't believe I paid $145 for this and it doesn't include an OEM 360 controller. I guess to be fair, they didn't say they'd include an OEM. They just said a compatible controller, but the picture shows uh, an OEM and you would think for $145, you'd be getting an OEM. So that's, that's a bit sad, but let's go ahead and plug this in now. So I have everything plugged in now and I probably should have mentioned it earlier, but if you don't know, DK Oys is an online like retro game store basically. And they're known for pretty high prices. Like this is, I'd say more than double market value for a, uh, a 2007 Xbox 360, 145, probably sell on eBay for 65 maybe. And then a couple other things I noticed as well, this uh, this is really nitpicky, but this power cord is shorter than the original one. So I had to grab my original one, plug it into the power brick so that I could actually re reach my outlet. And then also, I don't think an HDMI cable was included. I, I, maybe I missed it, but I didn't see it in the box. Um, whatever, I guess. Let's go ahead and turn this console on. All right, it's booting up. I'll just show you guys so you can see that it indeed is booting up. All right, so it is factory reset. Let's go ahead and see if we can sync this controller up. All right, so we're on the Metro dashboard, which is not surprising. Let's go ahead and see what the actual uh, dashboard number is. So we're on 2.0.16537.0. Not sure if that's the latest or not, but I'll throw it up on the screen if it is. Now let's go ahead and see if this disk drive opens. That's the first test. Will it get stuck or will it not? We'll try it, we'll try it a few times and see if it gets stuck because that's a pretty common issue with Xbox 360s this old. So far, so good, has not gotten stuck. Let's go ahead and try it in the upright position make sure it doesn't get stuck. All right, so we are good there. Let's go ahead and plug in a game. I'll just use obviously Call of Duty since I bought that from them. See if it works, see if it boots up. Let's go ahead and put it in and try it. And then I also need to test uh, the hard drive size, make sure it actually is 60. So 51.1 free, so it is, it is about 60. We're just gonna start up a split screen match with myself and uh, everything's loading up just fine so far, pretty quickly actually. Now this controller is not the best. It's super clicky, like really loud. The analog stick is not the best. The D-pad is not the best. It's, I don't know. I'm just, I'm definitely disappointing. This is not an official one, um, but we'll, we'll test it out some more now. So I've been playing around a team deathmatch. Everything's working so far. Uh, this controller is actually not quite as bad as some other third party ones I've used. Uh, now it's still not as good as an OEM, but uh, not too bad. All right, so we're backing out to the main menu. We're going to connect to the internet, see if I can uh, connect to Xbox Live, make sure it's not banned or anything like that, and uh, we'll see what happens. So we're testing out the network and it wants me to do an update. So I'm assuming uh, obviously it's not on the latest dashboard. So let's go ahead and update. So it does appear that the console is fully functional. Obviously we tested out a game that worked, connected to Xbox Live, downloaded an update, all that worked. So we're good there. We're gonna go ahead and open up this console now and take a look inside. 
and see if anything was actually refurbished. All right, so let's go ahead and take this thing apart. Now, the first thing I wanted to check was that the uh, 60 gigabyte hard drive was genuine and it is, it looks like it's OEM. So that's good to see. Now let's go ahead and take this console apart. All right, screws in the bottom are off. Let's slide the top off and oh yeah, it does actually look very clean in there. That is, that's good to see. It looks like either they cleaned out the dust or it wasn't dusty to start with. Now let me take this disk drive out and see if there's anything going on under here. All right, so looking at the disk drive, it still has the warranty seal intact, so I don't think they did anything there. And then taking a look inside, we'll take off this cover as well. So plastic piece off now, and it does look like they did a nice job of cleaning it up in here. I don't see like any dust or dirt at all. You know, either they cleaned it up or it was like that before. I don't know which one. It doesn't really matter, honestly, but ooh, something just fell out there. All right, so some little plastic piece just fell out. Not sure where that came from. Could have been from when I opened it up. Uh, I'm not sure. So last thing I want to do here is remove the heat sinks and see if they actually change the thermal paste because I would think if they're refurbishing it, that's something they should do. And I, I would think they would want to do that so their console would last longer and not get returned during warranty. So let's go ahead and take it the rest of the way apart. So we're down to the X clamps and let me know down below if you've ever removed one of these X clamps. They're, they're a pain in the butt to do, but I'm just curious how many of you guys have done it before. First X clamp is removed. Let's go ahead and reveal the bottom and see if there is new thermal paste. And nope, that appears to be original. Uh, I've opened a lot of these in the past and that sure does look like the original thermal paste to me. You can kind of see it spread around the outside of the heat sink or uh, excuse me, the, uh, the chip there. And then just zoom in, let me zoom in there so you guys can see it closer. So yeah, looking at that chip there, there's basically no thermal paste left on it. It's like all, uh, I don't know if dissipated is the right word, but it's all spread around and like the layer between the chip and the heat sink now is extremely thin. Uh, so you're not getting much, not getting much heat to this heat sink. It's uh, yeah which is not a good sign for this chip here. Now let me take off the second X-clamp and we'll take a look at this chip as well. The second X-clamp is now removed. Let's take this heat sink off and see what it looks like. Yeah, so pretty much the same thing. Um, like I said, this looks, looks exactly like the uh, thermal paste that was used um, from factory. And there's basically no thermal paste left on the chips, uh, which does not bode well for the heat dissipation. Um, I mean, this, this console is a mixed bag. First of all, 145 for a console like this. This console should go for no more than like 70 or 80 bucks, maybe. And second of all, it's it's partially refurbished. I mean, it looks nice on the outside, it looks nice on the inside, but the chips, I really think if they're calling it refurbished and paying, and you're paying 145 for this, I think they should be adding more thermal paste, even for their sake. I mean, like this thing's in a red ring of death before 120 days without new thermal paste. Uh, you're just gonna end up with a, with a return, so I don't know why they wouldn't add new thermal paste. And then obviously with the third party controller and that piece in the front of the faceplate missing, I just think that's a little little bit sloppy for 145 bucks. Uh, so, uh, you know, in terms of refurbishment, I'm gonna give it a five out of 10 because it did look good, but no thermal paste, this automatic dock of five right there. And man, in terms of price here, I gotta give it two out of 10 for what's included. I like, it's just, just not great. And one other thing to mention, just to be clear, I don't have a problem with people selling used consoles without changing out the thermal paste. Uh, my problem is when people sell refurbished consoles without changing the thermal paste, because I feel like if it's refurbished, you should be changing the thermal paste, especially for when you're selling twice of market value. So thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know down below what you think about this console and I'll see you next time. I bought this refurbished Xbox 360 from DK Oldies for $145 and not only was it double market price, they also gave me a non Jasper 360, so the old ones that red ring of death really easily. They gave me a third party controller and they did not even replace the thermal paste, which I'll show a picture of on the screen right now. It's just like, what's going on here? Why am I paying double market price for this? DK Oldies might be deleting your comments. Yesterday I made a video showing a few things that were odd about this refurbished Xbox 360 that I paid $145 for from DK Oldies. Ironically, they posted a video about refurbishing a PS2 just minutes after I posted my video. And that video had dozens of comments mentioning the refurbished 360 that I had bought from them, but then I checked again this morning and poof, all of those comments were gone. Fortunately, I did screenshot a few of those last night. Now truly, I don't have any ill will against them. I make videos reviewing different consoles from different places all the time. It's just what I do. So this is nothing out of the ordinary, but I think it's only fair that you know that I bought a refurbished OG Xbox from DK Oldies for $260 and in this video, we're gonna take an in-depth look at it and see if it was worth the money. All right, so here's the box straight from DK Oldies. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. All right, box sliced open. Let's go ahead and see what's inside of here. And we can see a packing slip there, so let's take a look at that. All right, so as you can see here, we got an Xbox system player pack and I selected the good condition system, which is something to note because they do sell cosmetically flawed systems. So this one should be in good cosmetic condition, obviously. Now let's go ahead and see what's inside. All right, so pulling out all of the paper, plenty of that in there. We've got our console, uh, which is actually wrapped up well in bubble wrap this time. And we've got a controller here. Now, will this be an OEM? 
Oh, it is. It's OEM. Oh, thank goodness. All right, yeah, so this thing's definitely in good condition. Uh, looks nice in the front. All the buttons are clicking. Joysticks feel nice. Xbox logo still looks good. Got it wrapped up nicely, and the back looks good as well. So that's good to see. I'm glad we got an OEM controller this time. They kind of leave it up to chance because the description says compatible controller. It doesn't say OEM, doesn't say third party, it just says compatible. So it's kind of whatever they have on hand. They don't even give an option to upgrade to an OEM either. So just leaving it up to chance. And we also have our AV cable here, and we actually have an official AV cable up here. It's good to see. We've also got our power supply. Oh, we've got an official power supply as well. That is that is nice. So far, so good. Let's go ahead and take a look at this console as well and see what's inside of here. All right, pulling it out. First thing you see here is they included <laughs> this little system and game startup. This is a pretty generic thing. I saw this on the last one, and yeah, it's just very generic. It just says basically how to turn your console on and all that stuff. And this thing is heavy, which expected. Uh, but at first glance, it looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and take it all the way out and take a closer look at it. All right, so here's the console. And the first thing to look at is this Xbox logo on the top, which tends to get a lot of scratches on it. Now, taking a look at this one, doesn't look too bad. You got a few scratches on it, but that's pretty much inevitable. And then just looking at the top in general, uh, not too bad. You got some, I don't know what that marking is from up there. I don't know if they cleaned something off or what. But in general, I think that's accurate to being a good condition system. Um, it is used, so it's not going to be perfect. Now, looking here on the front, looks pretty good as well. You get your power button, eject button. I uh, got our four controller ports, this slot right there. Now here on the bottom, we do have all four rubber feet, which is good to see. Uh, this logo right here is kind of torn up. So is this one. Oh, nice. So we got a nice little uh, DK Oldies warranty sticker down here, which is always awesome to see. Um, so it looks like they did open it up or somebody's opened it up at some point. Um, in case you don't know, there's a screw right here, a screw here, and then four screws under those uh, rubber feet. Now, there's a few different ways you can do this to take the screws out. First of all, you can either peel the sticker off with like a heat gun. You can just jab your uh, your screwdriver inside of it and then and then unscrew it. Um, and it appears here they actually kind of went the middle route, which was cutting a little hole right here and then using their screwdriver because like it, it looks intact, but it's got a hole right there. This one I'm not sure because there's a, a warranty sticker on top of it. Um, and then looking at the manufacturer date, it looks like it was made in 2005, which I think is a good sign because if you're not familiar, original Xboxes need the clock capacitor removed on most models um, in order to prevent it from leaking. It's really not a question of if it'll leak, it's kind of a question of when because they pretty much all bust and they leak acid all over the uh, the, the motherboard and mess things up. Now, um, if you're refurbishing, the first thing you wanna do is, re is remove that clock capacitor so that it doesn't uh, you know, uh, blow up and, and leak all over the board. Now, being from 2005, I think that might be a later model that doesn't need it removed, but we'll, I'll check the internet real quick and we'll, we'll see. But um, other than that, of course, here in the back looks pretty good as well. You've got your power plug, your AV cable, your Ethernet port. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and plug it in. So the console is all plugged in. Now we got our power, we got our AV, got a controller. And something I forgot to mention earlier is that I forgot to buy a game from DK Audi. So I'm just using Halo that I have in my collection right now. So we'll probably try this game out. And something I haven't really talked about is the price of this thing. Uh, 260 is a lot for an OG Xbox. So like if you go on eBay, you can find the same exact thing for like 100, 120. Now granted, it might not be refurbished, but um, you know, that's stuff you can do yourself or you can actually find refurbished stuff on eBay. So when I pay 260 for an OG Xbox, I would expect it to be like new. Now, so far, uh, the controller is like new. The, con the console is not quite like new, but it's, it's really good condition. Now let's go ahead and turn it on and make sure it works. So first of all, we'll hit this power button down here. And it is turning on. I'll just go ahead and show you guys so you can see the power light there. Um, hopefully you can see that, but it is green. All right, so console is on. And first thing you got to do is select our time. So uh, let me go ahead and actually put in the correct time. All right, got our time in there. Loads up. So we got a few things in the Xbox. We got memory, uh, which has a built-in hard drive, 50,000 blocks plus. Uh, so nothing saved on there right now. We got music, Xbox Live, and settings. So now you obviously can't use Xbox Live anymore because the service is not up. Um, there actually are workarounds. People have created third-party stuff to do that. And now let's check out the settings and see if there's anything to write home here. Now, something we need to verify is a revision of our motherboard here. We saw this was made in 2005, which means we're probably on a version 1.6 motherboard. Now we can confirm that right now by looking at the K and you see a 5838. That means we're on version 1.6 motherboard. Now that means the clock capacitor on this motherboard actually does not need to be replaced because it's a gold capacitor that's less likely to leak. Uh, it could still leak, but uh, in most cases it's not going to. So it is actually good to see that we got a version 1.6 motherboard here. Now, something else to point out is that if we turn our console off, unplug it, plug it back in, turn it back on, we shouldn't have to set our time again because we should still have the clock capacitor here. So let's go ahead and test that out. All right, so console off. We'll go ahead and unplug the power cable here. Now, once it's off and unplugged, the uh, clock capacitor is now keeping the time. Now let's go ahead and plug it back in now. Plug back in, turning back on, and we'll see if it asks for the time. All right, so indeed it does not ask for the time. So our time is saved. Now let's go ahead and open up the disk drive, make sure it works. We'll do it a few times, make sure it doesn't get stuck. That is a common issue. 
with OG Xboxes that the disk drive can get stuck. So far, so good. I'm not seeing any issues opening up the drive, so it should be good there. Let's go ahead and put a disk in and make sure it loads up. So I'm playing some Halo. No issues so far. Vibration is working. Right trigger is working. My B button is working to smash this guy right here. I'm still getting destroyed, but I'm on like pretty much easy level, so I can just do whatever I want to, and I'm probably not gonna, <laughs> probably not gonna die. This is working great. Oh, let me, let me pick up this new gun. Oh yeah, I hate this gun. But yeah, I mean, it's working so far. Controller looks good. All the buttons are, are working fine. No issues there. Vibration works. I mean, console looks pretty good. It's got some scratches and stuff on it, but I mean, it is a used console, so it's not gonna be too great. But let's go ahead and open this console up, see what it looks like on the inside, see if they refurbished anything. And uh, yeah, just take a look at it. And real quick, I wanted to go to the hard drive here. Actually, they call it a hard disk. Click on it and see if it's saved. So yeah, I did save Halo, and there aren't any other saves on here, which is good to see. So they did erase all of them before they sold it to me. Um, but yeah, all is good. Let's go ahead and turn this console off and open it up. So flipping over to the bottom, like I showed you earlier, there's two screws beneath these labels right here. This one, I think, is just covered up by this DK Oldies warranty seal or whatever. This one appears to be cut out. And now this is super nitpicky, but I think for, for this much money, you know, I think it would have been cleaner to just use a heat gun on this, peel it back, put it back. Not a big deal, but just being nitpicky for the price. But I'm just gonna try to peel this up the same way they did, which is like cut a little hole around here. And yeah, I guess that's what they did there. They, they cut a hole there, peeled it up, uh, never seen that done before, but I guess that's I guess that's another way to do it. And of course, this uh, DK Oldie sticker right here. See if it comes off. And oh yeah, nice. So it leaves some nice residue on the sticker there. That's always awesome. And same little thing here. They cut a little hole. And then with these four right here, there's a couple different ways you could do it. You could use a screwdriver and kind of pry it up. But the cleaner way to do it is use a heat gun and uh, basically loosen up the, the adhesive there and then peel it up. So I went with the heat gun method here, worked well, got all the little uh, rubber feet off, and now let's go ahead and take the screws out. Screws are out, so let's go ahead and take the top off the console and see what it looks like. All right, so pulling the top off here, and top part of the console doesn't look too bad, got some like scuffs and stuff there. Um, sometimes I have seen that the, uh, the chassis of these consoles will get rusty, so let's take a look here. Doesn't look too bad, doesn't look perfect either, but uh, of course it is a used console, so it's never gonna be perfect. Now there is some dust inside of there. That's super nitpicky, but oh, actually that side is, what's going on there? That's uh, that's looking kind of odd. We got some marks here that appear to just be the uh, the markings from the top piece of the console, so nothing wrong there. Let's look at the, the disk drive and the hard drive and see what it looks like below that. So I have the disk drive out and the hard drive out and taking a look at this motherboard, it looks pretty good, uh, very clean. Now, the one weird thing is there is still a light layer of dust in the motherboard and the fan. You can actually see it a little bit here. It's pretty much impossible to show on the camera, but it's just like kind of odd because clearly they came in here and cleaned it out some, but maybe there's just a light layer of dust from it sitting in the warehouse. And a couple other things to point out on this motherboard. So first of all, you see a bunch of capacitors on here. I took a look at all of them. None of them look like they're bulging or leaking, which is good to see. Now this gold one over here is the clock capacitor and that's the one that usually leaks, but on the 1.6 motherboard, it's less likely to leak and uh, looks good to me. Now let's go ahead and take these heat sinks off see if thermal paste is replaced because you know at a almost 20 year old console we do need to replace thermal paste to make sure this thing is running coolly and, and not too hot and then i'll probably take the whole motherboard out and see what it looks like on the un underside as well but let's go ahead and take these uh heat sinks off so i actually ended up turning the console back on to heat up the heat sink so we can actually remove them now i just messed with the cpu and it is wiggling loose now so let's go ahead and take that one off and see if thermal paste was, was changed out and nope thermal paste was not changed now in my experience Replacing thermal paste on the OG Xbox is not quite as critical as the 360 because the 360 has so many Red Wing of Death issues. But considering this console is refurbished and the price of it, I would expect thermal paste to be removed. Now that's pretty clearly the original thermal paste. Um, so we'll go ahead and clean that off and, and, and uh, replace that later. But let's go ahead and take off the uh, CPU as well and see if that's been replaced. I got this clip partially removed now, see if we can get it all the way off. And then I can see what's under here. And nope, yep, that definitely looks original. You can just see it's kind of caked on there. It's not completely dry, but it is pretty dang dry. This one is actually a little bit better. Not quite completely dry, but it's definitely, <laughs> it's definitely not great for, uh, let's see, 17 year old console. And the reality is 99% of the people that buy from them aren't gonna take their Xbox apart and look at the thermal paste and you know make sure it's, it's replaced. Um, but in reality, you know, two years down the line, little Johnny might have his Xbox and it might overheat, might have to start having issues because the thermal paste is so old. So I just think for the price, being refurbished, it just makes sense for it to be replaced. And last but not least, I am gonna take this motherboard all the way out, take the screws out, and see how it looks underneath because I do see some suspicious like uh, dust and dirt in here in the cracks. Nothing crazy, but I'm just curious how it looks. All right, I got enough screws out and pieces off so I can see the bottom now. Bottom looks good as well, uh, very clean, no issues there. 
and that bottom metal piece looks pretty good as well. Like I said earlier, I have seen some uh, some of these metal pieces that are like rusted out, so it's good to see this is not rusted out. Obviously, that'd probably be cosmetically flawed, I guess. Uh, I don't know exactly how they categorize it like that, but so like ultimately, I think this console was going very well until we got to the thermal paste and discovered that there was nothing replaced there. I think for a $260 OG Xbox that's called refurbished, I really think that should be replaced. Other than that, everything was clean. I even got an OEM controller. The console worked with no issues. Let me know down below what you guys think. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. I bought a refurbished backwards compatible PS3 from DK Oldies for $400 and in this video we're going to take an in-depth look at this console, see if it's worth the money, and determine if you guys should buy one for yourself. Now let's go ahead and open this box up. So the, the first thing I noticed is this box is actually bulging a little bit. Uh, not a big deal if there's bubble wrap, but uh, we're, we're about to see what's inside of here. Alright, so here's the packing slip and uh, we got a bunch of stickers and stuff on here. I'm not sure what that means, but as you can see, Cosmetically flawed, 80 gig, reverse compatible. I, again, I don't know why they call it reverse compatible. We got a bunch of random, no way, not again. Not, no, no. <sighs> Another third party controller. I, I mean, guys, $400 for a backwards compatible PS3, cosmetically flawed, and you give me a third party controller. I, there wasn't even an option to upgrade to an OEM. That's just, I don't know, I feel like that's inexcusable. So guys, I wanted to take a brief moment to look at the listing and kind of show you why I'm disappointed. So we'll get back to this stuff in a second, but let me scroll down to the description. So as you can see, it says it comes with a console, one compatible wireless controller, and that's kind of where we go wrong here. Uh, compatible is a very, very generic term. So you don't know if you're getting a DualShock 3 or if you're getting something else. Now, I, I think they either need to say third-party controller here um, or give you the option to upgrade, something like that. But like the pictures show a DualShock 3, there's no option to choose between a DualShock 3 and a third-party controller. They just say compatible, uh, kind of make you think you're going to get a good controller, and then they send you, you know, that uh, the, the Double Shock 3 that I got. All right, and we also got a power cord. Actually, that's a USB cord. We have our HDMI cable here. We should have our power cord here. We do. And then this is our game, nice and bubble wrapped. Well, it's actually amazing. The uh, the game is bubble wrapped more than the console. All right, so here's the game, Final Fantasy, uh, what is that, 13? Let's check out the condition of the disc. Disc looks good, and let's put that to the side. And here's the console. It does have bubble wrap, only a little bit on the sides, but as long as it arrives in good condition. All right, so here is whatever you want to call this. We got the system game startup. Throw that away, and man, this console does not look very good. Let's go ahead and take it out and take a closer look at it. All right, guys, so here's the console closer up, and sorry about the big white thing right there. That's my light. It's kind of just reflecting the console. And as you can see, this console is very very beat up now it is cosmetically flawed but this thing is just like it's so scratched i've never actually seen one this bad and the thing that kind of concerns me about being cosmetically flawed is that they might use that as an excuse not to clean the console all the way i'm not sure if that's the case or not but just taking a glance at it i do see a bunch of dust and you can kind of see some fingerprints down there uh, i'll show some pictures on the screen but fingerprints i see dust uh, a lot of dust down here a lot of dust in there i also see a bunch of dust right here on the front lip and guys, this is a used console, so I don't expect it to be perfect, but it should be very clean uh, considering the price I've paid. Here on this side, we do have a warranty sticker from TK Oldies in place of the old warranty seal. I don't, I don't know that they can actually enforce that these days, but um, oh, and there's our cosmetic flaw. Nice. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, cool. Uh, here on the back, as you can see, the model number is CECH E01, which is good to see because that is the 80 gig backwards compatible model, which uh, uses emulation for uh, playing PS2 and PS1 games instead of real hardware like the AO1 does. But yeah, this whole console is just very scratched up, dirty. Um, well, I can't say it's too dirty yet, but it's it's very, very scratched up and kind of dusty. I don't know, man. Looking closer at this thing, I actually do see a lot of dust and grain here on the bottom. So I don't know if they actually cleaned the outside or not. <laughs> oh, guys. All right. So I was about to plug it in, but I decided to open up the hard drive cover right here. And guys, take a look at that. I'll, I'll zoom in there for you. But that thing is just encroached with dust and dirt like oof all right yeah look at that like i can just wipe my finger across it nice that looks like it's been sitting in a basement or something it at least doesn't smell like cigarette dust which is a, a good thing but i don't know guys we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna plug this thing in and see if it works all right guys we got everything plugged in now and i don't think i mentioned it yet but they actually called this console reverse compatible instead of backwards compatible i'm not sure why i've never heard that terminology used before so i wanted to come back over here to the listing again and show you a few more things now first of all like I just mentioned, they call it reverse compatible. Not sure why, but that's what they call it. Uh, and I bought a cosmetically flawed system, which was $405. You can also get a good condition, which is $540, just really high prices. That's why I'm 
so disappointed by the controller. And then one other thing, despite the fact that I chose a cosmetically flawed system, if you go down here in the description, it still says it's fully refurbished, cleaned, and tested. So I would expect this thing to be cleaned inside, outside, and uh, new thermal paste, all that good stuff that comes with refurbishing. So uh, we'll see what they do to it. And also, this controller is terrible. Like, it, it is very bad. They call it a Double Shock 3, made by old school. It just feels really bad in the hands. This is an actual Dual Shock 3. Very nice controller. So that's pretty disappointing. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on though and see if it works. So first we gotta flip on the switch on the back. We got a red light there. Hit the power button and we have life. No disc in there. Uh, so let's see if it boots up now. All right guys, so I'm finally booted up to the main screen and this console is going crazy. The fan is blowing real loud. And I already know it's not been cleaned inside because I see a bunch of dust blowing out the sides and the back. And man, that, that air is hot. But we're gonna go ahead and test this thing out, make sure it works. First of all, actually I wanna go to the settings system settings and see what uh, software version we're on. All right, so system information, we are on 4.85, which I think might be the most recent one. Uh, not sure, but I know it's not old. All right, no game in there. We're gonna start with the PS1 game because this is backwards compatible. So it's compatible with most PS1 and most PS2 games. I don't think quite all of them, so hopefully this works. And it's probably gonna ask me to create, yeah, there we go, all right, cool. PlayStation format disc, ask me to create a memory card. Let's go ahead and do that and then we'll boot it up. So we're playing Castlevania Symphony of the Night on PS1. Never actually played this game, so I have no idea what I'm doing. Your words are as empty as your soul. Dude, we're like straight into the boss fight on this one. You like walk up the stairs and it's like, all right, time for the final boss fight. Whole game is 30 minutes long. <laughs> Not really, but we've played enough. I think it's working. Let's go back to the main menu. And we're gonna try out a PS2 game and I have Silent Hill 2 here today. We're going with the high value games today, cause why not? Hopefully the console works and doesn't eat our games, but so far so good. Let's take out the PS1 game and put in Silent Hill 2 for the PS2 and we'll make sure that works. And I mentioned earlier that there's a lot of dust blowing out the sides and the back, but what I didn't say is that it kind of smells like grandma's basement. Like that's the only way for me to describe it. it kind of smells old, like dusty. I don't know. And, and, and honestly, that's probably what happened is grandma probably saw a Facebook ad that she could sell her PS3 to DK Oldies for some money. And so she probably did that. And that's how DK Oldies got this. I guess they didn't clean it, send it off to me. And this thing is this thing is going crazy. Like the fan is pretty crazy. We're not even on a PS3 game yet, so uh, I'm curious to see what will happen. And honestly, I'm not sure if this controller even works on PS2 games because it, it won't let me control the screen with a PS2 game. Now let me try my official DualShock 3 and see if that works. So upon some more trial and error with the third-party controller uh, and also searching online, apparently third-party controllers do not work with the PS3 and PS2 games which is just awesome to see. I guess let me know down below if you have any more info on that. But from what I saw online, it was some sort of pri piracy measure that you couldn't plug in uh, third-party Bluetooth devices to the USB port and, and use them on PS2 games. Uh, so that's just just awesome to see. So I bought this backwards compatible PS3. Can't even play PS2 games though because the third-party controller does not work on them. So that's just, just great. But when I have my DualShock 3 plugged in, uh, working just fine, no problems there. Let's go back to the main screen. And of course, we'll try out a PS3 game now. All right, so we got Final Fantasy. Let's go ahead and put it in and see if it boots up. All right, so playing some Final Fantasy, having no issues so far. Uh, so all is good on PS1, PS2, and PS3 games, except for the fact that the controller they sent me does not work with PS2 games, so that's a bit disappointing. Now, obviously, I have not used this for an extended period of time. I imagine that once you use this for a few hours, you're, it's really gonna ramp up. I mean, if you know these old PS3s, they, they get really loud, like a jet engine. Blow, blow air like crazy because they have to. It gets so hot inside. Now, a way you can kind of help combat that is to replace the thermal paste and clean out the insides. I'm not sure if they did that or not. We're gonna go ahead and open this thing up and take a look at the insides and see what it looks like, see if they're refurbished anything. First thing you'll see on this side, you got your DK Oldies warranty sticker. We're gonna take that off, take this little, uh, little piece off and then we'll slide the cover off and then take a bunch of screws out. All right guys, so I took the uh, top cover off and as you can see, a bunch of dust in here. Uh, yeah, there you go. That's a better view, but you can see all that dust in there. I can just run my finger across it and pick up a bunch of dust. And then even worse, I took out the hard drive and guys, look at that. That is just bad. There's, there's dust flying all around my room now. Oh my gosh. I didn't even see that side. Terrible. And let me, let me just show you inside of the hard drive bay. All right. Yeah. So just looking inside of that, you can see dust just hanging out in that hard drive bay. Just awesome to see. Uh, let's go ahead and take the rest of the cover off see what it looks like on the inside. I don't have much hope for the inside of this thing, but we'll see what it looks like. All right, guys, time for the big reveal. I got all the screws off on the top. Let's go ahead and pull this cover all the way off and see what it looks like inside. Oh, man. Oh, no way. <laughs> Dude. 
I have no words. It, it, it actually looks better on camera than in person. Like in person, every single inch of this is covered in dirt and dust. And just look at that. Absolutely filthy. Oh my goodness. This is like, this is, this is GameStop level. This is worse than GameStop. Like this is bad. Really, really bad. I'm going to take some pictures and show it on the screen so you guys can get a better, better look at this. But like every inch of this is just covered in dirt. And this is called refurbished. Refurbished, guys. Refurbished. What, what are we doing here? Why am I paying double market price for a console that is this dirty? I mean, you can buy a console just like this under 200 bucks on eBay. Uh, probably even less with this for this condition. This is just, this is sad. Like, why would they put a warranty seal on this console when they never opened it up? I mean, that, I'm, I'm disappointed. This is, this is bad. I, I don't know what else to say. And man, I, I think we've seen enough here. But honestly, I, I want to see what the rest of the console looks like. I want to see what the fan looks like. I want to see what the thermal paste looks like. It's just... It's not going to be good. So let's keep going. All right. So I think I got all the screws out and we're going to see if we can pull this all the way out to see what the heat sink looks like. All right, here we go. And the big reveal. Oh man. Whew. That, that is amazing. Oh yeah. All over my fingers, man. DK always really outdid themselves this time. This is wow. Yeah. This bottom piece is even wow. <laughs> it looks like a desert. <laughs> what am I, what are we doing here? This is, this was $400 guys. What? I could pay 50 bucks for this. Like what, what is, I, I just, uh, I'm at a loss for words. I don't know. This, this one's going back to DK oldies. I, I usually feel bad sending stuff back to companies after I buy it, but if they're going to send me this for $400, I, I'm sending it back. So this is, this is unacceptable. All right. And there's the fan. Hoo -hoo. Fan actually looks a little bit better than I thought it would, even though it's disgusting. That's better than I thought it would be after seeing everything else. All right. We're not, we're not down to the heat sink yet. We're not down to the thermal paste yet, but let's, let's get there. Oh, what do you know? The board is not quite as bad. <laughs> Funny I'm saying that because that's still really, really bad. Like, oof. Got everything apart now, and I think the thermal paste, we should be able to see it now. And, oh, yeah. Pretty much nothing left. That's what we like to see. I just, like, I'm baffled by this. The fact that they would sell this as cleaned, refurbished, but they had refurbished absolutely nothing. And I, I, I don't know. I have nothing else to say. I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, this is no doubt one of the top two dirtiest PS3s I've ever seen. I think I saw one with cockroaches one time, so that one was worse. But this is next level. Like, there is so much dust in here. No thermal paste replaced. Like, the outside looks bad, but it's the inside. It's just... Whew. And they specifically say on the listing, they say tested, cleaned, and refurbished. So, clean and refurbished are two different things. They did not refurbish anything here. Did not clean anything here. So... I guess they tested it. I, I don't know. But yeah, guys, I can't believe I paid $400 for this. Just covered in dirt and dust. No thermal paste replaced. But thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. I bought this refurbished backwards compatible PS3 from DK Oldies for $400, and I gotta say, it's one of the most disgusting consoles I've ever seen. Now, they call this console fully refurbished, cleaned, and tested. It even put a warranty sticker on it, but does this look clean to you? The inside of this console is completely caked with dust and dirt, and it even still has the original thermal paste. So like, what's going on here, guys? Why are we selling these consoles for huge markups, calling them refurbished and not actually refurbishing anything? It just doesn't make sense because I I bought a refurbished Xbox 360 from DK Oldies for $120, and in this video, we're gonna see if they actually refurbished anything and if you should buy one for yourself. So I'm still pretty heated about the last PS3 video. I, if you guys didn't know, I bought a PS3 from them and it was absolutely disgusting. Uh, so I'm excited to see what we get here. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. So this time I bought a 20 gig Xbox 360. No idea what version they're gonna send me. I just know it's, I guess, white and it has 20 gigs. It's actually more expensive than the 60 gig, which doesn't make sense. So I'm, uh, I'm very curious to see what they sent us. We've got, oh, the Lego movie video game. Oh yeah. Ordered a game with it as well. Looks to be in pretty nice condition there. Got some packing there. We've got our controller jammed in here. Now let's see if we got an OEM and we did not. <laughs> I mean, at this point, like I'm expecting the third party controller because that's what they always send, but like they don't specify that in the listing. They say uh, compatible, they say compatible, and it's kind of a technicality where they can get away with sending you a, a third party, but at, at this price, it's just crazy to send me a third party controller. And uh, here's our, oh, it's not even a, it's not even OEM. Oh my gosh, not even an OEM power brick, wow. And it looks like it's a, what is going on here? This thing is just jammed in here. What, what in the world? Last time I actually got an OEM power brick and uh, wait a second, where's the, where's the HDMI cable? Oh, there, oh no, no HDMI cable. Dude, <laughs> the description literally says HDMI cable. I, I'm, I'm kind of worried that they're gonna send me one of the 360s that uh, 
doesn't oh this is is this oem no that's definitely not oem that looks looks third party for a second i thought they put an oem inside of the third party box but i think that is a third party controller now i'm very curious to see what this console looks like uh, i'm kind of concerned they sent me a non h no <laughs> they sent me a non hdmi oh my gosh no way dude <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. There is nowhere in the listing that is specified they're gonna give me a console this old. 2006, dude. This is, this is mind blowing. The description says HDMI cable, so you would assume you get an HDMI console, which means a newer 360, less likely to red ring. But no, they sent me the OG one, very likely to red ring, only an AV port, not even an HDMI port. Yeah, by the way, I bought it cosmetically flawed, so we'll, we'll see what kind of cosmetic flaws it's got here. But let me just put this to the side. I just wanted to butt in here and kind of talk about why it's so bad to get a 360 from 2006. So I'll show a chart on the screen right now. Uh, but basically, looking at the 360 power ports, you can actually figure out which motherboard your 360 has. And if you didn't know, before the Jasper motherboard, all the 360 motherboards had issues with Red Ring of Death. So that's the Xenon, the Zephyr, the Opus, and the Falcon. And uh, especially the Xenon motherboard, since it was the first one made back in 2005. Now, uh, that kind of points us back to this console specifically, which was made in 2006, and has the Xenon motherboard, so it's basically the worst one you can get. It's, it's, it's essentially destined to fail one day, unless you just, like, never use it. And to kind of continue on this, somebody from DK Oldies actually called me a couple weeks after the last 360 video I made a, about a month or so ago, and uh, they said they're going to take my feedback into account and kind of make some changes going forward. I guess they haven't yet, because one of my pieces of feedback was to basically make it more clear on the website what you're getting, what console you're getting, and uh, clearly it was not very obvious I was going to get a, uh, a Xenon motherboard, so I guess they have not implemented that yet. But here's the packing slip. We've got a Lego Movie video game. we got the standard 20 gig player pack white cosmetically flawed system. I'll show it on the screen probably now and give some description of what I bought, but like there was nothing specified that it was going to be this old console. It, it just blows my mind, man. Uh, I don't know. Let's take a closer look at this thing. All right, so here's the console, and at first glance, it looks like they did at least wipe it off on the top and bottom. It looks pretty clean on the outside. And then taking a look at the front, I'm curious where the cosmetic flaw will be because like I said, I did buy a cosmetically flawed console. Now it does have fingerprints all over here. I don't know if that's from me. So uh, just to be fair, that might be from me. Now where is the cosmetic? Oh, there it is. All right, so we have a big giant crack right here, which to be fair, like that's cosmetically flawed. Uh, it's not gonna affect system performance, but it is obviously a, uh, a defect. Now let's take a look at this hard drive if I can even get it out. And it, uh, yeah, it appears to be an OEM hard drive. Should be 20 gigs. I don't see it listed anywhere, but we can check when we turn the system on. Now, the funny part is the faceplate is not even latched correctly into this side grill part, which is pretty easy to do. All you gotta do is snap this piece off. Yeah, so you pull the faceplate off, tuck that inside, and then put the faceplate back on. Uh, but I am curious if this console has been opened before. So looking at the, the uh, warranty sticker on the front, it looks like that's, no, that's definitely not been opened. Maybe. maybe. I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell because this one you can pretty easily take off and then put back on. And then flipping over to the back here, I mean, as we looked earlier, you got your power port, you've got your AV, there is no HDMI because this is a super old console. You can actually see the manufacturing date here, which is September 7th, 2006. So this is only about a year after the console came out. So like right in the middle of all the Red Ring of Death stuff, just a, a bad console. And you can see their warranty seal is already like peeling off. Now this console, I, I can't tell quite if it's been opened before. If you look at these holes, you can usually see some wear and tear around them if the console has been opened, and I don't see any, so my guess is this console was not actually opened and, and refurbished, but of course we'll take a look at that later. But to be fair, the outside does look very clean, which is <laughs> good to see, because after, uh, after that PS3 video, whew, man, this is uh, just, just no words, man. But let's go ahead and plug this 360 in, see if it works, and of course we'll open the console up, see if they actually refurbished anything inside, and see if it was worth 120 bucks. So we have the power supply and AV cable plugged in. Let's go ahead and see if this thing turns on. Press the power button and there it goes. It is turning on. Let's see if the disc tray works. First try, it's opening up. Uh, now you wanna try these a few times because these things are notorious for getting stuck. Now if they actually refurbished it, it wouldn't get stuck, but um, yeah, so far so good. So we're good there. Now let's see if it actually showed up on the screen. So for some reason, the first time I turned it on, it actually did not show up on the screen. I turned it on, I turned it off and turned it back on and it. It is showing up now, so that's a little bit odd. Now let's go ahead and hook up our controller. Of course, I need some batteries first and see if it can play some games. Console is on, controller connected up. Let's go ahead and check out the settings, see what exact dashboard we're on. Now we are on one of the most recent ones because we're on, okay, let's see, 2.0.16202. I'll show up on the screen when this update is from, but we are on the Metro dashboard, so it's a pretty recent update. Now uh, we already tried the open tray, but we'll try it one more time. 
and I'll try it vertically as well because sometimes sometimes consoles will work vertically but not horizontally and vice versa. So let me just give it a quick a quick try. No issues there. So let's go ahead and flip this back over, and I'm gonna actually open it up for real this time. Put a game in, and we're gonna see if a game will load up. The console finally finished updating. We are playing a game now. Now the disk drive is so loud. Like I I don't remember it being this loud, but I, th I think it was like. Yeah, you can you can hear that there. It's it's loud, but that's pretty standard for a console this old. It, yeah, let's go ahead and play this game. Make sure it works for an extended period of time because I am pretty concerned about rendering to death on this console. Uh, I don't feel too much heat out the back, which honestly might not be a good thing because that means the fan and the heat sink are not working to uh, take the heat off the chips. But yeah, let's just let's play this for a little bit and see what happens. I think this disk drive just keeps getting louder. Like it isn't. It is crazy loud. It's like a loud buzzing that's just really annoying. Let me just show you again. I mean, it, I guess it's supposed to be like that. And ultimately the problem is the fact that they did not tell me which 360 I would get. So I've been playing this 360 game for like 10 minutes. It's working fine so far. Just the super loud disc drive and a lot of heat coming out. Let's try an, a, an OG Xbox game and make sure that works as well. So we have Big Bumpin', which looks like a 360 game, but it actually is an OG Xbox game. It just, cause it only says Xbox on it. It doesn't say 360, which is kind of weird cause it looks like a 360 case, but it's not. I'm not sure why. We're gonna see if it reads on a 360. I think I have played it on a 360 before, so it should be compatible. And by the way, we noticed a weird smell in the in the studio space, and my editor mentioned that it kind of smelled like a dentist office, which I would have to have to agree with. And then we figured out it's actually coming from the power supply. The power supply has a real fan inside of it, and it's blowing out like burnt a burnt plastic smell. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's not ideal. And also, big bumping is not working. It's just not loading up. Oh, it's frozen. Nice. Yeah, and I, I've definitely played this game on a 360 before and it worked with no problem. So um, that's not a good sign. Let's go ahead and try to boot it up again and see if it'll start working. But yeah, this 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 power supply, there's no chance the power supply lasts very long. Like it's uh, it's just got bad quality. It's really light. It's a, it's a third party. It has an actual fan inside um, to blow the heat out and it's blowing out like burnt plastic smell. Just not great. Just a cheap power supply. I definitely just played this game on a 360 like two months ago and it worked absolutely fine. So I'll try a different Xbox game, see if it works, but oh, there it is, okay. But it is it is loading up now. It froze the first time, took forever the second time. I'm gonna ch I'm gonna try a different game now and uh, see what it does. We might, we might have a disk drive problem here. All right, I'm gonna try Halo 2 because I would assume that's backwards compatible since it's a uh, first party game, but let's uh, try it out and see if it loads up. So Halo 2 booted up fine. It wasn't slow or anything. So I'm not sure what the issue is. Big bumping was just not, didn't, didn't, didn't want that smoke, but uh, I'm just gonna put the 360 game back in one more time and make sure it loads up. So by the way, I did try one more game and it worked with no problems. So I'm gonna say the disk drive is fine. One other note though, this uh, power supply is super hot, which is just, uh, that's not a good sign for a power supply. It should never be too hot. Um, let's go ahead and take this console apart and see if anything was done inside. And I mentioned this earlier, but looking at this warranty seal right here, I don't think this console has ever been taken apart. Uh, now earlier, it was more intact. I started taking it apart and it kind of leaves behind some residue. So if this console had been taken apart, unless you did like a really nice job of replacing the sticker and like taking it off perfectly and putting it back perfectly, it would leave some residue like this when you take it, uh, take the two pieces apart. So I don't think this console's ever been opened. You know, maybe they'll prove me wrong. Let's go ahead and open these, uh, take these flaps off the sides, take the, the, the pieces apart and just, see what it looks like on the inside. Fortunately, just from looking from the outside, it looks pretty clean. So I have high hopes for the inside. And here it comes. I got to take off the warranty seal here. Da, da, da. No more warranty. <laughs> the funny part is, it's like the fact that they're putting a warranty seal on here, it means that they have opened it up and done something on the inside to make it worth putting, putting a warranty seal on it. That's just what's funny because like on the, the PS3, there was a warranty seal, but clearly absolutely nothing had been done on the inside. So, all right, screws are all taken out. Got to take this piece off as well. But we're about to do this big reveal right here. So three, two, one. Let's go ahead and take off the top and see what we've got inside of here. Maybe. And there we go. Yeah, it's actually, that's pretty clean. Uh, we have a Hitachi LG uh, drive there. Now, if you didn't know, the 360s have a bunch of different drives. So some of them are, are, are notorious for being loud. Some have issues. I just peeled this tape off right here. It, felt like it never been torn off. So my main concern here is the fact that this thing has probably not had its thermal paste replaced. Uh, we're, we'll find out here in a second, but I will give it to them. This thing is very clean. I guess they could have blown it out, but like the fact that this thing looked like it never been opened and it's this clean tells me it came this clean from the person who uh, sold it to them. But 
you know, I don't know that for sure. I don't know what they did in their warehouse. But let's go ahead and take out the rest of these screws and get down to the heat sinks where the thermal paste is. It's absolutely critical for this thing to have its thermal paste replaced so that it, it lasts for a good long time. Even at that point, it's probably not gonna last forever, but you know what I mean. Man, I, I cannot stand the X-clamps. They're so annoying to take apart. Comment down below if you've ever taken an X-clamp off, because if you have, man, you, you know true pain. <laughs> All right, so the first X clamp is taken off. Let's go ahead and flip it over and do the big reveal on this one. Whew. I don't have much hope, but let's go ahead and check it out anyways. Three, two, one, and man, there is no thermal paste there, just, just nothing. I mean, the thermal paste has basically been squeezed to the side of the chip, so it's doing absolutely nothing on there. And then the chip itself is even worse. Let me, let me just zoom in here to show you. So like, look at that thing. There's just no thermal paste at all left on the, uh, the actual chip there. It's all been squeezed out around the edges. Same here, and that's, that's, that's obviously the original thermal paste hasn't been replaced, and um, yeah, just a recipe for failure here. This thing is gonna get super hot. The chip's gonna get way too hot, overheat, get red ring of death, and your console is gone forever. Now, if they didn't replace the thermal paste on the CPU, I doubt they did it on the GPU, but we'll, uh, we'll check it out anyway just to see what it looks like. The second X clamp is now off. Let's go ahead and pull the GPU heatsink off and see what it looks like. And oh yeah, gotta love that dry thermal paste. Just nothing left there. There's actually a little bit more left here. Still just not enough to do anything, but clearly still the original thermal paste. And man, that's just, it's critical for a refurbishment of a console. You can't call it refurbished and not replace the thermal paste. Like what, not even opening the console up. What, I mean, I, I guess I would get it if they called it cleaned and tested, not refurbished, cleaned and tested, but they call it refurbished, cleaned and tested. And that's a big thing they advertise is the fact that they open all their consoles up and clean them. And like, if you watch their videos, they literally show on video, opening consoles up, fixing them, cleaning them, all that good stuff. And like, they're clearly not doing that to everybody's console, only if it's on video. So I think that's just a huge disappointment. Now, if I had to rate this thing, honestly, in terms of cleanliness, I'd give it a 10 out of 10, because this console is very clean, uh, no issues there. I mean, it had the, the cosmetic flaw, but I paid for cosmetic flaw, so I'd expected that. So 10 out of 10 there. Now, the thing is, refurbishment kind of goes along with cleanliness, but I'm trying to separate right here. And if, if we had to separate them, refurbishment honestly has to be a one out of 10 because really the only thing you need to refurbish on a 360 is thermal paste. Like you've got to replace that if you're gonna refurbish it. And so I got to give it a one out of 10 on refurbishment and overall package, you know, I'd say a five out of 10. I mean, it does work. Everything is functional, but the power supply is third party. It's It's got a smell. It's not gonna last very long. They gave me the oldest 360 possible without, like they didn't tell me that anywhere. Uh, disappointed again, let me know down below what you think. Uh, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. So DK Oldies is back at it again and this time they made a video claiming that they do indeed refurbish their consoles and man, whew, I, I cannot believe they made this video. I've watched it a few times, I've read some comments. So we're gonna go through, watch the video together. I'm gonna comment on the video while it's going and we're gonna look at the comments and just, just talk about it because it's, uh, uh, like I said, I can't believe they made this video. So as you can see here, the title is DK Oldies refurbishes their consoles. And it's clearly, clearly a response to all the, all the YouTubers that are making videos about their consoles not being refurbished because, because they're not, uh, which is why I cannot believe they're making this video instead of like coming out with, with some, some good explanation, they're going to make this video, but let's watch it. Uh, it was published just yesterday. Let's just go ahead and start it. Every day, tons of new collections get sold to us here at DK Oldies. Let's take a look at this one, for example, and let's check out everything that has to happen to this Wii before we can list it for sale. Yes, yeah, so basically they're home. getting a Wii console here and they're gonna show us the process of when it comes in their shop to when they sell it First, to us. First, it and gets picked up by so our testing we'll department and it gets thoroughly checked out to see if there's anything that needs to be repaired. So basically first, the first thing they do is test the console. They're gonna see if anything needs to be repaired. This one, it does indeed need a new laser. So we're gonna watch this technician guy disc, go ahead so and replace to to our replace repairs department laser. to get a new laser installed. Our technician, Sean, opens up the console. But and while it's this open, is where it gets good. Any dust or debris that may be inside. Yeah, so <laughs> I don't know if you just heard that, but basically he said, oh, well, because he's in the inside replacing the laser, we're gonna go ahead and blow it out. Like he wouldn't go ahead and blow it out anyways because it's refurbished. Like. If it's refurbished, you would go ahead and blow it out whether it needs to be repaired or not. That's the problem. Like they clearly, I guess they're blowing it out if they go in and fix something, but if they don't fix something inside of the console, they're not actually opening it up and cleaning anything. But man, I just uh then he'll clean out the rest of the internals, like all the blades on the And like the, the best part about this video is they're showing like every little detail. They're like, Yeah, every console we we clean out the blades with the fan, we clean out these cracks with toothbrushes, we do this and that, and like they're they're just not. Like I've I've bought five consoles from them, five out of five were not refurbished. Some of them were clean, some are very dirty, uh, but five out of five were not fully refurbished. And there's some other issues there, but right now we're just focusing on the refurbishment. 
and they're, they're not refurbished. So the new disk drive and then test it out to make sure it's working. So luckily this Wii is getting sent out. It does read games. That's good and to great. see. It's now reading this again. <laughs> and now I think now they send it over. To it's like it a, back together. Oh, yeah, he's cleaning even more. And then they're going to send this over to the testing team or no, excuse me, the cleaning team. And it gets passed off to Steph and our cleaning team. All right. So the inside only gets cleaned if that first guy touches it. So basically only if it needs repair on the inside, it'll get cleaned. If it doesn't need repair on the inside, the inside stays as is. And that's just what happens. In the hands of a professional, a magic eraser can get And here's the best part. They're using a magic eraser. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> if you guys have ever seen my GameStop videos, you know all about GameStop. They they use magic eraser all over everything. Like the, the console, they'll just, they'll just scrub down the entire console with magic eraser and it is, is bad. Like you show it in the light and you can see scratches everywhere. So like I get that you might want to use magic eraser here and there for some things that like, it's a, it's a last resort basically. Like you don't want it to be your first thing, but like on this, this gooey stuff here, they could probably use Goo Gone and get that off. But no, they're using Magic Eraser. Any dirt without and not just like a light Magic Eraser. They're, they're scrubbing it down, like making sure they get every little last bit. Then they got a blade here. I don't know if that's a legit blade or a plastic and thing. And the works great for um, getting in those small grooves that run around the sides of the wig. Oh, and a then like, and some rubbing like I said, like in this video, they're showing them, they're showing that they're doing absolutely every bit of the refurbishment process. They're cleaning out the controller ports. They're cleaning all their little cracks. They're blowing out the inside, they're cleaning the fan off with a Q-tip. Are you really doing this to every console? No, you're not. Like, why are you showing this on video if you're not gonna do this to every console? Alcohol will work great for cleaning To be fair, maybe they are doing this to every console as of yesterday. I don't know, maybe. But as of before yesterday, they were not, so. Controller and memory card ports. I don't know, man. It's just like, I, everything, everything these guys do, it's just like, I, I don't understand. I'll stop pausing the video. We'll, we'll watch it for a little bit. Okay, okay. Using the toothbrush. Then she'll make sure the Wii has the two doors to go on it. Okay, okay. And now that it's looking great, it's ready to list for sale. Okay. All right, so that's it. Basically, there's like five more seconds left, and he just puts it in the pile and says it's on the website now. But basically, what I gather from that is that the video, this video is just, it's not accurate compared to all the videos we've seen. The videos you've seen of mine, the videos I've seen of other people, there's like people all over the internet now buying DK Woody stuff, doing doing uh, reviews and unboxings, and most of them come with some issues, not refurbished, whatever. It's just, uh, like I said, I cannot believe they made this video. Like this is this is their backlash to people saying their consoles aren't refurbished. They're like, well, yes, we do refurbish our consoles. Here's this video of our process. It's like, guys, you're, you're doing this only to the ones on video. It just, every time I think about it, it makes me more and more mad that they are, that their customers are going to see this and be like, oh yeah, they, they refurbished their consoles. Let me pay double market value for, for this console, which might be a good deal if it was actually refurbished, but it's not. So let's look at these comments now because the comments are good. And I'm actually very surprised they have not deleted the comments yet because usually that's what they do. Yeah. First, first comment is magic eraser definitely removes gloss from the shiny plastic as an abrasive. That's how it works. Yeah. So I can agree there. Heard such mixed reviews and I love these videos, but honestly, I went on their site and absolutely blown away by the prices. Yep. Um, and this is kind of what I've seen uh, just being involved kind of in the DK Oldies drama for the last month or two. Um, and honestly, I never wanted to get involved. I, I just, like, I, I've been buying consoles from places for years and just doing like unboxing and reviews. So I was like, I've heard about DK Oldies. Let me buy one from them and do an unboxing. And then I saw the weirdness to it, kept buying them. And it kept getting weirder and weirder and worse and worse. And it's kind of just, uh, it's kind of where it led us to today. And um yeah, but originally the, the, the issue was their prices are so high. It's like, well, their prices are high, but they're refurbished. So like, maybe it's worth it. But then we found out their prices are high and they're not actually doing what they say. So yeah, that's where we're at now. And all of the comments here are bad. Like the people are saying that there's now do this with every console and have significantly less complaints. Yep. Uh, close to placing an order. Does refurbish mean slapping a warranty sticker on the console and calling it a day? Do you also clean the GameCube pan controller panel with with and the power button with hydrogen peroxide to get rid of the yellow stain. So I would I would say I agree with their response here. They say only if it's like a cosmetically good console. If it's cosmetically flawed, we leave it alone, which makes sense to me. Like I, there's no need to clean off the yellow of every single console possible. Uh, so that makes sense. And yeah, like I'll I'll, I'll show you I'll, I'll link the video down below so you can read the comments. But it's basically the same thing um, over and over again. People are like I I don't believe this. Like this is ridiculous. Using magic eraser. Yep. This is the best, this this right here is the best comment. It says, do you guys have any response to the multiple YouTubers claiming they bought your hardware and it isn't wasn't clean or refurbished? Just listen to the response. Like I cannot believe they responded this way. They said, with the huge amount of orders that ship out each day, 
Occasionally, a mistake slips by. We're only human after all. It looks like a desert. <laughs> but if anyone has an issue with what they receive, they just need to contact us and we'll get it fixed ASAP. Now, first thing I'll say is the customer service is good. I reached out to them a couple of times and they, they respond back quickly. But the issue is that every single console they're sending out is not refurbished, like except the one on the video. Uh, I, I, like, I can't believe their, their excuse for not refurbishing consoles is like, we're just, we're only human. Mistakes happens. It's not a mistake when I get five consoles from you and all five are not refurbished. That's not a mistake. That's a fundamental problem going on. So I, I, I just, every time I read this, I cannot believe that's what they said. You get the point. I, I'm not happy with this is where this is led. Um, I, like, I've tried to stop making videos about them because I, I just want to get them out of my head. But the fact that they keep coming back again, making videos like this, comments like this, and just like, it's ridiculous. And I can't believe they're doing that. They're they're making these videos, tricking their customers into thinking they're getting a product like this, but in all likelihood they're not going to unless their product just happened to be on video. Then it's good. But like I said, to be fair, maybe they changed their policy as of yesterday. Like I mean, like maybe as of yesterday they are now refurbishing their consoles. I I don't know. But they've been calling them refurbished for years, and clearly they're not refurbished. So it just like boils my blood. I I can't believe they're doing this. And um, yeah, let me know down below what you guys think. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Man, the DK Audi saga just keeps going deeper and deeper. So a few days ago, they made a video on their YouTube channel claiming that they do indeed refurbish all their consoles, which we all know is not quite true. And I made a response video to that the next day. And then since my video a few days ago, there's been some uh, some other developments here. So we're going to talk about it. So here's the video they published. It's called DK Audi's refurbishes their consoles, which we all know is not quite true based on the videos I've made, the videos other YouTubers have made. And um, it's just frankly a ridiculous response. Uh, to just sweep everything under the rug and say, yes, we do indeed refurbish consoles. When the fact is everybody's buying your consoles, none of them are refurbished. The, the reason this hasn't come out in the past is because your typical customers are not opening up the console, taking a look inside. So they're just slapping a warranty sticker on the screw, scaring people from opening them up. And uh, I, I have some more stuff on that later, but frankly, just ridiculous. And the audacity to post a video like this is just, I, I can't believe it. But anyway, that's not the point of this video. I have some other interesting things to point out. And first of all, we're going to take a look at the like to dislike ratio. So I don't have the plugin on my computer to, to show you that, but my editor does. I'll let him show the like to dislike ratio right now. But basically you see 2.4 thousand likes right now. There's probably six or 7 thousand dislikes. So in general, people are, are not very receptive to this video. And if we scroll down some, you can see the comments, but there's, there's a lot of negative comments, which actually I'm very surprised they're still here because usually they delete their comments and we'll get into that in a minute. Yesterday, I made a video showing a few things that were odd about this refurbished Xbox 360 that I paid $145 for from DK Oldies. Ironically, they posted a video about refurbishing a PS2 just minutes after I posted my video. And that video had dozens of comments mentioning the refurbished 360 that I had bought from them. But then I checked again this morning and poof, all of those comments were gone. Fortunately, I did screenshot a few of those last night. But the first one here is this isn't taking accountability. This is deflecting criticism vaguely. And I think that's a perfect description of this video. And uh, there's a bunch of other negative comments here. And like I said, I'm pretty surprised they're still here because frankly, they have a history of deleting all the negative comments, leaving only the positive ones, kind of putting a positive spin, which I can't entirely blame them. There are businesses trying to make money. So obviously they don't want negative attention, uh, but it, it's just it's just very sketchy because they're sweeping everything under the rug and saying, yes, we do indeed refurbish consoles. Everybody out there making videos is is uh, incorrect. And to actually go deeper on that, they actually have deleted some comments on this video, which is my first point here. So uh, let me go and show you some screenshots I took. So this this comment right here is kind of the talk of the town on this video. They said, uh, basically this, this one guy replied and said, do you guys have any response to the multiple YouTubers claiming you they bought your hardware and it wasn't clean or refurbished? And they issued this ridiculous response, which says with the huge amount of orders that ship out each day, Occasionally a mistake slips by, we're only human after all. Every time I read this, I just like, I cannot believe this is their response. But here's the catch, they deleted this comment. They deleted Tyler's comment, like I cannot find them. I scrolled through the video multiple times, I can't find it anymore. So they either hit it, deleted it, and they did that days after they made that because it was there for a day or two. And that's, uh, luckily I have the screenshot to show you guys, but like I guess they finally realized how ridiculous of a comment that was, but then deleting it is even sketchier. So. Uh, that's the first odd thing they have done here. They deleted that comment. And then there's another comment I noticed they started making uh, after I made the last video. And maybe they made it before I made the last video, but I just started noticing it. So let me go ahead and scroll down and see if I can find one of them. All right, so here it is. And frankly, this is another ridiculous comment. Uh, this guy Ian says, how much refurbishing is done if it does read a disc? Do you open them up, up at all? At those prices, I hope folks aren't getting a wee full of cat hair because it was only wiped down and called refurbished. So a little bit of backstory. 
Um, basically what they do is they'll, they'll do a video showing refurbishing. They'll open it up. They'll clean out the inside and the outside, but they only do that on video because all of the, all the consoles I've gotten have not been opened except for one. I got five consoles from them. One of them was opened. Three of them still had the original warranty stickers, so we know it was never opened. And the fourth one, we all know about the PS3 that was absolutely filthy. That was clearly never opened. But now in response to this, they claim that yes, all consoles are opened and cleaned. <laughs> Carter Boone says cap. <laughs> That's facts. Just like the audacity of these replies. Why? Why do they keep going down the rabbit hole? Like they're just fueling the fire. Like, yes, we do indeed refurbish all of our consoles. Like, no, you don't. We, we all know you're not. Why are you making these comments? And this is not the only one they made. I scrolled through all the comments and found like three or four times when they say this, said the same thing. Somebody asked a pretty similar question. And they were like, yes, all consoles are open and cleaned. And it's just like the audacity to say that unless... Like the only way this is possible is if they literally change their policy like yesterday. Like maybe they did. Maybe they're opening up all the consoles now. But the problem is they're sweeping everything else under the rug, everything they've been doing for however many years. I don't know how many years they've been doing refurbishing and not actually opening it up and refurbishing, but I'm assuming it's been for a long time. I know they've been at least doing that since I started buying consoles a few months ago. So they're just sweeping all of it under the rug. So like, sorry to all the people that bought consoles that weren't actually refurbished, uh, but everybody in the future is getting one that's refurbished, but they're not... They're not coming out and explicitly saying that. They're just kind of putting things out there to make you think that now you are getting a refurbished console and nobody knows what's actually going on. And that kind of brings me to my next point. So on the video I made in reply to here, um, under my pinned comment, I had somebody commenting on here. His comment is gone, which is the funny part. This is like the, this is the really sketchy part. There was somebody you can see here at R. So there was somebody, no, I actually have a screenshot here. Uh, where'd it go? Yeah, this is the guy. I said, this this process is because of, is all because of you. They are now blowing out every single console. Go ahead and buy more and find out. I can guarantee their process. So I started replying to this guy, kind of asking some more questions, probing. Basically, he didn't know much, except that um, apparently they're opening up all consoles now. But I, I, you can see my comment here. I said, are they gonna acknowledge that this change happened or are they just hoping people forget about the past? Like, I, I feel like they dug themselves a whole way too deep at this point. So it's definitely a bit sketchy that this guy deleted all of his comments. I don't know if he actually works for them and made these comments, you know, it's the internet, people can say anything. So I don't know if he actually works for them um, or and somebody told him to delete the comments or if he deleted them himself, but it is a bit sketchy that he said that and then deleted his comments. So I, I don't really know what to think about that. Let me know down below what you think. I, I don't know, um, just a little bit weird. And then to keep going deeper and deeper, another thing that's a little bit odd, if you go to DK Woody's YouTube channel, you'll notice they post shorts every day. They post like, I don't know, three or four shorts a day probably. Now they're long form videos, they post every once in a while, but the, the odd thing is they posted this DK Woody's refurbishes their consoles five days ago, and then three days, four days later, they posted another video. And it's almost as if, as if they're trying to brush this one under the rug and get it deeper down in the search results. Because if you look at their history, they do not post long form content very much. I looked at this, this one says one month ago, it was like January 3rd. This one was like December 21st or something. These are all in like December, November. And then before that it was four months. So it's kind of odd that they're all of a sudden making a video only three or four days later. Um, and it's almost as if they're trying to push the bad video down in the search results, down in their page. I, you know, I don't know if that's actually what's happening, but to me on the outside looking in, that's, that's kind of what it looks like. But let's go back up here to the video and I wanna make a couple other comments here. Um, I'm not going to show the whole thing because you guys can see the whole thing in my last video. Uh, but there's a few odd things I noticed. So if you come over here to the guy that's refurbishing these consoles, you'll start to see a few weird things. First of all, they're only cleaning out the Wii because it had an issue. That's, that's besides the point of this video. I had some other stuff to talk about. But if you look at this guy's screen, let me see if I can find the spot. Yep. All right. So here it is. There's a monitor here on this desk. And there's some interesting stuff on here. I can't read everything, but there's like some a sticker that says needs to pee maybe. That says OnlyFans, I think. I don't know, just some some odd stuff going on here. Weird to show it on video, but uh, just uh, the the funniest part is look at this chart up here. I'll have my editor zoom in on it. I'm not gonna comment anything on it, but yeah, interesting chart to have on your wall and then having a video. I know it's a little bit nitpicky, but I was just watching this video again and, and noticed. So so I don't know, man. There's just a lot of weird stuff going on. They keep deleting comments, keep covering stuff up, keep pushing stuff down the ladder. I don't I don't know what's going on over there, but they just keep keep doing stuff to keep the, the saga alive, the drama alive. I don't know what's going on, but maybe one day they'll come out and publicly say that they are now refurbishing consoles, but I don't, I don't think it'll ever happen. Um, I sure hope it does though. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. 
So DK Audis is back at it again, and man, they just cannot get out of their own way. So let's talk about it. Now, there's been a few more developments in the DK Audis saga since I last made a video about them. Uh, so we're going to talk about that in this video, and I want to kind of start from the beginning and just show you where, where this all started. So as you probably know by now, they made a video a few weeks ago called DK Audis refurbishes their consoles. And I'm not going to talk about this video too much because we've already talked about it a lot. You've seen everything, but there's a couple of new developments here I want to mention. And uh, the first thing, first thing first, just a quick recap. This video was them, it was kind of their response to myself and all the other YouTubers that are out there making videos, uh, unboxing their consoles and seeing that they're not refurbished. Uh, so frankly, this is a ridiculous response, but uh, like I said, not gonna get into it too much, just a recap. They basically showed their refurbishing process on camera, cleaning it, whatever. Now, something funny I didn't notice before, but somebody sent this to me on Twitter. If you take a close look here, it says, it shows the, the box that he's putting the white Wii into, it says white Wii, no GameCube. Uh, which, if you watch the video, you know this GameCube they cleaned up is a GameCube compatible Wii, so they're actually putting the Wii in the wrong box. I think that's just that's just pretty funny, honestly. And there's a couple comments on this video I've already talked about before, but I want to talk about them again because I just I can't get enough of them. Now, the first one is Tyler saying, "Do you guys have any response to the multiple YouTubers claiming they bought your hardware and it wasn't cleaned or refurbished?" And then they made one of the most ridiculous responses of all time. They actually deleted this since then, but I have a screenshot and it says, "With the huge amount of orders that ship out each day, occasionally a mistake slips by. We're only human after all." And man, every time I read that, I just like I can't believe that's their comment with all the videos. Like, have they not seen all of the videos that I've made, Rich from Review Tech has made, uh, just uh, plenty of others as well, unboxing their consoles and clearly seeing they're not clean or refurbished. And the the audacity to say this, just like, I can't believe it. But I've talked about it a lot. I just wanted to <laughs> talk about it one more time. And then this one, just as bad almost, it says, this was a scenario where something needed to be repaired. All the consoles taken apart and cleaned if no repairs are needed. So a little backstory. Basically in the video, they repaired the laser uh, inside the Wii. So they had to open up the Wii to clean it out. And he's asking... Do you guys open them up every console and clean it out, even if it doesn't have issues? And they respond back and say, yes, all consoles are open and clean, which is like, like I cannot believe they said that. I've, I've purchased five consoles from them. Four of them were never opened. Never opened. Three of them still had the warranty seals intact, so you know, you know they were never opened. One of them was the PS3 that you guys have all seen by now, and clearly that was never opened. So just ridiculous responses. And the crazy part is that's only getting started. Like that's not even the worst thing in this video. Next up, let's go to one of the shorts they made. So this, they made this short uh, called Did DK Oides Cut the Metroid Box? So this is kind of another another bit of drama they brought up where they, they I actually did not see the video original video, but they posted a video and apparently in the video, uh, Joey opened up the box and, and accidentally cut the Super Metroid, uh, the actual Super Metroid box. And they deleted it very quickly because people were commenting like, hey, you just cut that box. And then they made a short kind of trying to redeem themselves like, yeah, I made a mistake. And then the funny part is in the comments. And let me just show you guys because I still cannot believe they said it. <sighs> let me just find it. I'm actually very surprised it's, it's still here, not deleted. But um, here it is. So uh, Fatalis57 says, how does a retro, retro store have so much beef in the comments? Just come here for the nostalgia. And DK always replies and says... Some people just want to spread hate and others are jealous of our success. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Some people just want to spread hate and others are jealous of our success. That's your reply? That That is your reply. Some people just want to spread hate and others are jealous of our success. So now I don't know who they're specifically talking about. Others, others, others are jealous of our success. I'm assuming me, uh, Rich from Review Tech, anybody else that's making videos about them, they're, we're just jealous of them. Yeah, I'm just jealous of their success, of their success of selling uh, consoles that are that are not what they claim to be. I, I just like I, I can't even get words out for this. Like I cannot believe they replied that, and I can't believe it's still up. Like the audacity to say this that people are jealous of your success. Just no ownership has been taken here. Like they're shipping out all these consoles. Like the worst part is they're making videos online saying, "Here's our process of cleaning and, and refurbishing," and they show the whole process, and then they only do it on camera. They they don't do that when they send out a send out a console to you or I or anybody normal. Like if you, if you get lucky enough to get a console that's cleaned on camera, then man, you, you hit the jackpot. You got a console that's refurbished and cleaned. But if you're like 99.99% of people who don't get their order filmed, they send out a console to you that has maybe been wiped down on the outside, uh, maybe cleaned out on the inside if it had an issue. But if it's just a normal console, no issue, they just ship it out. They don't open it up. And like the audacity to say that people are just wanting to spread hate and be jealous of our success. Like I just could not believe they commented that. It's just a, I don't know, man. Um, but we got a few more things to go over. So uh, they also, it's come up recently, but they made this video like a long time ago 
um, of them smashing some Game Boy Advance systems. And uh, they said they're all knockoff, but then people looked closer and they realized that one of these knockoffs was actually a legit IQ system, which is rare. I believe it's a, a Chinese, basically the Chinese version of the Nintendo, or the yeah, Nintendo Game Boy Advance. And they smashed it on video. People are kind of getting, just, just finding out about that. I'm not going to talk too much about that, but that was, that was interesting find. And then just like every short and every video they post now has these comments, people asking, uh, how about those videos about unrefurbished consoles? Don't have to refurbish these. No wonder he's so happy. I haven't seen that one yet. That's pretty funny. Um, but like, it's just, I don't know. I'm actually surprised these are still up. These are from two days ago and they're still up because they're, they're known for deleting pretty much anything, even slightly negative. Like I, I understand deleting comments. Everybody on YouTube deletes comments, filters out comments, but like they just delete everything that's even slightly negative. And even actually, I didn't even talk about this. Going back to the, the DK Oldies cut the Metroid console, they're kind of, this is really smart. They're trying to flip the flip the script here. They're saying that I think I think what happened in this video is they gave away the Metroid to somebody who made a nice comment. So they're kind of baiting people to make nice comments on their videos, which like I get why they're doing. I just it's just it's just funny. And then honestly, we're not even to the best part yet. Like you've seen some interesting beef in this video. That's not even the best part. This guy named Kreisky um, made a video called DK Oldies Responds regarding my console not being refurbished. So he made a, a video. He bought an N64 from them opened it up and it was dirty, just not refurbished like most of the other consoles. And uh, <laughs> I'll just show you to, this to you guys, but it's funny because they basically told him before he sends it back, like try to fix it yourself. That's what they told him. They said, yeah, we didn't refurbish it, but uh, try to try to get it refurbished yourself before you send it back. So um, let's just watch the video. So right after that unboxing in the previous video, I reached out to DK Oldies. I sent them an email. I told them, hey, look, this is what you sent me. This is my... Yeah, so basically... After he bought this console, he made the video. Then he made it, he sent an email to DK, DK Oldies and said, my console is not refurbished. Can you, let's see, what did he say? My order number and it does not work. And out of my pure curiosity, I opened it up to see if- Okay, yeah, yeah. So he, he, he responded to them and said, uh, my console doesn't work. Actually, yeah, his his issue with the console, I forgot it, it did not even work. So he they sent him a broken console, it wasn't cleaned out or anything. So even worse than not being refurbished. And um, he sent him an email and said, you know, my console I got from you guys, it, it doesn't work. I opened it up to look at it because I was curious. If I can see any telltale signs why it doesn't and, work. And when I opened it up, it was absolutely yeah. disgusting on the inside. Yeah, so he's talking here about how he, he told Dickie Oldies, he's like, yeah, like I opened it up, I took your warranty sticker off and I saw it was disgusting inside. Basically, they had the audacity to reply to them. Here's a reply. It says, hello, thanks for reaching out to me. I am sorry to hear that you're having issues with your console. Prior to sending anything back to be exchanged, please try these quick tips to resolve your issues. So they're saying that uh, <laughs> since we sent you a broken console, please try to fix it yourself before sending it back. And uh, let's go ahead and get into the just the, the, the recommendations they gave him. So he's, they said, first of all, they said, all our, our games and consoles are clean, tested and working before shipping out. And these tips have res resolved 99.9% .9 of problems occurred. So first of all, they're saying that everything is clean and tested here. They sent him a broken console. It wasn't clean, so the audacity to say that. And then here they're basically saying, uh, you know, make sure your your TV is set up correctly, which is it's a that's a fair statement. Like some people don't know how to don't know how to set that up, and it, it causes issues. And then make sure your AV cables are properly connected. That's fair as well. There it is. Yeah, yeah. So here it is. This is the <laughs> this is the funny part. They say, when in doubt, blow. I don't know if they actually said that in the email if he put he put that there, but <laughs> they told him to blow into your cartridge to make it work. So he said, he's like, yeah, this, this, uh, this N64 doesn't work. He, and by the way, he tried it out. He tried this game out on his own N64 and it worked fine, but they put it in the DK Oldies one and it, it did not work at all. And they said, oh, why don't you try to blow out your cartridge? This is not needed. If you actually clean the console and clean the cartridge slot, clean the games. That was just like, they basically said, please clean the console. I don't really know if I need to put any more words there. I'm honestly not sure. Yeah, there it is. That's they actually said that in the email when in doubt blow. Why would they say that? What? No, I didn't even see this part or I skipped it or something when all it's fails clean it <laughs> That's even funnier <laughs> so they, <laughs> Yeah, so they, they literally told Kreisky to clean your console. They're like, yeah, sorry We sent you a, a, a dirty console. Please clean it before sending it back If you guys don't know see, see the issue with that, I don't know what else to say but Yeah, I think it, I, th I think he ended up sending it back eventually But it's just it's just wild that they told him basically a uh, uh, clean your console before you send it back And then I have some more more comments to show you guys. It's not we're not over yet. We're not done yet. Uh, so <laughs> here's a couple of just co random comments from shorts. I saw, um, basically this guy says this poor guy can't do anything without people jumping all over him. It happens, bro. 
At least Joey was nice way to, nice enough to give it away for free. Love the content, buddy. He says, thanks so much. Haters are going to hate. That's like the response to everything now. Haters are going to hate. We're all haters. Just because we don't like getting non-refurbished consoles, we're all haters. This other one is the same. Uh, the internet always hopping on the hype bandwagon. He says, yes, people love to pile on with the hate. Thanks for recognizing this. It's like, come on, man. I don't know. I have no words for that. I don't know who's making these comments, but it's somebody from DK Oides, obviously. And then here's the best part. This is leading into a video coming out this Friday about, um, if you guys remember, I'm sure you remember the backwards compatible PS3 I bought from DK Oides and it was like a desert inside. It was like a desert. <laughs> Absolutely filthy. Probably the most disgusting console I've ever seen um, in person. And uh, so I replied back to him to be fair. It wasn't me replying back to him. I had somebody else order it. Uh, I've been doing that for a while, but the, the guy who ordered it for me, he replied back to them and said, um, hi, I ordered a PS3 from you guys last month and it was supposed to be refurbished. I've attached some photos of this PS3 and would like to turn, return this console for one that is actually refurbished this time. So yeah, we were a little bit sassy there. I mean, can you blame us? Like the con, did you see the console they sent? Like this is, we we're like, yeah, please, please send us an actually refurbished console this time. And you can see here, uh, attach some photos of the dirty console. And I, I, I would hope these guys have seen this this video by now. Maybe they haven't. Maybe they're just completely oblivious to the, the YouTube drama. But I, I I would imagine they've seen this video by now. Like, you've got to. So the best part is their response. The first part is just, like, normal stuff. It says, hello, thanks for reaching out to me. Sorry to hear that you received your console in that condition. And then they give all the info about tracking info and whatever. For, and then this is the... <laughs> This is the funny part. For future reference, opening up a console does void the warranty, but I talked to my department lead and I will be sending out this replacement and we'll work with you here. So they're, <laughs> they're saying that this is they're like, yeah, we'll, we'll work with you here. We sent you the dirtiest PS3 of all time, but we'll, we'll work with you here. Uh, <laughs> just like the, the audacity of this response. Like they just, they won't stop. They keep doing it to themselves. Like they just like, what in the world? For future reference, opening up a console and, and seeing that we actually did not clean it voids the warranty. I'm trying to come up with words here, but I, I just don't know how to reply to these guys like saying stuff like this. And yeah, I have a video coming out this Friday of unboxing this console. I have not opened it up yet, so I don't know what they sent, but, but we'll see. So make sure to check out that video in a few days. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. But thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. So DK Oldie sent me a replacement console for the non-refurbished PS3 they sent me a few weeks ago. And in this video, we're going to open it up. We're going to take an in-depth look at it and see if they actually refurbished anything this time. I'll link the last video down below, but just for a quick recap, they sent me a filthy uh, PS3 console, backwards compatible. And they also sent me a third-party controller, which is not compatible with PS2 games, which is pretty bad for a backwards compatible PS3. So we're going to see what they sent me this time. And before I open it up, I wanted to show you the email we sent them uh, kind of asking for a, for a new console. And so here it is. It said... Hi, I ordered a PS3 from you guys last month and it was supposed to be refurbished. I've attached some photos of this PS3 and would like to return this console for one that is actually refurbished this time. Um, yeah, so we were a little bit sassy, but I mean, you guys saw the last console. It was disgusting. I, I, I think we deserve a new console there. So we attached some photos there. And so here's the response they sent back. They said, hello, thanks for reaching out to me. Sorry to hear that you received your console in that condition. Then a bunch of a few sentences about how to return it, whatever. And then here's the funny part. They said, for future reference, opening up a console does void the warranty, but I talked to my department lead and we'll, we'll be sending out a replacement and we'll work with you here. So they're saying they're only sending out a replacement because it's just like a special case. Like uh, usually we don't allow people to open up their console and see that it hasn't been refurbished, but we'll, we'll work with you here this time. So just, I don't have any words for that. Just kind of funny, but let's go ahead and open this console up. And now, as you can see, the label clearly is from DK Oldies. Some people don't believe me for some reason, but uh, let's go ahead and open it up now. All right, we got it sliced open. Let's go ahead and see what's inside of here. We've got some packaging and here is our info. All right, so this right here is a shipping label to send it back. I'll put that to the side. So here's the packing slip and on the note it says, please clean. <laughs> so they, they had to notify department, their department that they actually needed to clean the console this time. That's pretty funny. No idea what all these other stickers mean. Now the concern here is it says no controller. So I guess they're not sending me a real controller that'll actually work with PS2 games. To be fair, I didn't tell them that, but I guess they haven't watched the video. I don't know. Let's go ahead and see what's in, inside of this bubble wrap. All right, so first of all, we have a little slip right here, system and game startup. This thing is just useless for PS3s. There's nothing on here that helps with setting up a PS3. I don't know why they include that. All right, so here's the console. And honestly, at first glance, I'm not sure it looks any better than the last one. It's extremely scratched up. You get some pretty big scratches on the top. One right there, another right there, one right there. There's just tons of scuffs on it. Um, here on the front, you also get a bunch of scuffs and even a bunch of fingerprints and stuff. Not sure if those are mine or somebody else's. Bottom is uh, very, very scratched up as well. Now, I, I can't complain too much because this is a cos cosmetically flawed. That's what it's supposed to be. So, uh, and these things get scratched up just from looking at them. 
of course got your DK Oldies warranty sticker <laughs> on the side, which is always funny. And then here on the back, it does say CECH E01, which is the correct console. Now, other than the scratches and scuffs, it's not too terrible. And ultimately what we want from this console is we want the inside to be clean and we want the thermal paste to be replaced so this console will last a good long time because these things are very prone to overheating. I'll do a comparison later to the other, the other PS3 because I haven't sent it back yet. I'll be sending it back soon, but let's go ahead and plug this console in and test it out and see if it actually works. We got the console plugged in and to keep it authentic to the DK Audis experience, I'm gonna use my Double Shock 2, Double Shock 3 again. Let's go ahead and flip on the switch. Got a red light, turn it on. Any free games? Nope, <laughs> no free games. The console did indeed boot up. I'm on the main screen now. I already did all the setup, connected to the internet. Now let's go ahead and check what system firmware we're on just to see when it was last updated. So we're on 4.75, which is, I think that's relatively recent. Um, at least not super old. I'll, I'll throw up on the screen when uh, when this is from. We also have 74 gigs of free space, which sounds accurate. Now let's go ahead and put a game in and see if it works. So like I said, this is a backwards compatible PS3, so it should be compatible with PS1, PS2, and PS3 games. We're going to start with PS3 because that's probably the games you'd play the most on a PS3, obviously. And uh, we'll make sure this loads up and works. So I got Call of Duty Black Ops booted up now. Seems to work fine. I had to install a little, little bit. The fan is ramping up a little bit, which is expected. Uh, hopefully they change the thermal paste out because these things are these things are known to die um, Just because of how hot they get. Yeah, so far everything's working well uh, Let's go ahead and test out a ps2 game now and see if that works. So I got GTA Vice City a classic here We'll go ahead and put it in make sure this thing plays ps2 games I mean, that's the reason why everybody buys a backwards compatible ps3 Like there's there's no reason to have a backwards compatible ps3 if you don't want to play ps2 games So GTA Vice City is loading up, but I can't do anything because as we learned last time and as most of you probably already knew you can't use third-party controllers on PS2 games on the PS3, but I think that's a pretty big oversight when they're sending out PS3 consoles, backwards compatible PS3 consoles, and they say they're going to send a compatible controller. Like, yeah, you can get away with sending a third-party controller, except for the fact that it literally does not work on PS2 games. Like, it's, like if you're going to sell a backwards compatible PS3, the controller needs to work with PS1, PS2, and PS3 games. So that's a that's a pretty big oversight. Now, to be fair on this replacement, I did not ask for, for a replacement controller. I probably should have. Uh, but I also think they should just know that like they're selling so many of these things They should be sending out compatible controllers that actually work with ps2 games GTA Vice City on the ps2 is working I've been playing it for a while. We got some air coming out, but it's not too hot. So uh, that's questionable Let's go ahead and go back. We'll test out a ps1 game real quick Gran Turismo 2 for the ps1 is working fine I didn't really test it out th that much, but I'm not too concerned about it We're gonna go ahead and open this thing up and see what it looks like on the inside because I'm I'm very curious if they open this up and actually clean it out or if they still just uh, left the inside untouched. So actually one more thing before I open up the replacement console, I forgot I wanted to do a comparison here. So on the left side, I have the old PS3, the first one they sent me that was extremely dirty. This one is the new one. And honestly, from the outside, they don't like the new one does not look much better. Uh, it's very scratched up. It looks, I guess, dust wise, a little bit cleaner. This one is just even dusty on the outside. Um, but I forgot, I like, I forgot how bad this one is. Uh, turned it on and I'm trying to compare like the sound levels and this one is blowing out dust out the side out the back but just for reference I've been playing the new one new one the replacement PS3 for like two hours on GTA 5 uh, just seeing how much it would ramp up and it's it's getting like it's, uh, the concerning part is it's not getting that hot out of the vents out of the vents it's like lukewarm um, but it's the fan is like ramped all the way up like it's it's really up there But the funny thing is this one right here has been on for like just like 10 minutes installing a game and it's already pretty close like it's It's blowing out really hot air and it's I wouldn't call it It's still like lukewarm But it's the fan is ramping up pretty quickly because obviously this thing is caked in dust And that's just kind of the difference between a, a clean console and a caked in dust console now I'm, I'm assuming this one's cleaner inside. We haven't opened it up yet. So I don't know yet All right So one more thing. This is kind of funny literally the second I turn the camera off this one ramped up to the next fan level See these are these are actually at the same fan level now. Oh oh. Ooh, Our newer one our newer one just ramped up again. What is going on here? I'm gonna have to play some more GTA because this one the one that I've been playing for about an hour or two just ramped up again So it's going to the next level. I'm gonna play some more make sure it doesn't overheat and then we'll finally open these consoles up. So it's finally time to open this thing up. I played GTA for a couple hours, never overheated, which is a good sign. Um, but the, the bad sign is that the air it was blowing out was not that hot. So it tells me thermal paste was probably not replaced. But let's go ahead and take this thing apart and see what it looks like on the inside. So I have the top cover off now and it does look a bit dusty in here. It's not like super dusty, but it does tell me that they probably did not open this up and clean it out because like, why would there still be so much surface dust right here? I don't know. It's obviously not nearly as bad as the last one, thank goodness, but it still just <laughs> worries me a bit that they did not actually open this one up and clean it out. 
All right, time for the big reveal here. And here we go. Oh, 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 that's my bad. I didn't mess anything up. Let me let me unclip this real quick. Yeah, they definitely did not open this up because it's still, I mean, obviously this is very nitpicky about being dusty, but th the fact is that we're trying to investigate if they're actually opening consoles up and cleaning them out. And like, what is that dusty? That means they're not. Again, that's at least that's surface dust and not like, all caked in here like the uh, like the other one was um now this part looks good i uh, don't see really any dust in the power supply i'm gonna go ahead and open up the other console and kind of show you guys just for a comparison because i just like i can't get over how dusty that one was all right so here on the left side is obviously the super dusty one there that one's really dusty and dirty and, and again this the the camera does not do it justice it's worse in person than it is on camera like it just does not do it justice. Let me go ahead and take this top cover off and show you the real surprise. All right, so here you go. Again, on the left side is the dirty PSU from last time. Just caked with dust all over it. <laughs> this is not even the best part. Like, this is very dirty as well. The best part is, like, the very bottom piece is, like, just like a desert, as I call it. It looks like a desert. <laughs> and obviously, thermal paste was not replaced. Just just terrible. Um, Again, go watch that video if you haven't. It's, it's amazing. But uh, I'll pull this to the side now. We'll get back to the one I got today. So I have enough screws out now to take the whole board out of the plastic and we can kind of see what's going on here. And nice, gotta love dust. Now we know for sure this will not open. There's just like, look at that down there. Wow. You know, obviously that's not terrible, but <laughs> when you call a console refurbished, it, it would be nice if you refurbished it. And, and, and here's the problem is that there's a lot of places, granted, there's a lot of places out there that call their stuff refurbished and don't actually refurbish them. But the problem with DK Audis is they're showing these videos to the whole world to see. They're like, yeah, we, we open and clean and refurbish all of our consoles. They're, you know, replacing capacitors, swapping out lasers, you know, whatever else. And they're cleaning, they're opening up all the consoles, cleaning them out on the inside and outside. And then they say that, but then they send consoles like this that are not clean at all. And like, which is like even more amazing from the fact that like they're, there's no chance they haven't seen the video of the P original PS3, and it's pretty easy to trace who bought that PS3. It made it even easier after sending that email to them, and then they still send this. All right, guys, so I wanted to butt in here real quick after making the rest of the video, because uh, I'm so mad about this. Like, let's just think about this for a second. If if they're sending me dirty consoles, you know, me who's making unboxings, reviews on YouTube for the whole world to see, and they know it, like I, I sent them an email, it wasn't me because I'm sending it to a different address, but like, Trust me, it's pretty easy to track. Like, I didn't make it that hard to see that that PS3 is the one in the video. Basically, they, they should know that it's me. And if they're sending me dirty PS3s, dirty consoles, what are they sending you guys? Like, this is their version. Like, I, I, said, I told them, I said, please refurbish it this time. They know it's going to be on video, and they still send this. Not cleaned, not refurbished. They're still sending this. What are they sending you guys? They're not cleaning or refurbishing their, their consoles. Like, they, they're making these videos. They're, they're trying to cover up. And they're they're not cleaning or refurbishing their consoles. It's just a uh, is it a, is this a dream? Like what is what is going on here? Just just food for thought. Just think about it. Let's just keep going and see what it looks like. And I've already said it a few times, but I'll say it again. It, the the camera does not do it justice. Like uh, you know, it, it looks dirty on camera, but it's even worse in person. Especially that the other PS3. Uh, like it looks bad on camera, but in person it's like ten times worse. Surprisingly, I don't know how, but it is. All right, so here's the fan. Again, hard to get a good look at it, but you can tell, still caked in dust. I wouldn't call it caked, but just like pretty filthy. You actually are caked down here with dust. Again, you, it's harder to see on camera, but let me let me take some photos and I'll show it on the screen. All right, now let's pull this piece off and there we go. So now we can see our thermal paste. Good stuff. It's just basically all gone. Like, <laughs> oh man. And it's like, it, it's just covered in dust around it. And you know, this is the worst place to have dust and dirt. You get a lot of dust and dirt, you overheat, no thermal paste, and uh, your console dies dead forever. I actually kind of want to take off this other piece now to see what it looks like under here. All right, let's go ahead and take off the silver piece. And yep, so there you go. Um, you can see all kinds of dust and dirt caked around there, caked around the thermal pads there, caked around the, the GPU and CPU, which like I said, worst place to have dust and dirt. Clearly not nearly as bad as the last one, but still it should not look like this if it's clean and refurbished. That that right there is not good for <laughs> for a CPU and GPU. To have that much thermal paste, it's just, it's not doing anything, not hardly doing anything. So uh, yeah, I, there you have it guys. I guess even if you ask DK Audis to refurbish your console, they still don't. Um, they don't even fully clean it. So I don't know what to say at this point. Like I, uh, I'll let you guys decide for yourself what you think in the comments. But thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. So as per usual, DK Audis cannot get out of their own way. So let's talk about it.
So first of all, I want to talk about the video I put out last Friday about a replacement console that DK already sent me. So a little backstory, uh, about a month ago, I bought a backwards compatible 80 gig PS3 from them. I unboxed it on camera and uh, opened it up and it was honestly probably the dirtiest console I've ever seen. So uh, as we all know, they refurbish consoles. They say they refurbish consoles and clean consoles. This console was not cleaned and not refurbished. Uh, obviously very disappointing. You've probably seen the video by now, but if you haven't, the video will, link will be down below. And then in response to that, I sent them an email and said, hey, I want a, an actual refurbished PS3 this time. So I'll, I'll show the email on the screen, but a little bit sassy there and said, uh, can you please send me a really, an actually refurbished console this time? And basically they sent me another refurbished console and I, I put out the video last week, uh, opened it up and what do you know? A PS3 was still not refurbished. And the question to think about here is if they're sending me, you know, someone who you, they know is gonna get a bunch of views on YouTube for unboxing the console, if they're sending me that kind of console, what are they sending you guys? Like, if that's their cream of the crop, what, what are they sending everybody else who's not going to unbox it on YouTube? And uh, the funnier part is, like, I'll show it on the screen, but uh, the packing slip they included said, please clean. So whoever processed the, re the return or whatever even told the cleaning team to actually clean this one, please. And they still didn't. So I don't know. That, that the biggest issue I've seen here at DK Audis is they have a communication issue. And I'll, I'll talk about this more on Friday. I, I have... A video I think you guys will really like on Friday. I have, uh, let's just say, an inside source. We have a new video coming out on Friday about that. And um, yeah, I'll get more into that then. But I think they have a communication issue inside. We, we know they do. They're, they're just the, the teams are not communicating. Uh, one team says, please clean. The other team doesn't clean it. I don't know what exactly what's going on there, but uh, just some food for thought. And to continue on the whole communication thing, uh, another thing that I've seen a lot of stuff in the past that shows the communication is not there, but something I've seen recently is the whole warranty thing. So in my last video, I talked about the fact that I sent them this email. They replied back and said uh, they were kind of reluctant to see that it's in the PS3 since I had opened it up. And um, there's been a lot of people talking on YouTube how it's basically you, you can't put the warranty seal on the PS3 or, or any console for that matter. And essentially the emails they sent back to me said, uh, usually, usually we don't send replacements for somebody that's opened up a console because that voids the warranty. And then people on YouTube were like, yeah, that doesn't actually void the warranty. And then somebody else, I'll show the screenshot on the screen. Somebody else uh, sent me this photo of them sending an email to DK, DK Oldies and asking about their warranty saying, if we open it up, is it voiding the warranty? And this person says, no, it's not. So there's like conflicting information there. Both of these emails were within like two weeks of each other. And there's just so much conflicting information that we don't know what's actually going on there and like what their actual policies are, what they're actually doing. Uh, I don't know, just pretty questionable. And some more food for thought. You guys probably remember a few weeks ago when they made that uh, video about how they refurbish consoles. And in that video, they were replying to a lot of comments saying that they do indeed open up and clean all of their consoles. Now, the replacement PS3 I got, uh, I, I guess, so one thing, I, one thought I had that here is that they maybe, maybe change their policy that as soon as they published this video, they decided that, yeah, we'll open up and clean the consoles now. Uh, I thought maybe they changed their policy and before they weren't. And they didn't make that clear, but that's what, one of my thoughts was. And to test that theory, I got this replacement PS3, which by the way, the email about the PS3, the, the replacement PS3 was after the refurbished video. So if that was a new policy, that policy should be in effect. So that means I should have gotten an open and clean PS3. And in fact, I did not. So we know that they're still saying that they're opening and cleaning consoles, but they're still not. So I don't know, guys, just, just, just wild. And this is not even the beginning. I have a few other points to talk about that are very interesting. Now, something DK Audi started doing, I guess, last week, uh, they started making these videos where they take somebody's positive review on YouTube of their products. They kind of stitch it into to DK Audi's video and say, thanks for leaving us a good review. If you leave a good review, we might show your video here. We might send you some free stuff. So they're kind of baiting good reviews, which is like, that's, you know, every business wants good reviews. So I can't blame them. It's just like, the timing of that is impeccable. Like the fact that they've seen, we've seen all these bad reviews from me, Rich from Review Tech USA, anybody else who's buying console from them and, and realizing that they're not actually refurbished. Uh, and just the timing of that, all of a sudden they're making these videos about, yeah, we refurbished consoles and oh yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna reward people who make good reviews. Just the whole situation is sketchy. But essentially this guy makes a, a video unboxing the DK Audi's order on camera. And uh, I've seen a bunch of people in the comments saying that it was staged, fake, or whatever. I, I looked through this guy. I found this guy on TikTok. I don't think it was staged. Like, I think he's just a normal retro gaming guy. He seems pretty positive about all the stuff he buys. So I'm not too surprised he was super positive about the DK Audis order. The whole video was just framed weird from DK Audis. At, at the end of the video, they were like, yeah, please 
Uh, let me let me just zoom to it and or fast forward to it, and I'll I'll show you what they say. All right, so here's the bit I want to show you guys. Let's listen to this. Sharing that tribe wolf as a thank you, and because I know you're a Zelda fan, I'm giving you a free copy of Majora's Mask with the expansion pack included. You're gonna love this one. I wish I could film everybody's order that asked, but there just isn't the time. But if you want a second chance, post a video of you open up your stuff, and you might get featured next. All right, so yeah, as you can see, they're now trying to get people to uh, leave. A, they're basically trying to get people to order from them leave a comment saying, please for my order. So there's a very there's a very large incentive for people to buy from them so they film their order. And then if it doesn't get filmed, they're like, all right, well still you can make a good review afterwards and we then we might film it then. Uh, there's nothing wrong with all that. It's just, it's just the, the timing of this second part is funny. And uh, the other funny part, as you saw, um, Joey gave them, gave Tribe Wolf a, a Majora's Mask for the N64. So I found Tribe Wolf on, on TikTok, found his original video, uh, which by the way, it's like four minutes long. There's some other funny bits in there. Um, again, I think this, there's nothing wrong with what this guy is posting. Um, but it was funny how DK Woody's left out the part where he unboxed uh, the third-party controller, the Wii Remote, and the, the the nunchuck. I'll leave that to you guys to interpret. But um, the funnier part is that literally like a few days before uh, DK Woody sent him that free copy of Majora's Mask, he had actually bought a copy of, a copy of Majora's Mask from a local game shop. Yeah, and you can see it right here. He bought Majora's Mask from some local shop. And DK Woody sent him a free copy. So I don't know what he did with, did with the other copy. He probably sold it or something. I don't know. All right. You know what, guys? This is getting even deeper and weirder. So I actually filmed this portion of the video yesterday. And uh, so this guy had a, a video, like I mentioned, he, he had a video where he actually bought Majora's Mask from a local, local GameStop wherever he lives. And uh, then conveniently, DK Woody sent him a brand new copy. Or not a brand new copy. Sorry. He, they sent him a free copy a few days later. And uh, I just thought it was kind of funny that they sent him the same... Uh, the same game. Uh, I, I guess they didn't watch his TikTok, but then I go back to his TikTok page and that video is now gone. I'm probably reading into it too much, but I don't know why it's just all of a sudden gone. But I actually have a screen recording here that I took yesterday and you can see uh, his video here where he did indeed go to a local game shop and bought Majora's Mask. And then a few days later, uh, you know, DK Woody's gave him a free copy. I'm probably reading into it too much, but it's just an odd situation. Um, but let's move on to the, the, the next weird thing I saw. All right, so just today they posted this video, and I'll just I'll play it for you so you can see it. And I'm gonna show you how we open it. All right, I got an Xbox System Player Pack, and I used the coupon Retro Forever. That's right, first of many orders, new fan, loving what you guys do. Now that's what I call a beauty. All right, so there's a few things in this video. I did a little bit of digging, found her original video, and uh, first of all, there's nothing wrong with her video. Her video's fine. She unboxes it, whatever, on camera. Nothing wrong with her video. Uh, the the, but the way DK Audis frames it is weird. Now, first of all, the first thing I noticed is that this video, I, I looking around the Xbox logo at the end, you, do you guys see that dust too? Like the kind of, I wouldn't say caked, but there's a, a somewhat of an excess amount of dust around the Xbox logo. And while that's not a big deal, th what that tells me is that if there's dust like that on the outside of the console, what does the inside of the console look like? And that's what we've been seeing recently is that uh, the outside of the console is pretty clean most of the time, but then the inside is just covered in dust, dirt, Never opened, never refurbished. Now the shorts on YouTube are a bit grainy, so I don't know 100% sure. I'm not 100% sure this is dust, but it sure looks like it to me. And uh, the other part that's interesting is going back to her video. This video she posted was on August 19th, 2022. So they are digging up reviews from six months ago to post on their, their YouTube channel. I don't know, a bit sketchy if it took them, they had to go back six months to find a good review. Um, I'm just saying a, a little bit odd. And the whole situation is weird with th these videos they're making where they're they're encouraging people to buy orders and make good reviews. I see why they're doing it. The whole situation is weird though. The timing is weird. As we know, uh, it's, this is only happening after they've had a, bad, a lot of bad press because people are buying their consoles and opening them up and finding out that they're not actually refurbished, which is the whole issue. People have talked about the price for ages uh, but nobody's really talked about the refurbished and stuff until the last couple months until we realized they're not actually refurbished So yeah, just a lot of sketchy stuff going on and it's something new every week All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is uh, fake videos. So I've had um, <laughs> a Concerning number of people think that my videos on the DK audience situation are fake that uh, review tech USA's videos are fake that other people's videos are fake and um, uh, You know, do you know how weird it would be for all of a sudden just a ton of YouTubers to be unboxing their consoles and, and faking videos. Like, first of all, my videos are not fake. 100% real. I have, like, I literally have the camera proof. Uh, obviously, I don't post the entire film um, to YouTube because I have to do cuts and stuff to make it succinct and people will watch it, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I found this one video um, popped up of this guy. <laughs> 
calling uh, Rich's, uh, Rich from Review Tech USA, his video is fake, calling my videos fake. He basically, I'm not going to play the video, but uh, he basically says that uh, these jump cuts are suspicious. Uh, he, and stuff like that. Now, this guy very well is probably a troll. I don't know if he's very, if serious or not, but he's probably a troll. Uh, just thought it was funny. And this, this really leads me into other stuff about the whole fake video thing. So I've seen a lot of comments where people were like, oh, you took that dust from your basement, put it in the PS3, and uh, that's not actually the dust and dirt from, from DK Oldies. And it's like, guys, do you know how difficult it would be to find dust and dirt and perfectly place it in a console and uh, so that it would, it would look like that? Like, it, you can't just stage dust and dirt. It, that's just, it, you can't really do that. And if I, like... If I was able to stage that that well in the video that I made of the dirty PS3, like I need a different line of work. If I'm able to stage dust and dirt that well, I'm sure there's something else I can be doing out there that would make a whole ton of money. But yeah, it's funny how many people actually think this. Now, like I said, a lot of these people could be trolls. I'm probably feeding into their trolls just talking about this, but um, there are a concerning number of people out there who are feeding DK audience because they think these videos are fake. And that kind of leads me into another point. Uh, so I have... A Facebook page for my channel, kind of basically the same thing as the YouTube channel, and I post kind of more shorter videos on there, uh, a lot of the same stuff. But I posted a uh, a DK Oldies um, video about the PS3, the dirty PS3 I got from about a month ago. I posted that on Facebook a couple of days ago, and uh, <laughs> the comments on that video are very concerning. The the video's kind of blown up, not really blown up for Facebook, but it's got a lot more views than the other videos I posted on Facebook. And uh, if there's a lot of people in the comments defending DK Oldies and saying my video is fake, they don't believe me, they want to see a receipt. Um, so let me just show you some of these comments, and uh, yeah, they're just bad. All right, so this one is probably the worst, but this guy says, DK Oldies is doing the Lord's work getting these games to people in working condition. You ordered a cosmetically flawed console, and they reserved their original controllers for other bundles or solo sales supply and demand, homie. <laughs> Just the <laughs> the audacity to believe that DK Audis is doing the Lord's work by selling me cosmetically flawed consoles. Which, by the way, the cosmetic flaw ap applies to like plastic missing on the outside, dents, scratches, or whatever. It does not apply to the console being dirty. That doesn't excuse the console from being dirty. Just uh, just funny stuff. And this next one is kind of how I was talking about people thinking I was faking videos. It says I would believe if I was able to see the package open from the beginning. Fake reviews. Come on, man, really? And then here's this next guy saying, you bought a cosmetically flawed console with a third-party controller. You knew what you bought. You are ripping ripping on them for providing exactly what you paid for. It works. You're set. Get over it. <laughs> this is just, like, mind-blowing that I spent $400 on a PS3 that is supposed to be cleaned and refurbished, but it wasn't either, either of those things. And this, this guy is saying I got what I paid for. So um, I, I just, like, it blows my mind that people actually think this is, like, a, a reasonable thing to think. And then here's another one of the fake, the people calling it fake, says the box is open before you start the video. Box looks older than the PS3. I don't know who's more sketchy, DK Oldies or the guy doing the review. Uh, I'll, I'll just, I have no comment for that. Let's just move on to the next one. And this one's funny too. He says, you bought a PS3, not a PS2. The controller they sent you reflects what you purchased. So a little backstory. The controller they sent me is a third-party PS3 controller, which does not work on PS2 games. But I bought a backwards compatible PS3, so... The backwards compatible PS2, or excuse me, the backwards compatible PS3 plays PS3, PS2, and PS1 games. So the controller I get, they say it's compatible, so it should be compatible with PS3, PS2, and PS1 games, but it wasn't. And this guy's saying that I'm in the wrong. Come on, man. But yeah, there's like a thousand comments on that video, so I'm not going to talk about all of them, but there's a bunch of them with people saying that the that the video is fake. I, you know, they want to see a receipt. They're saying that I shouldn't be complaining about a cosmetically flawed console that's dirty. Just wild stuff. I'll link the video down below if you want to check it out. So thanks for watching, guys. And again, make sure you're here for the video on Friday. Uh, if you're into the DK Audi saga, you will want to see that video. A lot of interesting stuff is revealed there. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you then. DK Oldies, what are you doing, man? Every day it's something new. This time they're posting reviews on their YouTube channel and there's some sketchy stuff going on. So let's talk about it. So you guys have probably seen a couple of these, but as of about a week ago, DK Oldies started making these videos where they take a content creator's positive review and they re-upload it to their own channel and uh, kind of just to show off the good reviews because obviously, as you guys know, they've been getting a lot of bad reviews in the last few months because they're not refurbishing their consoles. And as I see it, they're trying to sweep all the bad reviews under the rug, show the good reviews on their channel, and show that people are getting good consoles. But uh, they're shooting themselves in the foot. Like, they're posting good reviews that are uh, that are not good let's just let me just show you so first of all this all started with tribe wolf a few weeks ago or excuse me about a week ago they posted his order uh you've probably seen this one before but he opens up his Wii and some other stuff and they give him some free stuff whatever so they're kind of they're asking people to 
to make these good reviews. And if they make a good, good review, they'll post it on their channel and they might give you some free stuff. So that's that's the incentive. Um, there's been a few weird ones. I haven't watched all of them, but uh, a few weird ones that people have sent to me that I've watched. And uh, this one right here, just watch this one. A package just arrived from DK Oldies. And I'm going to show you how we open it. All right, I got an Xbox system player pack. All right, so this one... Uh, I'll finish it out, but the first sketchy thing in this is if you look at the order number right next to the order number There is a date. This is from August 16th 2022. So they're digging up reviews from six months ago to repost in their channel uh, Which I don't know about you, but I, I find that pretty odd. Now. This is just the start of it There's some more video reviews they posted in the last couple of days that I haven't shared with you yet They're even worse than what they've what this one, but let me just I'll, I'll let you keep watching this one And then I'll point out something else in this video. That's right first of many orders new fan loving what you guys do now that's what I call a beauty. All right, so a couple problems here. First of all, she didn't open it up, which is fine. Like I, I don't expect customers to open up their consoles, but the problem is we don't know what it looks like on the inside. And my guess is that the inside is very dirty because if you look at this Xbox logo right here, just look around the edges. Do you guys see that dust? I've talked about it already, but I, I just like, I can't believe they reposted this. Like you, you can't see all that dust around the Xbox logo. If they didn't clean off the Xbox logo, well, what else do they do? Like, that's the easiest part to clean. That's the most iconic part. The Xbox logo right on top of the OG Xbox. If you don't wipe that off, did you wipe off anything? I guess not. So that's that. A sketchy one. But it gets worse. So let me just, let me show you this one. Watch me inspect my Nintendo 3DS XL from DK Oldies. I paid for the good condition, and that is exactly what I got. No scratches, no dings, perfectly mint condition. The screens look great, the joystick works, as well as the D-pad and all the buttons. The stylus was included, and the 3D effect is working just fine. So if you're asking yourself if DK Oldies is worth the hype, I'd say it's a pretty open and shut case. Support local business, support DK Oldies. So this one, I found this one hilarious, because first of all, they didn't even put a name to this one. They say, an honest DK Oldies review. Like, why, why would you, why would that be your title? Why would you not just say... DK Oldies review or uh, 3DS review, 3DS showing it off, unboxing. I don't know. An honest DK Oldies review. That just like that's a weird thing to say. Like the other ones are not honest. It's it's almost like they're in a backhanded way calling these other reviews not honest. Like like mine's not honest. Other people's are not honest. I don't I don't know if that's what they're saying, but that's that's kind of what it's hinting at. And the weirdest part is, like I said, they didn't even put a name here. Like in the other ones, they at least like here they say Amanda. They say Amanda opened up. Yeah, DK Oldies unboxing. This one it's almost like they made this video themselves and posted it and are like yes we are the customer we made our own review and some of the comments here are funny where where is it and they, here it is this is the one i found really funny it said uh, in quotation marks we've investigated ourselves and found no evidence of any wrongdoing so it's kind of like if you're familiar with uh with college sports it's kind of like how how programs will get in trouble they'll do an internal investigation and, and like clear say we did nothing wrong or they'll like uh, they'll slap themselves on the wrist and uh take away a scholarship for a year or something it's just a uh, it's just sketchy now i did look around and i did i think i found i haven't i don't have it pulled up but i think i found the original uh video on youtube somewhere somebody else posted it as a short uh now i don't know anything about that channel but it, it, again that one was, was from like two months ago but either way this is just a, a weird video now these next two are where the fun really begins let me just show you this one from zev the great it's got its n64 in games let's see what he thinks about it once again, big shout out to Joey and everybody at DK Oldies. You all are awesome. Now I'm going to unbox the package here. Oh, look at it. Just look at it. It is in fantastic condition. And these are two of some of my old time favorites. Army Man Sarge's Heroes 1 and 2. So I cannot wait to add on to my collection. Once again, to everybody that's part of DK Oldies, you all are truly the best looking forward to the future and so first thing i'll point out is first of all you'll notice the uh third party controller on the side just uh, those controllers are not good but it, <laughs> here's where the fun begins this guy he posted his his unboxing like a couple months ago again this is another one they dug up um two or three months ago and uh <laughs> ends up that he's not actually happy with his order so they dug up this old review that was good but he's since then responded back to people and even made a video saying uh, yeah i was actually not happy with that, that order you know the third party controller is junk um i paid way too much should have bought it on ebay and let me just let me just show you so here's a video here's his original video from zev the great you scroll down somebody says thanks for your review I'm definitely going to purchase from them and he says he responds back and says after seeing some recent videos on the disaster orders from them i would not recommend you buy from them 
I wish I had researched it more because from before this by because I let my nostalgia get the best of me despite my console does work and after opening and cleaning it, it works. Uh, you can save more money by going to eBay. I also would not recommend them now after what I saw recently. So <laughs> first of all, he's saying that he opened it up and cleaned it. Tells me it wasn't clean to start with. And there's a key sentence here. He says, I let my nostalgia get the best of me. And I think that rings true for a lot of DK Oldies customers. They see their cool videos, which they, I mean, they make cool videos. They make nostalgic videos. They have little games. I, I, their content on their shorts are good, but it, it, it makes people get in the nostalgia feels. They go to their website and they pay way too much for a console and then figure out it's not refurbished. And this is like, this is, yeah, he makes this, this comment 13 days ago. DK Oldies didn't bother to even look at the comments on the video they reposted. Like all they had to do is scroll down a little bit and see he wasn't happy anymore. And if I were them, I would not have posted that review. First of all, I wouldn't repost these reviews to start with because they're just, it's it's just a weird, a weird thing to do, weird scenario. Like I get you want good reviews, but the timing of this is impeccable. Like I've said, they, they started making these reviews or reposting these reviews right after all the bad reviews started coming out. It's just, just weird. And it gets, it gets worse. Like he, this guy, Zev the Great, made a, a video called My Response to DK Oldies and My Mistake Buying from Them. He made this yesterday after they uh, after they posted that video. And I'm going to I'm gonna play some of that for you. And so I just found DK Oldies via TikTok and all that stuff. And uh, I just enjoyed what their videos. And so I checked them out and I just went ahead and got a console from there. So there it is. I think that's most of the consoles. They see they enjoy the content, think it's good. It's a great, mar great marketing. Uh, they're great at marketing via TikTok and YouTube. And um, he's like, oh, I can buy a, a nostalgic console from here. Let me go ahead and do it. And people don't realize they can they can shop on eBay, other retro game stores, local, whatever. And they can get the same console considering DK Oldies doesn't actually refurbish them. But let's just keep watching this video. And um, I did get a 64 from the V. As you see, it's still right here. Still works, all that stuff. And yeah. I did go and open it after seeing all the recent controversy that has been going on around DK Oldies. I thought it was just a hate because, you know, there's just a lot of people that just get hate. It's just unfortunately the way people are. Yeah, speaking of hate, uh, please, guys, don't go to these, these guys' comments. Don't go to his comments. Don't go to the other people that are posting reviews. Don't go and leave hate in their comments. Like, if you want to go on DK Oldies videos and, and say, uh, you know, are, are you guys going to respond to cleaning or whatever, then I, I don't think there's an issue with that. But... Don't go leave hate comments on these people's videos. It's just not necessary. Uh, I did, after seeing all those videos and seeing some credible YouTubers like uh, Richard Review Tech USA, Jacob R, well, thank you. Uh, and many others, uh, and um, I just started checking them all out. And I'm like, no, uh, no way. Are you serious? So after seeing, a I think that was most people's reaction. They they see these videos and at first it's like. That's a little weird. Then they keep coming out and other people, like multiple people are posting the same types of videos. It's it's not a conspiracy theory. It's just everybody is, is opening the consoles up and figuring out they're not clean and refurbished. A lot of those videos, I decided to go ahead and open mine. And yes, I did. The sticker was freaking right there. The DK only sticker, void the warranty. I don't care if it boys y'all's warranty. I really don't care. But uh, the main thing is, I mean, yeah, it was actually not too bad. It was solid inside. I had to do a little bit of cleaning, but compared to some of the others I've seen on this video, on the on the others videos, like Jacob R's PS3, man, if I would have. <laughs> yeah, so it's hard to kind of gauge on what his looked like because pretty much anything on earth would have looked better than the PS3 I got. So it sounded like his was a, like a little bit dirty, which it shouldn't have been if it was opened up and cleaned and refurbished because he still had to do some cleaning. So it sounds like his was better than mine. But in Jacob R's condition of that his three that he had, I would have lost my mind. So, um, yeah. That PS3, man, I, <laughs> we'll just keep going. I have no words. One thing I don't like no more, these old freaking throw away. In, in case you can't tell, that's actually a third party controller. They sell these controllers that look eerily similar to a, a real N64 controller, but it's it's not real. It's it's a knockoff. It doesn't say Nintendo right there. And it, uh, it doesn't feel legit. The, I think the sticks probably last longer, but they don't feel good. Like they don't feel authentic. The buttons don't feel the best, and um, yeah, I mean, you saw in the first shot, he did get a third-party controller, so. Play controllers, and it stick cuts, it didn't even work. <laughs> and he literally throws it across the room. <laughs> Piece of junk it is now, don't worry about that. I went on there, and I actually uh, I actually got me an, an actual. He went and bought a, an N64 controller from eBay afterwards. Um, I think there was something else in here he said that was, that was interesting. Let me see if I can find it. So, he, yeah, he, he brings up a great point. First of all, he says that, 
Uh, he's actually had some other people he's talked to that apparently had the same issue where they opened it up, not refurbished, not cleaned. Either that or it doesn't work, one of the two. And you can kind of see in his in his face and his eyes, he's, he's so disappointed that, that this company is making this, this great content on YouTube, interesting, nostalgic content, and then selling these consoles that are refurbished, but they're they're not actually refurbished and clean. And it's just, a, it boils my blood. I think it does for a lot of people that are finding this out and finding out they bought consoles and opening them up and being like, oh, wow, this actually wasn't refurbished. Uh, it might die in a year. Because that's the problem. Like, a lot of these consoles, like, maybe, let's say you buy, a, you know, a 360 like I have. You buy a 360, it works fine for a year and a half. But after a year and a half, it gets Red Ring of Death. And you open it up, lo and behold, uh, thermal paste was not replaced. There's still some there's some dust caked around the, the C CPU and GPU, and uh, that's a console that would have lasted for many many more years if they had actually refurbished it and replaced the thermal paste, which is critical on 360s, PS3s, um, pretty much any console that has thermal paste. And yeah, let's just move on to the next one because there's actually there's another one like this um, where <laughs> they uh, the customer's not actually happy, but they posted this good review. So let me just let me play it for you. Customer XD is about to open up his N64 and Xbox. I hope he loves it. Let's see what he thinks. Huge DK Oldies order. And this is my first order with them. The inside is very clean. Very clean. Um, I got a good console. And from what I... So my first question is, where did this N64 come from? Because I've never actually seen an N64 like this. It's, uh... It looks like blue on top and orange on the bottom. Maybe that's a legit thing. I've never seen it. Maybe they just piece something together. I don't, I don't know. It definitely looks good. From what I can see all around it and looking through all the, the the holes and where the fans are and everything i don't see anything so that looks incredible i am very impressed with this and i'm very happy with this uh the discs we have a limited collector's edition disc so that disc is pretty much brand new not even a single scratch on it let's check the back and again this disc looks amazing so first thing i'll say is that uh their games are not the issue i don't know anybody that's had an issue with their games i haven't had an issue with their games their games are fine games are easy to refurbish or most games don't even take any kind of refurbishing because they if they've been in a good home and they weren't, weren't scratched up then they're fine um they just throw them in the resurfacing machine and clean them up and good to go no issue with the games uh, might be overpriced but they at least work and they're you know good to go uh but you saw him looking at the consoles and he was clearly inspecting the outside trying to look for dust and stuff and he knew the history um but let me just keep playing it for you awesome that is amazing. I am extremely, extremely impressed. I had high expectations and uh, they've met me on every single one of them. All right, so this in this video, he basically, he, he unboxed it clearly, looked at the outside and uh, from, from the outside, everything looked good. And DK Audis went ahead and reposted his video. Now let's take a look at his video. So this is the original video he actually posted on his channel. Basically DK Audis, I've actually watched this whole thing, but DK Audis, uh, reduced it down and, and you know put it in short form but he tests them out and stuff and whatever but uh if you scroll down <laughs> in in his video he makes a comment he says so i did take apart my n64 and i'm disappointed to say it was not refurbished in my opinion i'll be releasing a video showing the console and discussing this issue i had high expectations so nobody is more disappointed than me to be wrong so <laughs> this is two weeks ago so so dk oldies took this good review and then reposted on their channel without even looking at the original video and just scrolling down a little bit and seeing that he's not actually happy with this console. So they've now posted at least two. There might be more. I haven't delved into all their all their videos, but they've posted at least two good reviews that were not actually good because the customer wasn't happy. And like at this point, you guys know that your all eyes are on you. You guys are making these mistakes left and right. You're not refurbishing consoles. You're trying to cover it up. And you know all eyes are on you and you're still making these mistakes. Like, I don't know, man, but it, it's just weird stuff going on. And I will tell you guys that I have two videos coming out in the next couple of days. I have a, um, let's just say, I have an interview with a former employee. Comes out tomorrow. I'm gonna do some highlights tomorrow. Saturday, I have the full interview coming out and uh, that'll answer a lot, a, lot of your, a lot of your questions. And um, it's a very interesting conversation and I think you guys will like it. But like, I, I was not expecting to make another DK Oldies news video like this today but I just saw two in a row where they're posting these good reviews that are not actually good. And I just, I, I can't believe they're still shooting themselves in the foot. Like all you got to do is call your consoles used uh, or come out and, and make an apology and, and say you're going to change things going forward, but they're just sweeping under the rug, kind of trying to maybe change things up and cover it up with good reviews. Um, it's just a huge cover up job. And when will it end? Like <laughs> at some point it's got to end, but Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoy it, and I'll, I'll see you next time. 
So in this video, I'll be showing you some highlights from an interview that I had with a former DK Oides employee, and we'll talk about it. First of all, this is a former DK Oides employee. He's no longer associated with them. So this interview should be taken as an experience from a former employee, um, not official word from DK Oides. And second, I have verified that he did indeed work for DK Oides. And third, this former employee wants to remain anonymous, so his face won't be shown, and I've used a voice filter. And last but not least, in order to help him remain anonymous, I won't be sharing his exact dates of employment, but just to give you a rough ballpark of when he worked there, he worked there at some point in the last few years or so and I'll, I'll just give that as a you know a rough ballpark now let's go ahead and get into the interview and first I want to show you a clip from the interview of him talking about uh, DK Audis and their third-party cords and their third-party controllers so I remember what we would tell people because especially like over the phone stuff you telling people that if they at least if they were a collector that was really concerned about that and they called in and were like hey or even emailed and said hey I want to I want to make sure this has original cords or even um, in like a replacement because that would happen somebody would get like those uh, third party cables and then they would get you know upset because they're like well this isn't working with third party cables. We'd say, hey, we'll replace you, you know, free of charge, replace the with the original cables. And that I think that's another thing, too, is it's all based on what we have. Usually we try to make sure people would put in like the little notes section, uh, which I know a lot of people now use for like the TikTok stuff. We would always yeah. be like, you know, right in there so that somebody knows because it is all different departments. There isn't a lot of like communication on that. And now that last word there is key, communication. Uh, you know, I've seen tons of communication issues with DK Audis recently. I've talked about this in previous videos with the warranty sticker, you know, one person will send an email that says the warranty is void from the sticker being removed. Somebody else will say it's not. And then just other comments on Twitter, you know, don't match up or, or YouTube don't match up with each other. And uh, it just seems like the communication is not there. Now let's hear a little bit more from him about communication, third party cords and third party controllers. Unless I walk up to a person and say, hey, this this order needs to have original cables, you know, it, that might not happen. So usually okay. using that notes filter would help because there is a supervisor in that shipping department that has to kind of look at the order to make sure everything was done correctly before it even gets shipped out. I think that's a big thing. Uh, I know the controller thing is kind of, again, based on if we have it available, but I think the um, the genuine idea of that is that they want you to pay more for that original controller because they know that you want an original controller. Whereas the cables, I don't want to say the cables are cheap, but I think that yeah. like the like AV cables and stuff, AC cables are pretty pretty common enough that they're kind of a cheap item so it's yeah, not yeah. not the end of the world controllers they do understand that there is kind of like a, a commodity to that now talking about third-party cords personally i don't care too much about third-party cords unless it's a bad power supply like a 360 third-party power supply is not good um, honestly, I don't think they should be selling those if they don't have to. Now, third-party controllers are where I have the biggest issue. I've talked about it before, but like on the 360 and PSP listings I've purchased from, they don't give you the option to upgrade it to an OEM controller, and they don't make it clear in the listing if you're getting an OEM controller or not, so it's kind of left up to chance. Like the, the listing will show an OEM controller, but the, the description will say compatible controller, so they kind of leave it up in the air uh, as to if you're getting a third-party controller or, or an OEM controller. And in my experience, most of the time you get a third-party controller, so just a little bit suspect there. Uh, now let's hear a little, a little bit more about third-party controllers. That is touching back on what I said about the um, just kind of replacing the stuff. I will tell you 100%. I hate the 360 and like PS2 or PS3 um, third-party controllers. I know that they're just not good controllers, so yeah. I would go out of my way to go through. I, I, you, I, you may have seen in like their videos, they have those like walls of just like boxes full of the controllers and stuff. Yeah. I would go out of my way to grab like you know, replace, try to put that, that third party thing back and grab an original because I, I just knew that it's not, cause I don't think they had a, an option for like 360 for a while, but I don't yeah. know if they've changed that in, in recent time. So yeah, I think that was where I would replace the controller. So yeah, third party controller situation is just a little bit, a little bit weird. Um, now let's go ahead and get into the whole refurbishing situation, which is what, that's what we're all here for. That's, that's the biggest issue we've seen, you know, they're claiming consoles are clean and refurbished, but they're we're clearly opening them up and seeing that they're, most of them are not clean and refurbished. Uh, so let's see what he has to say about refurbishing. And this first part is more along the lines of repairing and refurbishing. Um, and then we'll get uh, even deeper into the cleaning and refurbishing. This is an interesting one, I will say. <laughs> because I, I know where people have contacted and been like, hey, this is, this is something that I got. It's not working. I think the biggest example that I can remember is like the 72 pin connectors for the NES. Uh, I know that they replaced them at DK Oldies. And I know that's a, that's a thing that, that, um, you know, you got to communicate. So I think that it's very much 
something where nobody's communicating to a certain department maybe or or just i don't want to say that they don't care because i i know that there are people there that do care about this stuff and care about what's going out because they know stuff like this where you know people are making videos on it it's not like i don't think it's a thing where they're like well if, if this is getting you know press is press i don't think that's the the situation i think the refurbishment process as much as i i don't want to say i've seen like anything of it but i don't want to say i've seen everything i know that the cleaning process is a big thing but i know that when we would do this it would always be kind of trying to get it to the repairs department but it would have to be when somebody that was able to repair said system was there and not all the time is somebody there to repair it so then you're waiting for that person you're waiting for this you're waiting for communication back so i think again coming back to it it's just communication issues so i think if they can figure out a way to like get those communication issues fixed i think probably a lot more refurbishing stuff will get done better maybe but again that's all just kind of where it comes yeah. back to is communication so we're hearing that word a whole lot today communication that just seems to be the biggest issue there's uh there's so many departments and the communication between the departments is not there people are not communicating if consoles have been refurbished people are not re communicating if they need to refurbish consoles or clean them and it just seems like the communication there's just a big barrier there that, that prevents the communication from happening I don't, I don't know what the issue is but um, we're seeing that it is an issue. And now this next question is when we really get into it. Uh, I ask if consoles are only opened when they need to be repaired, because as we've seen in my videos and other people's videos, it, it seems that consoles are only open to be cleaned out if they have a problem. Like if a, if a Wii has a, a broken disk drive, then they'll open it up, uh, fix it, and then while they're in there, they'll blow it out. But otherwise, they don't open the consoles up, even though they say they do. So let's hear what he has to say. I would say yes, because this is another thing too where where it comes back to that, like the cleaning department is if they don't really see that dust kind of like caked inside of like the vents or anything, they're not going to look at it. When I was there, I, I always would like, if you heard a rattle or anything, you were supposed to obviously open it up and get that out of there. So you should see any like dust or anything that's just wrong there. I don't know if that's changed, if it's just kind of like to keep, you know, keep processes going because of how many orders or, you know, they're getting or stuff like that. But it seems like it's one of those things where I'm like, I remember personally just being like, okay, this, this seems like it needs blown out. And they don't in that cleaning department have like a dust gun or anything like that. So they can't just dust gun it. But the, the repairs department would have the tools to do that kind of stuff. So I, I do think that's another thing of just when I remember being there, if people didn't notice it was an issue, they just kind of went on as long as the outside looked clean. So I, yeah. I will say, I guess, yeah, I, I, as long as there wasn't an issue or as long as there isn't anything that looks noticeable, it, it's going out the door. So there we have it from his experience there. Uh, consoles don't get opened up and cleaned and refurbished unless they have something that needs to be repaired. And that's what we've kind of figured out ourselves from opening them up and doing reviews and unboxings and... Um, it seems to be his experience as well. And it seems as if the cleaning team is just not, they don't have the equipment they need. They're not equipped with what they need to uh, to actually open up these consoles and clean them out. I mean, he said the cleaning team doesn't even have uh, compressed air or, or blow gun or whatever he called it. Um, I use compressed air. I sometimes I use an electric one on mine, but it sounds like the repair team only has that those tools. So they're essentially, if they don't, if the outside looks okay, they just ship it out. That's the biggest issue. They're calling everything clean and refurbished, but how can you do that if consoles are never opened up and cleaned or refurbished, like you're, you're commanding these prices that are two to three times market value. You're saying everything is clean and refurbished. And so that's why people are paying these, these, these values for it, but you're not actually cleaning or refurbishing, which, which would extend the life on these consoles. So big issue there. And now the real question is where, where is this communication breakdown coming, coming from? Like why, why are consoles not being cleaned or refurbished? Why are people not equipped with the tools they need to clean and refurbish? And uh, so in this next question, I kind of asked him, where do these decisions come from, um, you know, related to social media? And we, you know, we see Joey all the time. We know he's a social media manager uh, for everybody out there. He doesn't, it, this company is not owned by Joey. He's just the social media manager. So you would think he runs everything with social media. But from talking to uh, the, the former employee, it seems that Joey is not really in control of what you think he is. Let's let's hear about it. The, I would say that the, the owner is kind of more in control of it, even though Joey is a social media like manager. Any ideas kind of have to go through the owner first before it can even be kind of done, which I, I understand to an extent. But I think when you are a social media manager, you are supposed to make the call of what's what's going to be said or done. 
Yeah. I, I don't think it's I think the owners should kind of pull back on that kind of part and kind of let the social media team do what they need to do. I don't think that I you know, any ideas or, or, or kind of agenda should be pushed through the owner because, you know, oh, this is happening. Now make this video. Because I can definitely see that's why uh the refurbishing video that came out a while back um happened. Because it's just kind of like, oh well this 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 person on YouTube's talking about this. Make yeah. make a video quick, make a video to kind of save face. And that's I, I don't think that's fair because it could easily have just been and I do understand that it should be addressed, but it could easily have been ignored or it could have easily been a hey, we you know, mistakes happen. Let's let's start further improving and then make the video saying we're going to start instead of saying, We've been doing this the whole time. So we touched on a lot right there. Um the main takeaway is the fact that you guys out there that think Joey's making these decisions, uh, it, it appears that it's the owner making these decisions, which which makes sense if you've ever worked for a for a big or small company. Usually the the owner is running the show, um, sometimes more so than than others. But uh, that's what appears to be happening is that uh, you know Joey is a social media manager, but he's kind of just a one of the cog, cogs in the wheel where he has to do what the owner says. And uh, it appears that that refurbishing video probably came out because of the owner said, "Yeah, we need to make a video." combating this and like to me it all adds up um you know a lot of times owners are kind of out of touch with uh, what's actually going boots on the ground with the boots on the ground people so uh when you look at social media and social media people are t I, I don't know exactly what's going on behind the scenes but i would imagine they're saying hey we don't need to put this video out like this is gonna look weird but he's like no we need to put it out now that's just me assuming things but that's from the outside looking in and what i'm hearing from the former employee and what i've seen on on youtube and TikTok. That just seems how it is. The, the owner's kind of out of touch, and he's making these videos trying to cover up, but it's just making things worse. And he's, he's been doing this with the the reviews they post in their, their, on their channel now, the whole refurbishing video, the weird comments. And uh, I don't know if I get back into it in the highlights video, but at one point, we talk about the fact that that comment from a few weeks ago where uh, somebody commented and said, from DK Waddies, and said, uh, others are jealous of our success. Now that uh, after talking to him and kind of thinking about it, that comment is almost... 100% from the owner, I would guess. Again, I don't know for sure, but just the fact that it's been up for this long and hasn't gone, actually, I haven't looked at it in about a week, but it was up for like a full week, never deleted. Um, and from talking from the to the former employee, it seems that like if that if a comment like that came from an employee, it would have been reviewed and deleted and they would have gotten in trouble. So I'm pretty sure that comment came from the owner. So just uh, just weird stuff going on. And it seems like, you know, it seems like the owner is just uh, taking control. Now let's hear a little bit more about uh, what this former employee has to say about the about the owner. I think at this point it's kind of like okay, I can just come in whenever because I'm the owner, which yeah, again understood. But I, I do know that like it was kind of watching over what everybody did in social media to make sure everything was done the way it needed to be done and things like that. I think that's a that was a big component, making sure what people were doing, what people were saying there, and that that can be a big problem especially when you're just trying to, you're doing what you're told, but then you're told do more of this instead, it, you know, flip flopping on ideas. And it just, I think from when I was there, I remember just kind of being lost in, in some of that because it was always like, well, this, this idea doesn't make sense, but then it, it would become something that was a trend or it was something that was really like popular. And then, then we're like, oh, uh, you know, he, he wants us to do this. But I said this, you know, last week, let's do that. <laughs> so it was always kind of one of those things where it is definitely somebody out of touch with what's going on and that, that yeah. causes problems. And then it would always be the, you know, just make this, make that, do this instead. And I'm like, mm. okay. But I, I do think yeah. that's a, um, that is a component to the, the comments and stuff too, is I, I know recently there was one about the, somebody being, you know, jealous of our success kind of thing. And I was yeah. like, that, that, that doesn't sound like anybody <laughs> in social media because they would easily get in trouble for doing something like that. Yeah. So we heard it right there. Uh, that, that, that was what I was talking about. So we talked about, um, that whole jealous comment and how, if somebody in the social media team said that they'd probably get in trouble immediately. Um, and so it makes sense to me that the owner probably made that comment and that would kind of it makes sense to me why he would say something like that because uh to me personally like if you're an employee like you care about the company's success somewhat but like it's the company doing well for the most part is not lining your pocket it's it's lining the owner's pocket so he's the one that cares most about it, the success so he's the only one that would want to comment something like that and it just seems like from talking to him and what you just heard uh seems like he's a bit out of touch with what's going with what's going on in the actual social media team and uh you know they're working on social media every day. Uh, they know what the trends are. They know what's going to, has a good chance of going viral and stuff like that. But it seems like 
from the top down, the higher powers are coming down and, and giving orders on what they think is viral. And maybe that works sometimes, but like he's saying here, it seems like y you would want to give Joey and whoever else more control over what the social media team does. And maybe they'd be a little bit more in touch with what's going on with uh, with social media right now. Cause it just seems like, seems like they're out of touch with uh, how people actually feel right now. Now let's hear a little bit more from the former employee about, you know, the social media team and leaving comments. I do remember that being a thing. So if a comment didn't meet a standard it was talked about it was kind of like well, why why did we make this comment or uh, who made this comment and and then eventually deleted because it was something that didn't meet the views or standards yeah so if, if that comment hasn't gotten deleted yet then definitely that makes a lot more sense <laughs> now so in that brief segment again we're talking about how the fact that if a social media person was to make a comment like that it probably would have been deleted pretty quickly and they would have been talked to but uh, considering the fact that it's still up, it was probably the owner or one of the you know higher ups in the company. So in this next part, we talk about Joey and how uh, me personally, I think he has uh, holds all the cards in the company right now. Like you know, he's the face of the company. He it, it, from the outside in looks like he's running the show. I mean, that's why so many people think that he actually owns the company because he's the face. He's the one you see in all the videos. He's the one you've seen for years. Um, he's the one that says everything on social media. So uh, from the outside looking in, it looks to me like Joey holds all the cards. So if he you know, if he's tired of getting people um, all the comments on the videos, you would think he could go and ask for a raise and, and pretty easily get it. Or he could, you know, want to go to a different comp company and he'd get a pretty big pay, pay bump to stay. Because I feel like if, if Joey's gone, they lose a huge chunk of their audience. So let's hear some more about what the former employee has to say about that. And uh, kind of this started out with me saying, what if Joey leaves? I wouldn't blame him, honestly, at this point, just because of how many people are just kind of, I, I will say, just kind of ignore that the owner is 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 a big part of the problems that people are, are addressing yeah. I, I think it's always uh unfair when i see comments that are just like well joey's packing my order joey's doing this to my order and it's like i 100 joey isn't packing every order <laughs> it is it is there is a team of people there so i i think that's just very unfair that that gets kind of lumped onto him yeah. considering people do know who the owner is he's been in videos i think I, I don't know if you've talked about it before i know some people have there's a video on their channel of them destroying like a, a fake game boy yeah, um i just had that the recently. iq battery yeah, yeah and that 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 that's the owner destroying it so it's like <laughs> that's a big uh I, I don't know why that hasn't just been like deleted at this point because yeah. i know people have yeah. come back to it and been like that's 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 a real japanese game boy yeah, so that last segment he's talking about an, an IQ Game Boy that the owner destroyed on camera, I don't know, it was years ago. Uh, surprisingly, the video hasn't been deleted, at least last time I looked, but he, he thought it was a fake Game Boy and destroyed it on camera on their channel. For all you guys out there, I guess what you should learn from this is the fact that uh, you, you may think Joey's making these decisions, but it appears that Joey is just... Uh, He's doing what he's, what he's told. You know, he's the face of the company. Seems like a nice guy to me, but he's just doing doing what he's told. And uh, we'll leave it at that. And last but not least, let's go back to the refurbished topic and, and kind of just talk a little bit more about what the what the term refurbished means and if they should if they should change that up. I definitely think that using the word refurbished can could kind of be tweaked maybe instead yeah. of saying refurbished like things are cleaned things are well taken care of but it's not like a full-on refurbishment unless something is wrong which i i do yeah. agree that with what they've done in videos but you, where they say that you know if it's something wrong we we check on it yeah so what he's saying here is that it, it seems like they should change their terms like instead of saying refurbished maybe say it's just cleaned or, or well taken care of they need to do some other term like Honestly, the, the, the industry standard is just say used. So that's a, that's a big conversation now. Is it, do they keep, I guess there's, there's two ways they can go. They can call it refurbished and actually start refurbishing consoles or they can change the terms to used or something else and um, just keep doing what they're doing. Because honestly, like like what they're doing right now is what I do, but I sell used consoles on eBay. I, like I don't sell them that much anymore. But but when I was doing that a lot, like I, I would clean out the outside of the console to my best, best of my ability. I would blow out the insides. I would only open it up if it was like really dirty and you could tell it was really dirty, which is fine if you're selling a used console and on like ebay and people know that you're getting a used console and you, you need to open it up yourself and change thermal paste and that sort of thing but when you're selling a fully clean and refurbished like they, they literally say in their in their comments that they open up and clean the consoles you, you can't say that if you're only doing that for consoles that need, need to be repaired so thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed this interview and let me know down below what you think and uh yeah So due to popular demand, I am back with another DK Oldies update video, so let's talk about it. So there's a few things I want to talk about in this video. First of all, we're going to talk about some Facebook comments uh, regarding DK Oldies. They're just, there's, there's some bad ones. We're going to talk about it. Uh, second of all, I want to talk about some comments that were on 
a video that was re released about a week ago by somebody that's supposedly a former employee of DK Oldies, and we're going to watch his video and kind of react to it, um, but we'll get into that later. First of all, I want to start with Facebook. So uh, I've mentioned it in one other one other video, I think, where I, I have a Facebook page very similar to my YouTube channel where I, uh, I reformat the content from YouTube, put it on Facebook um, to fit the Facebook format. Now, the Facebook audience is very different than YouTube, as you guys probably know. The comment sections there are just on every video I ever see on Facebook. It's just, they're just, they're not pleasant to read. And guys, if you have a Facebook profile, go help me out. Hit that link down below. Go to Facebook and take a look at these videos and, and help these people, help explain the situation to them. These people, they don't get it. There's a lot of just comments on there that I, I, I can't believe people are saying this, but let's just go through them. This, these are uh, just a handful. There's, there's so many bad ones there, but this is just a handful of them. Uh, so first of all, this person says, this is a joke. Do you literally have nothing else to do in, li in live, in live, but put people down. That's the funniest thing about Facebook. Like the, the number of comments that are just don't make sense or bad grammar. It's just like, it's amazing. And people are doing this from their own profiles. Like people, uh, these are public profiles that people can see your photo and stuff and they're, they're commenting these and it's just, it's funny stuff. And, and, and I think I've had, I've probably made like four or five DK Woody's videos live on Facebook and, um, people, uh, yeah, this one, this one is funny. It says, this boy lives in his mom's basement making these videos, spending his allowance on DK Oldie's stuff, then getting mad when they aren't new. This guy must be in love with Joey. Back in the old days, you keep bashing someone, then coming to find out they actually are in love with them. So that last sentence doesn't make much sense, but this guy, he thinks I live in my, mom, in my mom's basement, which maybe I do. I don't, but, uh, <laughs> and I'm spending, spending my allowance on, on DK Oldie's stuff just to getting mad when they aren't new. Like, I don't... This is an argument I've seen from, from people that I, I don't understand. People are saying, well, it's not supposed to be brand new, so you should expect that there to be dust accumulated and, and no new thermal paste and stuff like that. And it's, these people aren't getting the point. They're not getting the point. DK Woodies is selling selling consoles that are called refurbished and cleaned and open, and they're, they're reinforcing and they're making videos saying, we do indeed open up all the consoles, we clean them out, and they're not. So, yeah, that's, that's about all there is to it, but... uh. Let's go on to the next Facebook comment. All right, so this guy says, bro, grow up and stop being so childish. I don't know, maybe stop ordering from them. This is like the fifth video I've seen from you just bullying DK oldies because you don't want to read the description. If it says refurbished, don't expect a new console. So there's a lot to unpack here. Um, <laughs> first of all, stop ordering from them. This guy doesn't understand the concept. It, it, you guys watching my video, most of you understand that I am buying, I buy consoles, weird consoles, interesting consoles to make videos on because it makes for interesting content. That's the whole point of my channel. Uh, if you go back and watch my videos for the last couple of years, I've bought, purchased so many different consoles from eBay, GameStop, just all over the place, Wish, AliExpress, uh, because they're interesting. They send me interesting stuff. So I bought one from DK Oldies back in November, December and realized it was weird. They called it refurbished, but it wasn't refurbished. So I just kept buying more. People wanted to see more. So I kept buying more. This guy just, he doesn't understand that. And now at this point, we're making videos to try to spread the word that they're not actually doing what they say. And then the funny part is he says, I'm bullying DK Oldies. Yeah, I'm not bullying them, but okay. Uh, and then <laughs> this part says, if you don't want to read the description, like I pretty clearly explained in my videos like I, I, I break down the description and say why it's, why the descriptions are so suspicious. Like they say refurbished, they say they're going to include a compatible controller. They kind of use that as a scapegoat of, to not include an, an original controller. And they don't give you an option to upgrade on some listings, which is my experience. If it says refurbished, don't expect a new console. It's like none of us are expecting new consoles, but we're expecting consoles that are cleaned and refurbished. Like it's, it's pretty basic. Nobody's expecting a new console, but refurbished if you look up the definition it literally says um let me just look it up and show it to you guys all right so here in the cambridge.org dictionary online it says refurbished means made to look new again by work such as painting repairing and cleaning I, I mean that perfectly spells it out for you but i should expect a console that looks new that would that's the definition of refurbished and this guy is saying don't expect a new console i just i can't with this kind of stuff next up wow 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 you big baby <laughs> that one's just funny there there's thousands of comments on Facebook, my, my Facebook videos with stuff like this. So, so again, if you have a Facebook profile, please click that link down below, go to my page and look at these comment sections and, um, just, uh, tell people what they're missing. Cause they, they just don't get it. But next up. So there was a video posted recently, uh, where this guy, I'll go to the page here. He says, I used to work for DK Oldies. It's a scam. That's his title. It's by Jigsaw. Uh, this guy actually messaged me on Instagram. I replied back, but I, he never replied back to me after that. I don't want to do any more DK Woody's interviews, so I'm not planning to do an interview with him or anything. Um, I haven't like verified that he 100% works there. Now, looking at his videos and looking at his comments, it does appear that he did indeed 
work at DK Oilers at some point. He's gotten very specific uh, uh, stories and, and names that he tells, but I haven't actually watched this whole video, but we'll we'll watch it. And um, I watched about a minute of it. Now, I actually found this video back, uh, I, found, I guess I found it on the day it came out because I saw it on Sunday, last Sunday, which was, I guess that was the 25th, wasn't it? Something like that. And uh, it had 115 views. And it gets really interesting there because there was this one comment from another guy that said he does actually work at DK What Is Right Now, which is the comment I'm going to show you. Um, I replied to it and that comment has since been deleted. Like it was deleted pretty quickly before this video even had more than like two or 300 views. Uh, but I've had dozens of people sending me this video this week. So uh, I got so many people want me to look at this and react to it. Um, so let's start with the, the comments that I saw on this video and I replied to. And it's 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 funny. So this guy, um, I've actually seen this guy commenting on other DK Woody's videos. And uh, I've seen him do the same thing where he says something insightful about DK Oides and then later did later deletes it because I'm assuming he's revealing too much info. Um, now again, I don't know if this guy actually works for, for DK Oides. I'm just taking his word for it on YouTube. It from what he's saying, it sounds like he he does work for them. But again, take it with a grain of salt. I don't know if this guy works for him or used to or whatnot. All right. So again, this first comment is from not from the guy that made the video, but somebody that supposedly works at DK Oides right now. He says, "No idea how long you worked at DK, but I'm tired, sick of seeing stuff like this." Maybe years ago they had a problem, but it's as of recent, they have changed a lot and literally do refurbish all their consoles. I currently work there and the place is in such a better position than it was when I started eight months ago. The people who won't leave us alone, Jacob and Rich, aren't hurting business at all recently. Now, the guy who made the video responds back and says, I worked there three years ago. If you guys are really refurbishing your consoles, then those videos from Jacob, Rich, and so many other smaller people on YouTube would have never happened. You guys seem to do the same stuff the way you did it three years ago, but with more employees. Tell Dustin to send me that picture of all of us i want my guitar back <laughs> it's random all right next comment is from the guy who says in the past few months we listened to all those people's these people's problems and have done what they wanted we have a literal room for blowing out consoles every single system gets blown out that second ps3 that jacob was the guy was blown out but it's near impossible to take down to the bear and get every piece of dust out this comment this is the one i replied to this this one is i just like can't believe this the, these people they pe these people think that now, since they're blowing consoles out, now they're refurbishing them. So let's get this straight. Before, let's say December or January, they were not even blowing out the consoles with compressed air. Guys, I, I, I've i sold, I don't sell too much on, on eBay and my website now, but I sold a ton of, last year I sold a ton of consoles on eBay and my website, and I, call, I caught them all used. Nothing was refurbished. They were all used. Uh, in most cases, they weren't opened up, but that's fine for used consoles. Used consoles are... Um, typically clean on the outside and blown out and that's it um, you got to refurbish them yourself and they sell for much much lower than these refurbished consoles but let's get this straight I used to blow out I still do when I when I clean consoles I clean out clean the outside of the console I blow out the inside of the console with compressed air I don't open it up but I blow it through the vents and uh, this guy is saying that before the last couple of months they were not even doing that for refurbished consoles refurbished consoles were not even blown out what you <laughs> And he's saying that now, since they're at, there's like, we have a room now, an entire room, because of you guys, we have a whole room to blow these consoles out, and they're now refurbished. It's it's like, come on, man, you you guys just don't get it. They think they're doing a, a huge service to us. They're like, okay, we're going to start blowing out these consoles, we're going to start refurbishing them, but you're still not there yet. Like, you're still not opening them up, and this guy's saying the second PS3 was blown out, near impossible to take down. No, it's not. No, it's not. It takes me 45 minutes to take the PS3 apart put new thermal paste, clean it out, put it back together. And I can tell you I'm, I'm not fast at it. Like if you got it down, you got a, an actual good repair, I'll call them a repair man, technician, whatever, uh, doing that work in your shop. It shouldn't take more than half an hour for one console. Let's say he's getting paid 20 bucks an hour, which is probably more than he's getting paid. That's $10 of labor to fix that PS3, to refurbish it. You're telling me you guys can't afford $10 more of labor to refurbish a $400 PS3. I mean, I just don't get it. And, and the PS3 is honestly one of the harder one to take, harder ones to take apart. The other ones are even easier. So like other consoles, you can refurbish in 20 minutes, 15 minutes, especially if you set up an assembly line and you get it efficient. Like it, you're not losing that much money to labor to actually refurbish consoles. I don't know how many returns these guys get, but I can guarantee your returns are going to go down if you're actually refurbishing consoles. But they're getting away with not opening the consoles up, so they keep doing it. And uh, that's what we're trying to stop. We're trying to get them to actually refurbish consoles or get people to realize they're not buying refurbished consoles. You can get the same thing on eBay for half the price and it's, it's clean just as well. Now this guy says, I'm glad you guys are doing what you claim to do for years. Hundreds of systems. 
blah, blah, blah. By the way, there's no way those PS3s are blown out with compressed air. Yeah, they, I mean, they weren't. The first PS2 he received, I haven't even gotten a PS2. That's what made us change up our system. We get literal compressed air machine with hoses and all. So again, he's, he's saying that like, because of us, I guess he made some impact. At least they're blowing out consoles, but still it's not refurbished. Like he's making it seem like a big deal. He's like, because all these YouTubers were, we're actually refurbishing our consoles now, like we should have been, but they're, they're still not though. They're still not opening them up. Oh man. I'm just not even gonna read the rest of this comment thread, but I'll, I'll read you the comment I made where I replied to this guy. I said, I've gone down the rabbit hole and came across this comment. And I really did go down the rabbit hole on, on Sunday because this, like I said, this video, I, I had to go really far to find this video. It, it had like 115, 120 views when I found it. And uh, so it was truly down the rabbit hole. And uh, I said, I've gone down the rabbit hole and, and come across this comment. This is hilarious. DK Oldies has been commenting on videos saying that every console is open and cleaned, but here you are saying that they are still only blowing them out, which apparently wasn't, hasn't even been done in the past. How DK Oldies is calling these consoles refurbished is beyond me. Blowing a console out with refer compressed air does not equal refurbished. And I stand by that statement. Blowing a console out with, with compressed air is does not mean refurbished. It's not the same thing, but you guys get that. Let's go ahead and watch this video and see what he has, has to say. Cause I've only watched like so a minute of this. So problem with DK Oldies lately is the fact that they claim to refurbish all of their systems. And yet all of these YouTubers like Jacob R and review tech USA and others are opening their systems after they get them and they're dirty, they're filthy inside. Um, they're not refurbished. And I figured that since I worked there, um, I would be of great help in this situation. I have inside knowledge that, you know, nobody else seems to have. Except there was, uh, apparently, somebody that used to work there was recently interviewed. Yes, he's referring, so everything he says there we, we do know, and then he says, he's referring to the interview I did with a former employee. So this, this guy was not the former employee I interviewed, it was another guy. But I figured that since I worked there in the shipping department specifically, I had some insight that I could give people. But one time I bought something from them and uh, when I bought it, I realized how close they were. I saw they were located in Morgantown and I'm impatient. So I figured why wait for the mail to bring it when I can just drive an hour away and pick it up the same day. I got nothing better to do. So I drove up there, I picked up my system. I remember talking to Joey about how I was working, I was working at Burger King at the time and they weren't giving me very good hours. And um, you know, I was saying about how I, I love the store and I'm really like, I'm an avid retro gamer and this story seems to start where most of the comments I see on DK Oldies videos start where like you guys have the best job in the world like I really want to work for you guys and and I can't blame them from because from the outside looking in you look you see all these uh cool looking consoles games and, and uh accessories they have and it's it seems like a cool place to work but the let's all this going. stuff and so and Drew actually gave me a free Doom poster that day uh, I got to meet him when he walked into the building and he ended up giving me a Doom poster for free that was just right off of someone, one of the shipper's desks, actually. <laughs> so I thought it was really hyped. I thought it was really cool. Um, and anyway, so a couple days after that, I actually got a phone call from Scott, the co-owner, and he asked me if I wanted a job. Uh, he said he overheard what I was saying to Joey, and he thought that I would be a good fit because I love retro games, so he offered me a job there. And I said, hell yeah. Like, even though it was an hour away, I was really excited. This seemed like the perfect job for me. So it seems like he got the job without even interviewing him. Maybe I'll get into that. We'll so I, I got a job there as, um, as a ship in the shipping department. And I, so I would clean games and systems, and then I would ship them out. And eventually, um, toward the time that I left, I kind of moved up a little bit to training people and checking system packages before they are like closed up and go out to make sure like everything is in there and it's cleaned the way that it's supposed to be. The, we were told specifically not to clean the inside of the systems we were told that if we get a system uh in our order we're supposed to like go get one off the floor and uh off the shipping floor and you have to shake it and if there's a rattle inside you're you have to open it you could put it back and get a different one but at some point somebody has to open that system and get the rattle out so this statement here actually matches very closely with what uh the former employee i interviewed said he said that they only open up consoles if they're if they have a rattle inside and he's saying the same thing he was specifically specifically instructed not to open up consoles unless there's a rattle and from the outside looking in it looks like it's not it's not an employee problem it's a upper management problem telling them we're going to sell these refurbished consoles without refurbishing them but we were told specifically not to clean it when we did that not to clean the inside you just have to get that piece out and close it back up <laughs> oh i didn't i, I should have waited for that part so he says even when you open the console up they're instructed not to clean it out because that would take more time don't even blow it out don't clean it just open it up, get the rattle out, close it back up. Now, to be fair, this is a few years ago, supposedly, so maybe they changed policies, but... Um, and I'm pretty sure that they said that um, we're not supposed to clean it because it would 
take up too much time. Don't quote me on that. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's what my shipping manager, Rob, told me. I did that for a little while. I did it the way that I, I was told to do it. But I just didn't feel comfortable doing that. I knew that it was a lie because they were telling people that these consoles were refurbished. And I could tell that they're not because I'm not opening it. I'm not cleaning the inside of them. And I actually ended up finding out that Dustin doesn't actually open all of the systems anyway. Now, they have other people... So, uh, as far as I'm aware, Dustin is like the, the repair guy. From what I've seen in their videos, they have a guy that repairs stuff, and I think his name is Dustin, so I think that's who that is. Working there now, too. Like, Dustin still works there, but there are a couple of other guys that work um, back in that department with him. And I'm sure, I mean, if, if these guys on YouTube are getting these consoles and they're dirty inside, then they have to be doing things exactly the same way as they did it when when I worked there. So he would not open um, every system that we, that came in. Like a lot of the time we would just test the system to see if it worked, uh, you know, like testing it with a game and stuff. And that was something that would be like really quick. Like, uh, you know, putting in Super Mario Brothers into uh, an NES and seeing if the image and the audio comes on. And that would be enough to test the system. The system totally works. They would not open it. They wouldn't open it to see if there was maybe something that would cause a problem later. If there was, like, um, some damage that wasn't affecting it right now, but was going to affect it soon. Nothing like that. And then, you know, we would get it as shippers, and we'd clean the outside of it, and we were told to clean... We were told to do it as quickly as we could, but pay as much attention to detail as possible. And so we were told to clean, like, specifically the areas that people would see every single time they use the system. So <laughs> so it, it's funny when you get instructions like that that are kind of contradictory. Like, be very, be as detailed as possible, but don't take much time. Those things don't really go hand in hand. And then this next part, I'll, I'll keep playing it. We'll comment on it. Controller ports, uh, cartridge slots, stuff like that. Yeah, so he's saying, after that, he said that the managers told them to only pay attention to the parts that are uh, that are most seen by the customer. So like, yeah, like he said, controller ports and stuff. So they're like, basically clean the parts that the customer sees to deceive them in the fact that they think they're getting a refurbished console, but they're not. And then they'll slap the warranty sticker on so they don't even open it up. And that, these guys know what they're doing. Like this was this was all purposeful. This is clearly, everything that's coming out is pretty clear. This is purposeful that they're, they're doing all these things. It's not like it was a mistake for years and years. Like they, they know what they're doing. They know how to tell the customer that they're getting a refurbished console and then not actually give them a refurbished console, but let's keep going. But yeah, we never, we were, we weren't supposed to open it. That right there proves, I think that it's a scam. I was, you know, nothing happened there that Drew didn't know about. So yeah, Drew knows what he's doing. He knows that these things are not actually refurbished. They didn't anticipate anybody would open these things because that's the whole point of the void warranty sticker. And I know apparently a couple days ago, they changed the, what it says on the website about that sticker, I guess. Now it says that it's a proof of purchase sticker or something. Yeah, so they've been calling this a warranty sticker for like however long. I'm assuming however long they've been open. They've been slapping the warranty sticker on. There's there's like, if it was always a proof of purchase sticker, why would they slap it on the one screen you need to take out to open the console? Like on a PS3, they put it over the where the other warranty sticker was. 360, they put it on a spot where you can't open the console without uh, without the con the sticker getting pulled off. They know what they're doing. Like They, they know it's a, a warranty sticker to def deter you from opening the console up. Um, but yeah, like you said, they they now changed their policy that uh, it's now not a warranty sticker. It's now a proof of purchase sticker, which is... Yeah. I don't know if they're trying to cover something up or if they're changing that because people have been pointing out that it's illegal to do that. But um, when I worked there, it was we all called them void warranty stickers. We were supposed to put it over a screw hole in the console so that you, if you wanted to open it, you had to take it off. Exactly. Exactly. That's 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 like the epitome of a warranty sticker. It's not a proof of purchase. It's a warranty sticker. They did that to deter people from opening up their systems and finding out that we had never cleaned the inside of them. You know, I tried to clean the inside of systems. After a little while, like I said, I started doing it my own way. So yeah, I guess there's a few of you out there that got nice systems because this guy cleaned them up. And again, like opening an N64, cleaning the inside and outside, it's like an extra 10 minutes of work. Like there's like, what is it, four screws, I think, on the bottom of N64 to take part. It's just like... They're saving labor. They're making more money. It's just a, it's just a line in their pockets. I mean, that's what that's what businesses do. They're trying to make more money, but at some point you have to do what you say you're doing. Like you can't just not do what you say you're doing, what you're selling. From DK Oldies, it, a lot of the time when we'd buy this stuff, it would be from people who hadn't played it in like 20 years, and it had been sitting in their grandmother's basement collecting dust and dog hair. He makes a good good point there. A lot of this stuff, from what I've seen from DK Oldies, and I would imagine most of their clientele, it's people that are digging stuff out of their attic and basement, like he said, and that's those are people that have uh, had that stuff sitting in there for decades, and like it's covered in filth. Like they, Those consoles need it the most. Like They need the refurbishing the most. So just imagine there was no broken piece making a noise inside of your system. Nobody opened it, so that God knows what the f*** is in there. <laughs> Seriously. So yeah, everybody that's been saying that they're not refurbishing their systems, you guys are absolutely correct. Take it from me. 
we were told not to clean the inside of it. Yeah, so I think I think we've seen enough of this video. I think we understand. He is, he's confirming all our suspicions like we've seen from the employee that I interviewed. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Hi guys, Danny the editor here. I needed you guys to see this. I'm definitely getting fired for uploading this video. Jacob doesn't know that I uploaded this version of the video that I secretly edited to expose him, but I just needed you guys to know what's been really happening here at Jacob Bar Studios. It truly is shocking. You have to see it for yourself. I bought a refurbished PS3 and Xbox 360 from DK Oldies for over $500, and in this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at both of them and see if they actually refurbished anything this time. So we'll start with the PS3 first, and then we'll move on to the 360, and this is supposed to be a backwards compatible 80 gig model of the PS3. Uh, we'll see if it is, and hopefully we got an OEM controller this time. You know, last time I bought a PS3 from DK Oldies, they sent me a third-party controller that doesn't actually work on PS2 games. All right, so we got plenty of packaging here, and we've got some more packaging here. And then, oh no, we have a keychain. No way, dude. Kid cast. <laughs> what is this? Crappy? Dude, they, it's actually all bubble wrapped up in here. This is a little bit skeptical. Why does the packaging actually look decent? Let's go ahead and pull this out and see what's in here. All right, so we should have the PS3 here, uh, cords right there. We got a controller here, which is bubbled up nice and tight. Let's go ahead and open this up and see if it's a third party. Oh, crap. Wait, they sent me an OEM controller? That's a little odd. I've never seen them actually send an OEM controller. If I can get it out of here. That's really odd and it's actually in decent condition. Hmm. Cords, let's take a look at these and see if they even send me the right cords here. We've got, okay, USB cable. We got a power cable and a, an HDMI cable. Okay, cool. And then we got the, the uh, console here. Let's go ahead and open this up. All right, so we got the console here and that actually looks not too bad. Okay, that's, and there's no, uh, there's, there's not even a warranty sticker there. There's no warranty sticker and the console looks decent. It is, let's see if it's, yeah, it is a CECH EO1, so it is backwards compatible. It is a little bit sketchy. I've never seen DK Oldies actually send what they're supposed to here. Um, this does not fit my narrative. Let's uh, let's cut this part out. Um, I'm gonna have to redo this and pack it back up. And uh, yeah, we, we'll have to fix this. This is this is not gonna work for this this video. Uh, let's just forget the HDMI cable. We'll just act like they didn't send me that. Oh yeah, that'll do. Let me give it one last final touch here. All right, take two of this PS3 unboxing, but let's frame it as take one. So let's start with the PS3 here. It's supposed to be an 80 gigabyte uh, backwards compatible model. All right, and wow, <laughs> this is their packaging. <laughs> got a power cord. We got a power cord and a uh, USB cable laying on top with a piece of bubble wrap underneath. Yeah, that makes sense. We've got, dude, what is <laughs> ramen noodle soup? They even bubble wrap. Okay, I'm gonna have to look, check their TikTok channel, see if they filmed that. Got a controller here, of course, no tape on it. Um, double Shock 3. Dude, they sent me another Double Shock 3. I mean, really? Like, they didn't learn from my last video that the PS3 backwards compatible, like a PS2 can't, you, you can't play PS2 games on a backwards compatible PS3 with a dual, Double Shock 3. Come on, man. Um, we got a rant. Dude, no, no. What is. I got a half-eaten Slim Jim. Okay, um, and of course the console has basically no bubble wrap. Toss that to the side. We've got our console here, and it, of course, looks like junk. You got fingerprints all over it. You've got uh, scratches all over it. It's supposed to be a, a cosmetically flawed one, but uh, cosmetically flawed doesn't mean you destroy the outside. But, uh, okay, X marks the spot. All right, yes, yeah, so here's the console, and... Oh, crap, I thought there was a DKY sticker on it. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, yes, yeah, so here's the console, and of course, dude, did they use Magic Eraser on this? No way. Come, come on, man. Like, it's got Magic Eraser all over it. Like, they, and they went halfway with the Magic Eraser. They didn't even go full, full GameStop. They went halfway with the Magic Eraser. If I can flip this bad boy around, yeah, we got CECH E01. So it should be an 80 gig model. And of course, like you saw, the bottom looks like junk. It's supposed to be in good condition, but it's not, of course. Oh, here we go. Got that classic DK Oldies warranty sticker. And oh, it's actually clean in there. We'll have to, we'll have to fix that. Yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and plug this console in, see if it works. It probably won't. So I have the console plugged in, and of course, I noticed they forgot to give me an HDMI cable. Um, not a big deal, but hey, you know, it's just always something. Let's go and turn it on. We do have power. Okay, it's turning on. Any free games? Nope, no free games. <laughs> let's go ahead and connect up our Double Shock 3. All right, so we're booting up to the home menu. Uh, let's go ahead and check out a game, see if it works. We're gonna start with a PS3 game. We got Uncharted, Drake's Fortune, a classic. All right, so I've been playing for a little bit. Uh, the game's working fine. The disk drive is a little, sounding a little bit weird, um, and it's blowing out. Blowing out some air, not that hot, so the thermal paste probably hasn't been replaced, is my guess. Um, 
you know, but it is working, so I'll give him credit for that. Yeah, in reality, this the disk drive is fine, and it's, it actually is blowing out hot air, but um, yeah, I don't want to push that narrative, so cut that part out, and we'll hope the thermal paste actually wasn't replaced. All right, so let's try, try out a PS2 game now, and make sure that works. All right, so the PS2 game is loading up and working, but of course, this third-party controller is not working. Uh, if you guys don't know, third-party controllers just don't work on PS2 games on a backwards compatible PS3. Uh, it's just a, it's basically locked out by Sony. Um, so, you know, if they're sending out PS3s with that are backwards compatible, or as they call it, reverse compatible, they should be sending out OEM controllers because this literally will not work on a PS2 game and it's supposed to be compatible. So, um, yeah, and I can't even control anything now. So let's go ahead and restart this, but the PS2 game is working. Um, we'll go ahead and restart the console and we'll try to PS1 game as well. All right, so we're playing the second PS1 game. It's working just fine. Now this controller, you know, it sucks, but it is a controller. It does at least work on PS1 games. Console's working mostly. Um, the fans are ramping up. Disk drive sounds kind of weird, but let's go ahead and, and turn this console off, open it up, and hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully it's not dirty inside, because I'm getting a little bit of a musty smell in here, so, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. So let's go ahead and open this PS3 console up, and first things first, we gotta peel off this classic, uh, warranty sticker. Leaves behind that nice, that nice residue. Then we take this piece off right here. Alright, so let's reveal this first cover here, pull it off. Oh, that looks cleaner than I expected. Um, okay, uh, let's go down to the next layer and see if there's any dust there. So I have all the screws out on this top piece. Let's go ahead and do the big reveal and see what it looks like. Last time I opened one of these up, it did not look good. And, oh, that's like actually clean. Can't find any dust. Okay, this is, this is not going to do. We need to cut this part out. We need to redo this. Um, this could definitely going to be better for the video if I add some dust. How can I do this? Can I add some dust? Cut this part out. Let's, um, let's redo this part. All right, guys, let's do the big reveal. I just took the uh, the outer screw off, and let's take this top plate off and see what... Is this dirt? Dude, uh, DK Woody's is taking this to the next... <laughs> this is to the next level, man. They put dirt and mulch in here. Okay, and I already took these other screws out. Let's go ahead and take this top off and see what's in here. We've got... Dude, what on earth did they do here? Dude, they're doing this on purpose now. Like, they saw my order, and they put this in here. We got, we got dirt. We got pine straw. We got presumably dog hair, which I did not put in here myself. Um, this is totally, I mean, this is like Slim Jim. And like I said, guys, I didn't do this, but let, let me just put myself in a DK Always employee's head. If, if they saw an order come from me and they want to they wanna get the free publicity on, on my YouTube channel, they make the console even dirtier. Oh, they put dirt and pine straw, Slim Jim. Okay, so I, I see where they're going with this. Um, but no wonder it's getting hot in there. No wonder it's putting out so much heat. Uh, if we've got a freaking Slim Jim in here that's half eaten, we've got dirt and... I mean, like, where did this come from? Like, somebody go outside and scoop up some dirt into a plastic bag and then dump it in here? Uh, did somebody grab some pine straw out from next to the dumpster and then put it in here? Did somebody grab some dog hair from their car and then put it in here? I mean, what is going on here? Uh, what is... <laughs> These guys have taken this to the next level. I don't know what, I don't, I don't know what to say. This is ridiculous. All right, guys. Well, it's not looking good, <laughs> um, to, to say the least. But let's keep going. I want to see what the thermal paste looks like. I'm hoping they at least replace the thermal paste for me. Um, probably not, but we'll, we'll we'll see. Let's go ahead and take off some more screws, and we'll get down to the next level. Oh, and we've got a little visitor down here, crawling around. Thank you, DK Oldies. All right, let's do another reveal here. And okay, it's wow. Um, okay, actually clean. All right, this again. This will not do. Let's let's fix this real quick. Uh, can you please cut this out, Mr. Editor. All right, so I got all these screws off now. Let's go ahead and do the big reveal of the bottom, where it's usually like a desert. So, uh, flashback to the last PS3, the desert showed up, up on the screen. But let's go ahead and look at this one. And we get. <laughs> I guess they warned me. They gave me a packet of ramen noodles in the box, and they smashed up some in here. It's basically like a desert, but a desert of ramen noodles. I mean, come on, guys. Somebody is out to get me. Who who is doing this? Last but not least, let's check out this thermal paste. I mean. What are the chances they, they replace the thermal paste? All right, so let's do the big reveal on the thermal paste here. And three, two, one. Here we go. And, oh, wait a second. Did they actually replace the thermal paste? There's no way. There's no way they actually refurbished this. Um, all right, what do I do here? Okay, let's let's cut this part out. I got to redo this. Um, yeah, cut this out, please. All right, so I got everything else off. Let's go ahead and do the big reveal of the thermal paste. Three, two, one. Let's pull it off. And... 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, it looks like they literally came in here and wiped off the thermal paste. I don't know if that's what they did, but there's literally no thermal paste. Let me, I'll show you guys some B-roll of this. Like, this is just, this is so bad. No wonder I was getting no heat out of that. Like, what on earth? This might be the worst thermal paste job I've ever seen in my life. All right, so they definitely did not refurbish this console. They uh, left me dirt, dust, hair, ramen noodles. Gave me a half-eaten Slim Jim in the package, like a third-party controller. I paid 400 something bucks for this. Like, I, I, I don't get it. Like, like, why? Now, let's move on to the 360 console. And it's supposed to be a 20 gigabyte console with a controller, of course, power supply, all that good stuff. They didn't specify which 360 they're going to send. So, uh, hopefully, they send like a Jasper or a Falcon instead of, you know, that crappy, uh, crappy Xenon. But we'll see. All right. So, we got this open now. Let's see what's in here. We got some packaging. Cool. And, dude, another, another keychain. How am I getting this? Did they film this order? I'm getting lucky here. Trout, kid casters. What? What is this? Okay, cool. We got a controller. Or no, that's power supply. Probably, maybe. Uh, we got a controller here. Hopefully it's OEM. Probably not. But we got a power supply there. We've also got our console down here. Let's go ahead and take them out and take a look at them. All right, let's uh take a look at this controller. Probably a third part. Dude, what? They sent me an OEM. That's not OEM. No, that's that's third. No, that's. Dude, they actually sent me like a special edition controller. Let's take a look at these cords. Um, I'm assuming in these cords, they probably sent me like a, an HDMI or a, a AV cable. Yep. Okay. So they sent me an AV cable. That means that oh, they probably sent me either they, yeah, they probably sent me a non HDMI console. Classic. Um, we got our part of our power cord there. We've got our power brick here and oh, they sent me an OEM power brick. Huh? That's surprising there. And then we've got our console here. And of course, yeah, it's a Xenon, but it actually looks pretty good. That's, that's odd. It looks decent. Um, hmm. Did they actually clean this thing? This is, again, this is not fitting my narrative right now. Um, I might have to fix this. Okay. Uh, yeah, cut this part out again, please, Mr. Editor. Um, we got to fix this. This is not going to do for this video. Okay, perfect. Let's pack in this, uh, crappy third-party controller is a little bit dusty uh let's just conveniently omit the av cable i'm gonna repackage this again cut this out please so let's go ahead and open up this xbox 360 now and first we're gonna do a the classic oh uh i don't know what's going on in there let's see what's in here should be a 360 a 20 gigabyte 360 controller all that good stuff let's go ahead and check it out all right so opening it up we got <laughs> the classic uh one piece of packaging we got dude <laughs> what on earth is this First of all, we got another Slim Jim. At least they didn't eat this one. Joey included a picture of himself in there. That is, that's wild. I mean, I guess, thank you. I'll hang that on my wall. Uh, we've also got a useless piece of packaging right there. We've got our power port cord. Appears to be third party. Good stuff. Gotta love the third party power bricks. So my console can blow up. We've also got a controller down here. Partially wrapped up. And it's, uh, yeah, it's third party. And the thing I had about these third-party controllers is they look very close to OEM. So I think like 90% of the people that get these controllers probably probably think they're OEM because it looks very similar. And of course, last but not least, we got this console here. And oh, hold up, hold up, what is that? Oh, nice. This time they gave me some ramen and oh, they prepared it for me already. Nice, thank you, thank you, DK Oldies. He already prepared my ramen for me. An extra 50 cents to throw that in there. Even got a, a self-portrait of Joey. I appreciate that. Um, now we have the console here, and this console, yeah, it looks solid um, on the outside. Comment here on the back, of course, classic DK. We got the Xenon motherboard. So if you don't know, there's a there's a handful of motherboards for the 360. The very first ones were called Xenons. They had only an AV port, no HDMI port, and the Xenon motherboard is most prone to red ring of death. So these are the consoles you don't want in the state and age, unless it has like an old dashboard like NXC or, or Blades. But of course, that's what they sent me, and I paid a premium for it too. And guess what? There's not even an AV cable, HDMI cable, nothing. Just a freaking Slim Jim. Well. Let's go ahead and plug this in and see if it even works. All right, so I got the console plugged in, had to source my own AV cable since they didn't know it send one. Uh, let's go ahead and turn it on, see if it works. We got a green light so far, and pretty much immediately I can smell the third party power supply. It just has like a factory, like plastic burning smell or something. Like, I, I don't recommend. Um, I, mean, I mean, there's some third party power supplies you can use for 360 that, that I mean, they work, but they're not great. Uh, but let's go ahead and connect up to this console. And here we are on the Metro dashboard. You know, it would have been a redeeming factor if we had uh, been on the Blades or NXC. Uh, Luki Games actually sent me a console recently that was on the NXC. Lots of other stuff was wrong with that, but it wasn't the NXC. Let's see what kind of 
games are already played here. Because I got player one. Come on, stop doing Xbox Live. I don't care about Xbox Live. I just want to see this guy's profile right here. We've got Split Second, Call of Duty Black Ops, Big Bumpin', the Lego movie. Nice. Uh, well, let's go ahead and open up his disk drive, make sure it works, and uh, play a game. So I was really hoping this disk drive wouldn't work. Um, I could take the rubber band down, but no, nah, I'll give it to him this time. I'll let them, I'll let them have a good, a good disk drive here. All right, so the disk drive works. Let's go ahead and put a game in. We got Prey right here. Okay, so the other bad news with the cheap power supply is when you hear a fan coming from the cheap from the power supply. Uh, this one you can you can hear a very loud fan inside of it. The OEM ones don't have a fan inside, and uh, at least the, not that I'm aware of. At least you can't hear it. Um, so yeah, it's just blowing out blowing out that burnt plastic smell. Just not pleasant. All right, so the controls are working in Prey. Really, the only test you need here is opening and closing the toilet. Yeah, I'm not gonna test it too much more. It's working. Console is getting a bit loud, but that's pretty typical for a 360. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and turn it off and uh, open it up and see <laughs> see what's going on inside of this thing. I have the faceplate off and all those other annoying clips undone. Let's go ahead and pull this top piece off if I can get it. And, oh wow, it's actually pretty clean. Okay, okay. Pretty clean here. We got all the screws, I think. Yep, yep. Let's go ahead and take this apart and see what the inside looks like. All right, got all the screws out. Let's go ahead and take the top cover off and see what it looks like on the inside. Be prepared for the dust and dirt. Let's see. And, oh well, that's really clean. Even that part is clean. <laughs> Dude, this is the, this might be the cleanest 360 I've ever seen. Okay, um, this ain't gonna work for the video. We gotta do, we gotta make some dirt or something in here. All right, guys, so I got the rest of the screws out. We can take the top cover off now. Uh, I'm excited to see how much dust and dirt we got here. And, oh yeah, baby. We got ramen noodles. We also got some nice little dirt here, um, as expected. Now, there's actually not quite as much dust in here as I thought there would be, but I got plenty of dirt, ramen noodles. No wonder the disk drive was so loud. But man, these guys are going crazy with the ramen noodles today. They must have gone to the local Walmart, bought a 12 pack of ramen noodles for $3.79 and uh, given me the special of them, I don't know. But, uh, cause I definitely did not put those in there. Now let's take this piece off. And oh wow, what is this? Heck yeah, I got a free Incredibles game. That's instead of keychains now, there's stuff in Incredibles in your fan. Let's go. All right, so the rest of it doesn't look too bad. I'll give them credit there. Now let's go ahead and take the rest of it apart and take a look at this thermal paste and see uh, what they did to it. All right, I finally got this first X clamp off. Let's go ahead and do the big reveal and see if they replaced thermal paste. Three, two, one, and oh crap. Yeah, they put the thermal paste on there. Okay, uh, yeah, that's a bad look. Let me, let me redo this. Yeah, that'll do it. All right, so I finally got the X clamp off. Let's go ahead and see if they replace the thermal paste. And bada bing, bada boom. Uh, that's not even factory thermal paste. What is going on here? <laughs> yeah, so it looks <laughs> it looks like they literally spread it around the outside and forgot to put it on the chip. Good job. Uh, let's take out take off the next X, X clamp and see what it looks like. All right, I got that second X clamp off. Let's go ahead and do the big reveal. Da -da -dum. And crap, they did it again. Got that second X clamp off. Let's go ahead and take this heat sink off. Three, two, one, and... Bada bing, bada boom. Looks like they did the same thing. Nothing up there. Looks like they tried to spread around the outside but forgot to put it on the chip and left some fuzz. Oh, got another visitor. That dirt I got had some bugs in it. That's nasty. Yeah, guys, I mean, got that two for one special today. A uh, classic. I, I gotta give this as a, a zero out of 10, a Z for zebra. I don't know what else to say. Uh, just a all around. All right, guys, so as I'm hoping you noticed by now, this is obviously an April Fool's joke. Um, these two consoles actually did come from DK Oldies a few months ago, and I made videos on them, and they weren't in, they weren't refurbished, um, but we went back, refurbished these, put them back together, and then, you know, did this little uh, this little jokester of a video for, for April Fool's. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know down below what you think, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Guys, don't listen to him. It's, 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 it's not an April Fool's. This is very serious. You have to listen to me. You have to unsubscribe now. It's very important. It's very important. You can't, he can't know. Ah! ah, so DK Oldies, uh, apparently they were tired of not being in the spotlight because they made some comments today that put them right back in the spotlight. And uh, earlier today, somebody on Twitter sent me a few clips uh, from a Facebook live stream that the DK Oldies actually posted earlier today, uh, just unboxing like a random collection that came into the, uh, into the shop. And there's some very 
interesting comments and there's some other stuff to talk about too so uh let's get into it and i say back into the spotlight because frankly over the last month or so dk oldies has actually been laying low they haven't been making weird comments they haven't been making uh, weird videos like they were for a while kind of just like backhanded like yeah we do refurbish stuff they haven't been making those for uh, the past month or so which is good to see i mean there's still a bit of controversial stuff out there that they've been putting out there but um not much until today when this guy sent me some clips so uh <laughs> let's just start and uh watch these all right so here's clip number one from the facebook live stream let's just uh let's watch and observe uh, let's see we've got baseball stars y'all don't actually refurbish consoles matthew we do while i'm streaming live right here just a glance over at our crack cleaning team Probably like 20 people over there all working on cleaning stuff up don't know what to tell you now Let's continue. <laughs> so, so it appears here that Joey is reading a comment that somebody left uh, during the Facebook live stream and said that you guys don't refurbish consoles. And, and Joey is clearly coming back at him pretty strongly saying, yeah, we do refurbish consoles. Look at these 20 people over here cleaning stuff like that. That, that gives us so much of an indi indication that you guys are actually cleaning. Because, I mean, they've literally made videos saying they refurbish stuff and showing the whole process. And then they only did that for one console and didn't do it for the rest of the consoles they send out. And it's just like mind blowing that they're still going down this path of, yeah, we do refurbish consoles. We're, we're and they're, they're doubling down on it. Like, uh, we've seen so many YouTube videos, even recently, Austin Evans came out with a video and he got refurbished, non refurbished stuff when he ordered refurbished consoles. And, and it's just like, it's wild. Like <laughs> they're still doubling down on it. And he's, he's clearly not happy that people are calling him out on it. Um, and like, it's just, it's amazing. Like, come on, guys. Like, well, and then he calls them. I, I didn't catch this part correctly. I don't know if he says cracked cleaning team, like C R A C K E D, or just crack cleaning team. Either way, I, I think it could go either way. Crack is uh, as in, you know, cleaning the cracks of the systems. Like, I don't know why you'd have a whole team for that, but maybe they do. Or cracked as in, like, the slang term that Gen Z uses now for, like, a very good, which is even funnier calling them a very good refurbishing team when they. Um, like no, no offense to them, like they're, they're doing just what they're told, but they're clearly getting directions to not actually open up the consoles and clean stuff. Like wiping down the outside is not refurbishing a console. Come on guys. But let, let me just show you the next clip because there's, there's two more. It's so a clip number two here and it, uh, it gets better. No, you don't. There's a lot of people getting consoles from you. that are not refurbished. Dustin, are you referring to a few YouTube videos? Because we've been in business for over 20 years with thousands of great reviews all out there, all over the web. Coming in every day. So this clip is just even funnier because he says there's a few YouTube videos out there claiming they don't refurbish consoles, where in fact, uh, like you can just search DK Audis on the search bar on YouTube, and there are so many of them. Like uh, so many people have experienced the whole the whole DK Audis, and, and sure, there's probably a few out there that are refurbished, but uh, in general, the, the majority of them are not refurbished. They're not even opened. And uh, they're just doubling down on the fact that, yeah, we do refurbish consoles. And it's just like a, it's like a slap in the face to everybody that's bought a console from them and, and had a bad experience. And it's just like amazing that they're just still doubling down on this and, and claiming that they do refurbish consoles and, and invalidating any of the YouTube reviews. And it's amazing that they're using the thousands of uh, reviews over the last 20 years, which honestly doesn't seem like that much if, it's, if they've been open for 20 years, that, to validate the claims that they do refurbish. And like they just, those two things don't go hand in hand. Like, uh, it's just the fact that it, until like last December, nobody was actually buying the consoles and opening them up and, and seeing what, the look, what they looked like on the inside. So um, just just amazing. But let's go on to, to clip number three because there's, there's still one more. All right, so clip number three, let's watch this one. And Luigi's Mansion. Benjamin, it's you again. Show the refurbishing process since you all clean everything. Benjamin, you seem to be pretty hung up on this, man. What's going on? What do you got going on? Tony Hawk's underground. So this this one is this one is weird because like, Joey is very clearly like not happy with this guy that's making the comments. I'm, I'm assuming it's probably the same guy making the comment and uh, he is he is not happy at all. And it's just amazing because Benjamin is making a good point. Like, guys, show us the refurbishing process for all the consoles if that's actually what you're doing. Uh, but they know they're not, so they're, they're just going to kind of brush over it. And uh, he, he's kind of he actually has a tone with this guy. Like he's 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 Joey is clearly under some stress right now. I don't uh, probably because of the whole refurbishing outrage, which is like it. It's because you guys aren't refurbishing wild stuff, man. I can't believe they're still doubling down on this. And if you if you go to Facebook, like everybody on Facebook, they are on with DK Oldies. They're sticking with DK Oldies. Like I, I've been posting some videos to, to Facebook recently and the, the comment sections on my videos are, oh man, I can't even read them anymore because they're just like so far out there. Check them out if you want to, but like I, I just cannot even read them anymore. But it's amazing that people can't see what's happening and can't see that they're not refurbishing stuff. But 
there's still a few more things to talk about. Let's go ahead and move on to those. So something else that DK Audi has posted recently, which is kind of interesting and funny, is they posted this video that says DK Audi's messed up. And uh, they actually used uh, Review Tech USA, Rich from Review Tech USA's thumbnail style on here, which is kind of funny, like fair to them. Like uh, we've been using Joey's face on our thumbnails, so it's kind of funny they're using that. But just to, <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of just another knock that, that or another indication that they, they have clearly seen the videos of, of people making reviews about their products and they're just ignoring them, frankly. But let's just click on this video because there's a few more things here. And first of all, it's just, it's so, they're kind of playing into the problem, but they're not addressing an actual problem. It's just somebody had a bad battery in the game and he sent it back, they replaced it, whatever, it's fine. You know, batteries die, uh, you know, no problem there. But then you go down and their pinned comment, uh, it just says, thanks for filming your replacement. We ship out thousands of orders every day. Sometimes problems arise, but we are always just an email or phone call away to fix problems you might have with your order. Subscribe to this guy if you want to support a fantastic YouTuber. So <laughs> there's a lot to unpack here. First of all, the first, the first two sentences, it says we ship out thousands of orders every day. Do you really ship out that? That's like, I don't, I don't actually know. I haven't worked for DK Audis. I don't know how much they ship out a day, but thousands of orders a day, that's that's a lot. And let's just, uh, let's run some numbers here because I'm, I'm trying to figure out how much revenue they have in a year. If they ship out a thousand orders a day, let's say they ship out a thousand orders a day as they, they claim. And I'm going to be conservative here and say they have an average order of 50 bucks, which is honestly pretty low because you guys have seen their prices. Uh, so let's just say 50 bucks. That means they have $50,000 of revenue a day. Now let's say they only work Monday through Friday. I think they work on Saturdays too, but let's just say Monday through Friday. So what is that like? 300 days a year, maybe that comes out to $15 million in revenue. I mean, that seems pretty high, but like, I, I don't know, I, maybe they are making that much a year, but it's just, uh, just interesting to see that comment that they ship out thousands of orders a day. And when you put it into perspective, I've spent probably $2,000 at DK Audis. If they're making 15 million a year, not even a drop in the bucket. But later on in this comment, they say, uh, subscribe to the guy. There's, there's a guy in the video that they that they, uh, take a video from, um, and this is Nintendo guy. He says, if you want to support a fantastic YouTuber, which I think is kind of funny because it's kind of like a backhanded slap to all the other people spit kind of saying that we're not fantastic YouTubers because we're making reviews of their, their products. They're not good. And frankly, if they send a refurbished product to me, it would be a good review. Like I just, I just review what I see on my table. I don't, and another funny thing, uh, I talked about this probably a month or two ago, but for a while, DK Audis was making these videos where they post these good reviews on their on their shorts. They basically take another person's video, re-upload it, and say, look at this good review this person left us. And it's funny because they all like just feel weird. And uh, I'm not saying they're fake because I, I doubt they are fake, but it's it's very prompted that, that DK Audis is saying, hey, leave us a good review and we might send you some free, some free stuff, which I guess is fair, but like it just... The whole situation is a little weird. Now, I haven't seen them post any of these recently because like if you look at the last couple rows of shorts, I don't think any of these are, um, you know, reviews from people. So maybe they've run out of them. I don't know. But they always just seemed a little weird. I just wanted to talk about that again. But uh, another thing, you know, guys, all these videos going up about their products and doing unboxing reviews, these these have made an impact. Like if you look at their prices, they've come down. Like I, I, I don't know the exact prices they were, but like just looking at a Wii right here, they have it listed for a hundred bucks, which I know in the past a Wii on DK Audis was a lot more than a hundred bucks. And this is a Wii that comes with, you know, everything you need. Now, granted it is a, they still say compatible Wii remote. So you don't know if you're getting an OEM or a third party. I'm sure it's probably a third party. And this is, this is another funny thing. If you look at this image right here, they now show two images, one image that's clearly an OEM controller, another one where it's uh, Photoshopped out, where it's not an OEM controller. Like, I, I don't know what the point of that was. There's not even an option here to select a third party versus OEM controller. So they're kind of still leaving it up to chance, which is funny. But then if you just like look around, you can kind of see that their prices are coming down some. So it's making an impact. Like we're, their prices are coming down. Not everything. I mean, it's still, prices are still high for, for non-refurbished consoles, um, but they are coming down. And another thing to note is I took a look at the PS3s and 360s a couple of days ago and noticed that they've, they've made a pretty significant change here. So if you look on... Let me just scroll to a PS3 I've purchased before. So I bought an 80 gig reverse, actually a 60, I bought a 60 gig, which I haven't unboxed yet. Still going to be a video on it soon. Oh, they haven't fixed that one. They have fixed like random listings where they've actually added the option for a, uh, an OEM controller. Let me see if I can find it. All right, never mind. So the reverse compatible, which is just a backwards compatible. I don't know why they call it reverse compatible. They've actually changed it. If you look at the description, it says original Sony PlayStation 3 console and one original Sony wireless controller because they finally learned that third-party controllers don't work on PS2 games on the PS3. That's one thing that they fixed, thankfully. I, I mean, I haven't ordered from them since they uh, since I did that, so I don't know if they're actually implementing that or not. But uh, one other thing, if you go to the 360 section, I bought a 60 gig player pack white in the past, and they actually included an option now to substitute an original white controller for 10 bucks extra, which I think is actually somewhat reasonable. Um, now the, the original price is still pretty high, especially if they send you a Xenon motherboard, 
but 10 extra bucks for owning controller, at least they're giving the option now, which they, they did not before um, before I made those other videos. So they, they, these videos are making an impact. Um, so that's good to see that they're actually giving you the option now. And you'll, you'll also notice on this 360 listing that they, they have two images now, one with the, uh, the X on the middle of the 360 controller uh, photoshopped out, and one with it there. It doesn't like correlate whether you click none or OEM controller, but it's just, I thought that was funny that they just photoshopped it to, to take the, uh, the OEM part out. You know, honestly, it's been quite a while since I made like one of these DK Oddies news videos because they've, like I said, they've been laying low. But with these clips today and these comments from, from Joey, like, man, uh, they're just still doubling down on the fact that, yeah, we do refurbish consoles, but you're not like, I don't know. Let me know what you think down below, guys, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Man, another day, another DK Oldies video, and this time, I think we have some of the juiciest info yet, so uh, let's talk about it. Now, first of all, you may have already heard this news, but apparently this company called Treehouse Law is starting a class action lawsuit against DK Oldies for the whole refurbishing thing. There was an ad that popped up on Facebook that somebody took a screenshot of, posted it on Twitter, and that drummed up some some uh, some questions. And this guy called the Retro Bro, I'll link his video down below, he actually talked to some people from the Treehouse Law company and uh, got some info about this apparently uh, class action lawsuit that's happening. I won't talk too much about it because I don't know enough about the whole law and lawyer space to uh, really speak on it. Um, and it's kind of one of those things where I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, I'm not saying it's not happening, but I'm not saying it is happening. Uh, go ahead and check out his video down below. Just know that apparently this company is starting a class action lawsuit against him. And next up, we're going to talk about some videos and comments that uh, DK Audis has been leaving on their Facebook page, their YouTube page and uh, even some other comments that other people have been making on their videos, and we're going to talk about it. So first of all, we have this uh, video they posted last week. It's a short. It says, what's happening inside DK Audis? And basically, they take a quick, like, I don't know, 30 to 60 second video where they show some stuff that's happening inside of DK Audis. So let's go ahead and uh, watch it and talk about it. Go check out what's happening inside of a retro video game store. What are you working on back here? Right now, I'm working on custom repairs. What are you doing back here? Just cleaning out the inside of this console. So this is the this is the most interesting part to me, and it's kind of funny too. So uh, I have not seen this before on a DK Audis video. Like it, it seems to be a new process they're putting, trying to put in place where they have this giant air compressor. I mean, big. Like it's I don't know. It looked like it was four or five feet tall, and it's a you know it's very loud. They pump out the air through the consoles, and uh, it's great that they're blowing out consoles now. Um, I'm sure if you talk to them, they'd say they had this process in place the whole time, but I think it's pretty uh, pretty odd that we're just now seeing this for the first time. At least this is the first time I've seen it on their channel. Maybe you have before, but let me know down below if you have. But this is the first video I've seen them showcasing this this new room where they are, uh, you know, blowing out, actually opening up consoles and blowing them out. Um, it is, I think that air is a little bit strong, but it's better than not blowing anything, anything out at all and not cleaning. So uh, let's just keep watching. I'm cleaning this PS3. I think that's what it is. It's like lighter. Paul, what are you doing back here? I'm eating this soup. I'm uh, shipping out an order. Uh, just resurfacing it. All right, so all that stuff before is pretty normal. They're, you know, shipping out orders, cleaning out the outside of the consoles, which they've uh, been doing for a long time. If you watch their old videos, they actually do show it cleaning out, the, cleaning the outside of the consoles, which is not the issue. The issue is that they haven't been cleaning out the inside, but uh, let's keep going. Just this, making sure they work. Okay, so this part is not directly related to the whole refurbishing issue, but it's very interesting to, to me because I actually have one of these exact same machines. It's called the Elm Eco Pro 2. You can see it here on this website. It costs $1,600 brand new. I bought mine for like a thousand bucks used. But the weird thing is, if you watch this video, it looks like they have maybe 10 of these things. And at the, the size of their business, I'm very surprised they're still using these instead of the uh, some... Like basically, Elm has some very high-end um, high machines that are much, much more efficient, clean more discs, and, and can get deeper into the discs and fi fix bigger scratches. Like this, uh, they got the EcoMaster, which you put 50 discs in, does everything by itself. You basically put the discs in uh, and walk away, and it does it all by itself. So, it, like, to me, it looks like they're using a lot of labor hours running these machines because these take some labor. Like, you got to put a disc in and out, set it for 30 seconds, look at it. Is it good? Uh, or maybe not. Let's put it back in, run it again. And I don't know. That's just kind of a side note, but it's a little bit... I don't know why they're not using these these uh, higher powered machines because they have so many of the lower powered ones. But and yes, yeah, that's, that's the end for that video. So uh, again, the biggest thing to note there is the fact that they are showing off this this room where they're apparently actually blowing out consoles and they're kind of just acting like it's been there the whole time. Uh, the comments here are funny. 
surprisingly they haven't not deleted them yet but <laughs> this is this is yeah this is the vibe to the video all right everyone get to your spots this will only take a couple minutes then you can go back to doing absolutely nothing so to be fair these guys look like they do stuff all day they've got plenty of consoles to, to to wipe down and stuff but uh yeah it just appears that they are putting this on for show to show you this uh new refurbishing process um and yeah that one live stream comment cut under the skin so if you haven't seen i made a video last week about uh some uh, there was some guy on one of their live streams making comments and, and, and joey was not too happy so go i'll link that down below if you want to watch that but uh very interesting comments now the even more interesting one is they posted a live stream to facebook essentially the same thing as that short but kind of a longer version it's like a 15 minute video and joey just walks around the shop showing what's going on at dk oldies and i don't think it's coincidence that they only posted this to facebook uh i'll, I'll just put it this way they the people that follow dk oldies on facebook and are, are and are a big fan of their business um like they they love dk oldies like they it leaks onto my facebook page if you guys don't know i have a facebook page where i basically repost my youtube videos to facebook to reach a new audience and uh i encourage you to go check out those videos and just read the comments uh, there's a lot of i don't even know how to describe them just people that don't watch the video and they comment ridiculous stuff i don't know how to describe it i'll let you guys go and go and read those comments because um, I'll just put it this way, the 99% of the people that watched the Facebook video of the April Fool's video I made about, about DK Oldies on April Fool's uh, thought it was legit, did not know it was an April Fool's joke, even though I said in the description it was an April Fool's joke and said in the video it was an April Fool's joke. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. But let's go ahead and watch some parts of this video. Uh, so first of all, they kind of just go through showing the repair stuff and they do have guys repairing stuff. They've always had guys repairing stuff. The issue has not been the repair. The, the issue is that they... It seems in the past they would only clean and refurbish, fully clean and refurbish consoles if they were repairing something inside. So they open the console up, blow it out, uh, fix the console, whatever. But if it had no issues inside the console, they just kind of toss it to the side and said, yep, it's ready to ship to the customer. So that's been the biggest issue is that they were not actually were cleaning or refurbishing consoles that did not have issues. There's a lot of things to point out in this video that are interesting. Like I saw a guy using a drill. I don't, maybe it's a really low power drill, but I don't know why you're using drills on, on consoles that gonna strip strip screws that's there we go that's a good one so that's an electronic uh that's a drill right there you can use that's that's much better for um for electronics i saw like a legit drill earlier but if we keep going about halfway through this video they walk over and check out the uh the room that's always been there where they refurbish consoles so let's go ahead and pick it up here and watch where all the consoles get opened up and cleaned out holy smokes it looks like we've got a ton of stuff back here not Okay, so <laughs> we got a few things going on here. First of all, I think it's, I know it's probably just part of Joey's character, but I think it's funny that he's acting as if he's never seen this room before, which legitimately he probably hasn't because it seems to be a brand new room. Uh, the other thing is they got stacks and stacks of consoles that are apparently waiting to be, re waiting to be refurbished. And the funny part is me and uh, Danny were looking at this and trying to figure out, are these on shelves? Like if you zoom in, so like if you have all these 360s stacked up in boxes, it almost looks like the box like right here is legitimately stacked right on top of the console so it's putting a ton of pressure on the consoles on the bottom so just imagine you have 360s on the bottom that have you know 20 extra 360s stacked on top of it uh, it's probably fine but I, I find that a little bit weird it, it mainly the, the weirdest part is that it seems like this was thrown together real quick they didn't have time to buy shelves and stuff to to make this room they just had to make this whole room and and kind of act like it's always been here but let's just let's keep watching box 360s waiting to get refurbished and then let's see what goes on back here. What's going on, John? How are you making out? How are you guys doing today? What Everyone's doing well. is this? You might want to turn your volume up here because you can't, uh, the guy that's talking is kind of far away from the camera, so you can't really hear him. But let's look, look at all these cons. What are yeah, we, so what are we looking at? This is our refurbishing center, as you can see all around. This is where we clean out all of our consoles and stuff like that. Um, so each station will have someone at each station and they'll be blowing all the consoles out that we need. And we'll go by, you know, what we sell the most of and things like that. Um, this one specifically over here, we're just doing Xbox right now. Yes, yeah, so basically he's describing that they have this whole refurbishing room um, and they're going to act like it's always been there, but y y you can just tell from the vibe of the video and the fact that you've never seen this on the channel before that it's definitely a new space. Um, kind of looked like a storage space in the past and they're just like, yeah, let's transform this into our cleaning room. So now they are coming in here and clearly taking a, you know, a giant, what is that, probably 2360 Slims, taking them apart. And blowing them all out which is great like it's good that they are finally actually refurbishing consoles well okay hold up hold up this is not quite refurbishing this is cleaning out the inside of the consoles which is which is they get you part way there uh if they're not taking these apart and still replacing if they're not replacing thermal paste um i still wouldn't call it refurbished because i think any console that 
uh, any console that has that has their own pace, like in the past, you know, basically anything with a CPU and GPU needs their own pace replaced, so it'll keep running uh, well for a console that's refurbished and costs this much. Yeah, so they're taking them all apart, blowing them out. They have that giant compressed air thing that we were talking about earlier, and uh, let's keep watching. Now, so we'll just, I'll break down a whole bunch of them, and then we'll get them in pieces here, each one, because you want to be real intricate to get the dust out of everything. For example, this is like before. You can see how dusty that is. Uh huh. Okay, sure. Um, all the pieces all dirty, and this one's completely laid out. And how we go in there and get the. So basically, he goes through here and describes that they're these consoles are dirty. They're gonna blow them out with the compressed air. And he also shows that they use some isopropyl alcohol and Q-tips and, and uh, whatnot to clean out the dust and stuff, which is great. Yeah. So it appears that they are actually. You can see the isopropyl alcohol and Q-tips there and toothbrush. Uh, you can. It appears that they're actually blowing out the consoles now. But let's let's show this uh, compressed air one more time. So it seems like right there the the machine is not actually on, so I don't think it's putting out the full gamut of air that it can. And like I said earlier, I think it might be a little excessive. Like, I, 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 hopefully they can turn the hopefully they can turn down the power on that thing because it's that's blowing out some strong air. But I'll give it to them. It's better better to blow out the console than not blow it out at all. So um, yeah, that's essentially what they show here. And it's just it's like. The rest of the video is pretty normal stuff that they've showed in the past. It's just funny that they are just now in April after we've talked, we've been talking about this, at least I have since December, and they're just now showing this, uh, these consoles being uh, opened and actually cleaned out, even though they've been, they've been claiming on their channel for, for months, um, probably longer than they, that they open and refurbish and clean every single console. But let's move on to uh, some of the comments because the comments are honestly the worst part. So you've probably seen this comment. I talked about it in my last video. Check that video out if you haven't seen it yet. Um, I'm gonna skip over it, but uh, just interesting stuff. This is the, this is the most interesting one. So this is on Facebook on one of their live streams or videos or whatever. Uh, somebody named Katie responds or posts a comment and says, "Address the controversy. I want to know your side." And then DK Oldies responds with probably the most ridiculous comment I've seen from them so far in the past few months. Let's just uh, let's read it and talk about it. So it says, "Hi Katie, I'm aware of a few content creators on YouTube who have received our items that weren't completely happy with. First of all, it's, it's funny how they kind of." Let's just keep going. If they had reached out to our customer support, we would have aptly resolved their issue. We are always open to constructive criticism, but people are so quick to hate these days that it became a trend to make exaggerated videos and even personal attacks on us to get views in their channels. So this this is funny. Like there, <laughs> this comment. Um, Rich actually talked about this comment in, in in a few days ago. I'll link his video down below and how they're essentially shifting the blame from refurbished consoles being the issue to the YouTubers being the issue. Like it's an issue, now it's our fault for buying their consoles and opening them up and taking a look at them and seeing that they weren't what they claimed. Really? And I'm gonna make an analogy here. It's it's a similar process to buying a used car from a dealership where you know you go to a car dealership, you're buying a used car, the dealer cleans it up, makes sure it's all running and, and, and good to go for you. Um, you take the car home and you decide you're gonna make a, a you know a YouTube video or some sort of review video online of the the buying process from them and what kind of condition it's in uh, coming from this specific dealership. So so you go in your car, you scoot the seat back, you see a vomit stain underneath the seat. You know, you open up the, the hood, you see that the engine oil is depleted, you know, there's only a little bit left. Um, you know, you open up your, your cabin air filter and it's just filthy or just missing completely. Um, you know, the, the, the lug nut on the tire is not tightened all the way. It's all these things that, that the dealership is getting away with because it doesn't affect the immediate functionality of the console, or excuse me, in this case, a car. You turn the car on, it works fine. Uh, but later down the line, after the warranty is gone, uh, you run into these issues because the engine oil was not there, the cabin air filter was not there, or missing, or, you know, just dirty or um, just other various issues like that. I'm not a huge car guy, so I, there's probably better examples in the car of this this process. But it's like, you make this video, you post it online, and the dealership comes back to you like, hey, you shouldn't have posted that. Like, uh, you're exposing our, our bad business practices. And uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like what DK Odys is doing. They're selling you these used consoles, and you know, 99% of people are not gonna open the console up. They're not gonna see that their the longevity of their console is is depleted because they're not replacing thermal paste or cleaning out the console. Um, and it just hasn't been an issue because people aren't opening the consoles. And, uh, but DK Audio is getting mad at us for posting these videos because they're like, hey, it's your fault for buying this console, making a video. Like, you shouldn't have done that. And at this point, they're basically discrediting all of the uh, reviews on YouTube, except for the good ones, of course, the ones they repost their channel. I still can't believe a company is is making comments like this and, and saying that we're making these videos just just to just to hate on them. Um, if you go back and watch the videos I've made, I started in December, made a few unboxings, and just like the same videos I've been making for years where I buy weird or sketchy or interesting consoles from different places, I unbox them, tear them down, review them, um, and I did that with DK Oldies, and, and I found it really odd. Like the first one, 
the first console they sent me to be fair it was like pretty clean it, it was still a little bit dusty and um probably more dusty than it should have been for how much it paid but like to be fair it was it was it worked fine pretty clean it was a ps3 slim but the weirdest part was that they called it cleaned and refurbished and, and uh of course they say that they're all open and clean and refurbished but this console still had the original warranty steel intact a little weird right like how how did you open and clean a refurbished console if the warranty seal is still intact and that's how it's been with most of the consoles i've bought from them if you watch my channel most of the ones i've purchased from them uh a lot of them were actually clean but they still weren't opened up and refurbished they still had the orig original warranty sticker which means they still had the original thermal paste which is uh, a critical replacement for an old 360 or ps3 and of course we have the desert ps3 that was uh, just filthy it looks like a desert <laughs> by the way i have a new a new DK Oldies unboxing coming out this Friday, so make sure to check that out. It, it, I haven't opened it up yet, but it'll be very interesting to see if they are actually opening up and blowing out consoles now. Yeah, make sure to check that out. And then let's just keep going on this comment. They say, uh, I don't want anyone to be unhappy with what they receive from us, but if you check our reviews over the past 20 years of business, you'll see the vast majority of our customers love our service and come back for more. So <laughs> they've done this a lot where they basically, they basically shift... Not only do they are they shifting the blame uh, to us here, they're saying that YouTubers are at fault for buying our consoles, and making videos on them, <laughs> and personal attacks like that. That maybe they're talking about somebody else, but I, I have personally never attacked anybody like on their channel or anybody in general. Like that's just not me. I just make videos about what kind of new stuff they're posting like this, and I make unboxing and reviews. So uh, I, I hope they're not talking about me because I have not attacked them at all. It, it's just amazing that they keep using this excuse of being in business 20 years, all of a sudden somehow makes them a great company. Like maybe you were great for the past 19 years, but for the past year you haven't been refurbishing. Um, and yeah, like it, it just doesn't doesn't mean anything. Plenty of companies fall off. Plenty of companies go out of business because they change their practices. They they grow too fast, things like that. So uh, they're just like hiding behind the fact that like, yes, we have customer service and yes, we've been in business 20 years. So all these content creators on YouTube are wrong. Yeah, they go on to say, we, we will continue to evolve our services to meet the needs of our customers and keep an eye out for more videos detailing our refurbishing process that'll be coming out soon. So they, they made this comment before they re released those refurbishing videos. And it's just like this comment, man, like I, I just cannot believe the audacity of them to leave this comment and, and basically blame people for buying their products and unboxing them. Just an exaggerated video is like became a trend. Like it, it's a trend because like it's so easy. You can just order from any, anything from their site, and there's like a a ninety percent chance you open it up and it's dirty. Like even the really big channels, like Austin Evans bought a bunch of consoles and got some disgusting consoles. Uh, Electronics Fix bought a console, and and you know he's well known for breaking down consoles and repairing them and stuff. And they're they're just discrediting everybody. Like everybody that's made a YouTube video about our stuff is wrong. And then here they are. This is just a couple of days ago. People were, were, are asking DK Oldies, do you do all consoles get taken apart like this and clean? And they still they're still responding back and say yes they do. And then, and then you got you got people like this on Facebook that are saying show it la show say it louder for the false YouTube making money slandering you guys. First of all, this comment doesn't make any sense grammar wise. And it's just unbelievable that you have people on Facebook that are just have tunnel vision. They just see what DK Oldies posted. They they don't believe anything else. And like it's fair to to be a little bit skeptical of everything on, you see on the internet. But when you see this many unboxing videos coming out and, and most of those unboxing videos are bad like dirty consoles and stuff it's just come on now you got some other comments here like uh this guy's being fair he says some guy has been posting videos buying consoles from dk oldies that apparently have been refurbed but obviously hadn't been open for a number of years then dk oldies started posting more videos like this all of a sudden i don't hate dk oldies but it's even more suspect when they start doing this as a response and that that's the exactly the thing like I, that's why it still surprises me that DK Oldies is, is posting these re these replies, these replies and these videos. It's just, it's really weird. Um, and then you got this same thing. What about all those com co consoles that didn't get cleaned? You didn't want the customers to open them up. And then they, they just keep coming back with, if anyone's unsatisfied with our order, please contact us. And guys, that doesn't work. Like I tried that. If you guys remember my, my PS3 box unboxing from a couple months ago where I got the Desert PS3. I sent them a message and said, hey, can I get an actually refurbished console this time? They replied back and they were hesitant to send me another one because I broke the warranty seal, but they did send me another one. And even that one, they knew it was going to be on YouTube. They knew it was going to be posted as a video on YouTube and they still didn't open it up and clean it. Like it was like a little bit, it was cleaner than the, the first PS3. I'll give them that, but it was still dirty, still dust, no thermal paste replaced just amazing and then apparently i've made a name for myself on facebook like i said earlier I, I post my videos from youtube to facebook as well and people on my comments like they they do not like me i'll just put it that way but this guy uh, apparently i made a name for myself jacob or is gonna lose it when he sees this and i 
frankly, I did. Like, it's just a, it's a bit of a ridiculous video. This is, this is a comment on their video showing that they, yeah, we do refurbish consoles. And then you got people like this. For all you people who say there is no refurbishing, now you know. So they're, they're just, again, tunnel vision. They see DK Oldies make one video about refurbishing and they're like, oh, they've been doing this the whole time. Like all those other videos are, are lies and fake. And most of these other comments are pretty similar. I'll show you one more. Uh, this guy says, everyone knows you don't clean your consoles, just stop. There's no coming back from screwing that over that many customers. And they respond back, says our cleaning and repair teams refurbish all of our products before they leave our warehouse. They're just, they're doubling down on it, tripling down on it, quadrupling down on it. They just, uh, it's, it's, it's wild. But uh, let me know down below what you guys think about this. And thank, uh, thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you next time. I bought a refurbished PS4 Slim from DK Oldies for $250 and in this video we're going to take an in-depth look at it and see if they actually refurbished anything. So at this point I don't think DK Oldies needs any introduction so let's go ahead and open the box and see what's inside. Alright so here we go, got our classic wrapping here, wow. Oh no they used, they used, uh, <laughs> they used packing peanuts. <laughs> Look how much extra space is in this console. All right, so here's the packing slip. I ordered a Dishonored Definitive Edition for the PS4. I got a PS4 Slim 500 gig, cosmetically flawed. I did use a coupon because I found one online. And uh, let's see what's in here. We've got a uh, HDMI cable. We've got a power cord. We've got, oh, oh, we got an OEM controller. Yes, let's go. It's about time. And we got a, an old school charging cable. I don't know why everybody uses old school. I just like... I do not like their products. So in case you don't know, Old School is a company that makes third-party accessories uh, like controllers, cables, that sort of thing. Uh, you literally just saw this exact cable on the screen when I pulled it out of the box, and you'll see later that it doesn't work very well. It's very finicky. And the controllers they make as well, in my experience, are not good. Like this DoubleShock 3 is, a, you know, a piece of junk. Um, this one right here is also a piece of junk for the original Xbox. The Xbox 360 one is a piece of junk. And, uh, you know, it, it's very clear that they're making these controllers to look exactly like the OEM, but like a slight difference. You can see on this controller, it's basically the same thing, but there's no X in the middle. And I'm even on their wholesale website right now, and they're clearly just a business that's that's made to make uh, third-party accessories like as cheap as possible. Not good ones, just, you know, as cheap as possible that are that are functional. And so, you know, their stuff works, but it's just, it's just not very good. And this thing's in nice condition too. Nice. Pretty cool color. I think I've had one of those controllers. I come across one of them one time. And we got the PS4 Slim right here inside of some bubble wrap. And here it is. Let's go ahead and take it out and take a closer look at it. Well, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Dude, this, wait a second. I ordered a PS4 Slim, right? <laughs> they said, they said, you can't make this up. I ordered a PS4 Slim. They sent me an OG PS4. All right, let's just, uh, let's roll with it. And let's uh, take a closer look at this console. I took a look inside of the box and noticed I missed one other thing here. And we have the system and game startup. I don't know why they put this in here because this is like only relevant to uh, like N64s and old consoles. Not relevant at all to a PS4, which is interesting. But um, let's take a closer look at this console. First of all, you'll notice on the top, very scratched up. That's fair. It's called cosmetically flawed. So I expect that. And that thing gets, you know, scratched up very easily. Now it does look like down here they wiped it off, but probably used magic eraser which is why you see this uh, kind of weird streaking down there probably could have avoided that to be fair it could have been like that before got a little mark there um but you know nothing too crazy again smudges and scratches it is a uh, cosmically flawed and oh yep nice we got <laughs> still have our warranty seal so yeah always awesome when you see a warranty sticker on a console that's supposedly uh been uh, opened and cleaned now the one thing I will note is that this console, I bought this a while ago, it was not recent, so it's probably before they actually started opening and cleaning their consoles, because if, you, if you've seen their videos recently, they've made some videos like showing the showing their cleaning process and kind of acting like it's been there the whole time. Um, it, it was probably before they started doing that. Let me just check this order date. It was, yeah, end of January. So a couple months ago, you know, they I think they were still claiming then that they opened and cleaned consoles, and they've been saying they clean, test, and, re and you know, refurbish all consoles ever since I've been buying from them. So it should have been open and clean and refurbished anyways, but just something to note. All right, so if we come over here to the listing I purchased from, it's called a PS4 Slim, 500 gigs. Condition is refurbished and cleaned and tested. So that means these consoles should be cleaned, tested, refurbished, opened up and cleaned. And uh, we even have, you know, a YouTube video they made a few months ago where they go through the whole process of uh, getting a console in, opening it up, refurbishing it, cleaning it, all that good stuff and shipping it out. And then they have a Facebook live stream they did like a week ago where they showed this process of opening and cleaning it out. 
And they even have comments replying to people saying, yes, we open and clean every console in our shop. And it's just the, you know, it's the fact that they're saying this and then we're getting consoles like this that have clearly not been opened up. Like they still have the original warranty seals, which means it hasn't been opened up. And, you know, we'll, we'll see later in this video that it clearly was never opened and cleaned. So yeah, that's the whole predicament here. And uh, yeah, let's take this cover off and see what kind of hard drive is in here. Yeah, so here's the hard drive. It is indeed 500 gigs. You can see it there. Um, <laughs> Definitely dusty though. Yeah, nice, that's that's a great sign. So of course, not a big deal having that much dust on a hard drive, but it just, it's kind of just a sign of what's to come on the inside of this thing when we open it up later. But uh, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the rest of this console. I wanna look at the, the, the manufacturing date actually on the back. I don't know if it shows us the manufacturing date or the model number. Yes, yeah, so this is a CUH-1001A. I would think that's one of the OG models. Let me, let me look it up real quick. So as far as I can tell, the uh, CUH-1001A is like, one, either the very first model or one of the very first models so that's great they didn't send me a ps4 slim and they also sent me one that's um like the very og models the ones that are like jet engines and i just found our cosmetic flaw it's missing one of the rubber feet on the bottom it still seemed like decently stable though but yeah i showed you the controller briefly earlier this is a really awesome controller i honestly don't think it's been used much because the label on the back is in really good condition usually you'll get some wear and tear right there if it's been used a lot but this controller looks good, so um, glad we finally got an OEM controller, and it's a really nice one, limited edition one. So that's cool. Let's go ahead and plug this thing in, though, and uh, make sure it works. All right, the console is plugged in. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Three, two, one. Got life so far. Cool. Got my controller plugged up. Let's make sure this connects up. <laughs> no way. They didn't, even, they didn't even reset the console. Dude, we still got uh, Preston, Preston somebody on here. Oh, what? Controller keeps disconnecting. Yeah, I think it's this. I think it's this cable. I'll have to troubleshoot this a little bit later and figure out if it's the controller or the cable. But we, <laughs> dude, they, they didn't even reset this. Uh, this guy's profile. We still got his stuff downloaded on here. Preston Dre Dre Hobble. Uh, we got Red Dead Redemption Two on here. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Modern War Modern Modern Warfare. A bunch of other random stuff on here. Let's see what other games we got. Yeah, so not much actually. It's like basically all the standard stuff. Call of Duty and then Red Dead. Uh, which is actually good. I might can put in my own copy of Red Dead and, and test that out real quick. So far, the console is pretty quiet. We'll see if that changes when we put a game in and play it. Um, actually, do we have any mystery games here? Nope. No free mystery games. Let's go ahead and connect to the internet here and uh, make sure we're not like banned or anything. All right, so I'm not quite sure what the controller is doing, but it's just like moving the cursor around on the screen by itself. All right, it seems to be okay now. I just unplugged the controller and plugged it back in. That was weird. So the internet is mostly working. We're not on the latest uh, firmware update yet, so we can't actually sign in. But let's go ahead and check. I'm curious what uh what firmware it's on here already. So let me check. So we're dude, we're on 7.0. Wow, this thing has not <laughs> not been used in quite a while. I might I might keep it there. I don't know if there's any advantage to keeping it on a firmware that old, but it's just kind of interesting having it on a on an old firmware. Of course, I can't log in. I don't really want to log into this guy's account. Okay, yeah. So going to the notifications, you can see the last time he played was 2019 when he received some invitations to to play some Call of Duty. Interesting. So this console has not been played in quite a while. And you can see the internet's working here. I connected up to a web page. Let's go ahead and put a game in. I'll probably go and grab my copy of Red Dead Redemption 2 since it's already installed and we'll try that out. So I actually have Red Dead 2 on the Xbox, not the PS4. So I ended up pulling out Gran Turismo Sport, put this in here, played it for a while. And the console's getting pretty hot, but it, it actually hasn't turned into a normal PS4 jet engine like the early PS4s usually do. But uh, no problem, it's working fine. And again, I haven't I haven't actually tested out the internet fully. I haven't tested out PSN fully because I don't want to update this past uh, firmware 7.0. Uh, but let's go ahead and turn the console off. And uh, actually there's, I forgot, there's one other thing I noticed. Um, they forgot to send me the game. Uh, if you guys remember, I ordered Dishonored. We even saw it on the packing slip and I just tore through the entire packaging, no game. So they sent me the wrong console, no game. Awesome, but they redeemed partially with the, <laughs> the cool controller. Not really, but uh, let's go ahead and turn this off and take a look at the inside and see what it looks like. So guys, if you like my videos here, make sure to check out my website down below. It's called jrobgaming.com, and I've had a newsletter sign up for quite a while now, and in the past, I've kind of used it mostly for discount codes for my website, but I'm transforming it now into an actual weekly newsletter where I share uh, interesting gaming content, such as, you know, overpriced weird consoles I find, funny gaming content online, and just anything else that I think is interesting. So we start by taking this piece off, we take the hard drive out, and then we'll have to take off some screws in the back, and we'll get inside. All right, gotta do the dirty here, take the warranty seal off, add to my collection over here. Oh, and that one's already, oh, that was, that's interesting. That one was already, huh, has that one been removed before? Okay, I'm starting to rethink. I think this console may have been opened up before. Now, I'm not sure, probably not by DK Oldies because they didn't put their own warranty sticker here, but um, that one just popped off really easily. Now, the problem with warranty seals is there are ways to circumvent those and remove them without damaging the seal itself, so 
you never quite know if it's been opened or not. All right, I got the four screws in the back off. Let's go ahead and take the bottom plate off and reveal the inside. And here we go. Oh, yeah. This thing is filthy. Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> yeah, this thing either has never been opened up or has not been opened up in years. That is disgusting. Not as bad as the, the Desert PS3, but uh, it's, it's, it's getting there. And yeah, you can see... You can see some nice clumps up there. You got all this dust and dirt in the fan. And yeah, guys, every console is opened up and cleaned. Took this metal piece off and it reveals some nice new dust clumps right there. Gotta love them. All right, and here's a look at the power supply. Nice and dusty inside and out. Oh yeah, got those big clumps right there too. All right, so here's the disk drive. Looks pretty good on this side. Uh, I didn't mention it earlier, but the disk to, to pull a disk in was extremely slow. I actually had to force it all the way in because it wouldn't pull it in itself all the way and you can kind of if you look on this side you can see a little bit of dust and grime there which would make sense yeah, if you go in there and clean the rollers and, and all the mechanisms in there it should be fine all right i got this piece off and you can see nice and dusty <laughs> let's keep going i want to get down to the heat sinks and the thermal paste and see what that looks like a little bit dusty under here not too terrible let's go ahead and keep going though all right i think we should get the thermal paste reveal here maybe all right finally got the motherboard flipped over and boom there we got the thermal paste very thin, not much left. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. You got your uh, APU right there with a little bit of thermal paste left. Not a whole lot right on the heat sink. There's basically nothing left. And this is a this is basically a launch model PS4 and, uh, you know, 10 years old. It, it definitely needs thermal paste replaced by now. Um, so that should be part of the refurbishing process. I could see you not replacing thermal paste on like a, a newer PS4 Pro or PS4 Slim that just, you know, brand new within the last, you know, five years maybe or so. I do want to keep going though because this fan... That thing looked nasty. So let's keep, uh, let's take this last metal piece off and look at the fan. All right, I forgot about the heat sink. So got the heat sink here. Oh yeah, coated in dirt and dust, nice. And I got dust flying all around my room. It does not smell very good in here. It just smells, it's just like a musty, dusty smell. I don't know, not good, but um, nice. So that's that's not great. And then, whoo boy, this, this fan, whew, man, that thing is nasty. So after seeing everything in this package that DK Audi sent me, I think it's pretty clear if you've been watching my videos, uh, my DK Audi's videos since I started doing them, that I think it's pretty clear that this is by far the worst console they've sent me. It's actually just the second dirtiest console they've sent me. Um, they sent me a PS3 a few months ago that was just absolutely filthy. It looks like a desert. <laughs> uh, probably the dirtiest PS3 I've ever seen in person. But this console was very dirty and just the entire package makes it the worst console because frankly, they uh, forgot the game. They uh, gave me the wrong console, which is the biggest thing. Like they gave me the, the older PS4 instead of the PS4 Slim that I paid extra money for. Um, the disk drive didn't even work properly. Like you had to push the disk all the way in, even though it's supposed to pull it in automatically. Um, I can't even, there was a few other things. Clearly it was never opened and cleaned or refurbished. The thermal paste was still there. Frankly, this console was clearly never tested, cleaned or refurbished. If they had tested this console, uh, first of all, they would have factory reset it. Uh, second of all, even if they hadn't factory reset it, there would have at least been a, a, a game that would have popped up on the screen when I turned it on um, that they used for testing. And I'm like 99.99% sure they did not use Red Dead to test because that's such a large game. It would take forever to install. And you know, clearly this console came into the shop, they wiped it down and then shipped it straight back out without testing it, cleaning it, or refurbishing it and um you know frankly just uh, ridiculous at this point <laughs> considering they're constantly claiming that they open and clean and refurbish every console so uh let me know down below what you guys think about this console and thanks for watching and i'll see you next time I bought two Nintendo DS Lite consoles from DK Oldies for almost $250, and in this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at both of them and see if they're actually refurbished this time. So let's start by talking about the prices of these consoles, because I think the DS Lite consoles are one of the more outrageously priced consoles on their site. Now, I paid $130 for one console, $120 for the other one. Uh, by the way, they're both cosmetically flawed, and just for reference, you can buy a good condition DS Lite for under $50 on eBay. So I just wanted to note here that I actually saved a lot of money going with the cosmetically flawed system, because apparently the good system goes for $100. $70, just wild stuff. But we're paying that premium price because it's supposed to be clean and refurbished. So let's go ahead and open up the box and see what's inside. All right, so as you can see, it is clearly from DK Oldies. All right, so here's the packing slip. I ordered one white console, one Guitar Hero console, which I had never heard of before. And just by the way, this order was quite a while ago, back in January during the whole DK Oldies saga. Just now getting to these though. So let's go ahead and open them up. We got our white console here. We've got our Guitar Hero console here, our chargers. All right, so we'll start with the chargers here and they are both OEM. Nice. Yeah, here's the first one. So let's take a look at it. We got a white console. Uh, looks pretty good on the front. On the back, of course, you got that obnoxious sticker there on the back. Uh, we've got our game in here. Metroid Prime Hunters First Hunt, some sort of uh, demo game. Now let's try out the uh, trigger buttons here. Those seem to work fine as well. 
Second so look at the bottom, you got your volume. On the side, you got your power, got your stylus. Now taking a look on the inside here, you've got your A, B, X, and Y, your D-pad, your start select, all those all look good, feel good. You've got your two screens here, and they look pretty good. The uh, top screen has some scratches, but nothing too crazy. Uh, the bottom screen does have some scratching, but of course that's gonna happen with your stylus, so that's, uh, you know, expected. Now to be honest, I'm not sure why they called it cosmetically flawed, because this one looks pretty good. I don't see any, you know, uh, anything above normal scratching. Now the one thing I will say that's a little bit disappointing is these cracks are still caked with dirt, which happens on the DS Lite uh, pretty frequently, but for $130, you would think they would actually open the console up and clean those cracks out, but I'm not surprised they didn't. I'll show some photos on the screen so you can see it better. Let's go ahead and put that one to the side and open up the uh, Guitar Hero one. I'm very curious what this one looks like because I've never seen this one in person. And uh, oh yeah, that one's definitely cosmetically flawed. You can see a bunch of scratches there on the front. Now, I guess the difference here is the white one does have some scratching on the front, but it's hard to see because of just like the, the natural color of it. Uh, this one is definitely cosmetically flawed though because it's got a lot of scratches there on the front. Got, got a, a ding up right there. Um, you got this cool Guitar Hero logo there. And it's not it's not a sticker. It's actually, you know, printed on the, the casing there, which is pretty cool. Now, taking a look at the back here, of course, you got your uh, warranty sticker there. And it is very scratched up in the back. You've got your stylus and everything else looks good on the back. Triggers feel pretty good as well. I uh, got your volume slider. Looks good. Now, taking a look at the inside, there is some scratching. The top screen is probably a little bit worse than the last one, but still not too bad. The bottom screen does have some scratching. Of course, all these buttons look pretty good. They do have some wear and tear, but of course, this is cosmetically flawed, so that's expected. Now, the good thing about this console, I think because of the colorway, you don't really see any kind of grime and dirt in those cracks. There might be some there, but um, I don't see it. The white one, the white DS Lite is like notorious for getting dirt in those cracks, but again, like I think for... <laughs> Triple market value, they probably should have cleaned that. But let's go ahead and turn these on and see if they work. So let's just start with the Guitar Hero 1. We got this one right here. And man, the DS Lite, such a nostalgic console for me. I haven't played one in so long, but uh, yeah, they factory reset it. So let's go ahead and I'll put in my classic name of QWERTY here. But yeah, like I was saying, it's such a nostalgic console for me. I played it a ton when I was like, I don't know, 10 years old. Played download, played with my friends. All right, so we're here to the main menu now. Check out the screen brightness. That works no problem. Let's do the uh, screen calibration here and make sure that all works. Dude, the thing I forgot about the DS Lite is every time you go out of the settings menu, you have to shut it down and turn it back on, which is annoying. But, you know, back in the day I had, I didn't think anything of it because it was just normal. But uh, the way things go these days, that's kind of weird. Now, PictoChat, that was my favorite. I love to do PictoChat with my friends and stuff. But let's go ahead and put a game in. I think actually also to put a game in, you have to restart the console. Yep, you do. So we got to turn it off and back on again. Again, not a big deal. It takes like two seconds to turn it back on. Just something that's kind of funny compared to what we do nowadays. So we got Metroid Prime Hunters First Hunt. Let's go ahead and boot it up and, and play a little bit. It's so funny going back to the DS Lite days and using the touchscreen like kind of as your right stick. Uh, it actually works really well. Like you can get really precise aiming and stuff. Now I will say, although these uh, touchscreen controls are pretty accurate, it makes my left hand cramp a lot because I got to use the controls to move around and also the left trigger to shoot. And it just makes your hand cramp up pretty quickly. It's definitely a definitely a kid-sized console. All right, so we got Mario Tennis Power Tour. And honestly, this is probably my favorite Game Boy Advance game. I don't know why. It was just such a fun game. It had like a little tour mode where you were, you were like this... I don't know what your name was. Ace, I think. And you were trying to work your way up to play against Mario and Donkey Kong and all those dudes. All right, but yeah, it's clearly working. Man, I'm going to have to go back and play this game some. This is not my original copy. I sold my original copy like ages ago when I sold my Game Boy Advance SP. I don't know where I got this one from, but I have it now. So one other thing I want to point out here is the hinge on this Guitar Hero DS Lite is actually pretty loose, like more loose than a, a DS Lite hinge should be. So honestly, as a little concerning, I think it's probably on its way out. I'm not sure how much time it has left, but to be honest, I don't expect DK Oldies to replace the hinge on a console that's still working fine, but I do think it's something that uh, their, where their uh, warranty will actually come into play because I think this will probably break before the warranty is up. Yeah, that's my guess. I don't know if it will or not. All right, so something I want to try real quick is the internet browser. And I just recently bought this in Nintendo DS browser brand new for like 15 bucks. Man, it's been a long time since I opened up a brand new DS game. Let's go ahead and put it in. So you got to put in the uh, browser here and you need extra, you need a memory expansion pack because there's not enough memory in the uh, DS Lite to use a browser. So you got to put this in the Game Boy Advance slot. And now we boot it up and we'll see if it works. So I have the browser booted up and it's so funny to see this in 2023 because I think the last time I saw this was probably 2007, 2008 maybe. And I was going to connect to the internet here, but I forgot I got to change a bunch of settings on my router. So I'm just not going to bother with it because it doesn't really matter, honestly. So now let's go ahead and move on to the white Nintendo DS and test it out. All right, got the white one here. And this, the hinge on this one feels a whole lot better than the, the Guitar Hero one. Let's go ahead and see if it boots up. I also need to make sure these things charge up. We'll, we'll test that in a minute. And oh, oh no, this one's got a 
bad screen. So I just wanted to jump in here and talk about how they really should have noticed the screen issue when testing the console. I mean, like you saw, I noticed the issue immediately when I turned it on and I don't work on DS lights every day like DK Oldies does. Now, because of the camera and lighting, it is a bit hard for you to see the screen yellowing in the video, but trust me, it's pretty obvious in person. And even more obvious is the fact that the screen is very dim, which you'll see in just a second. Now, of course, sometimes mistakes happen and things slip through the cracks. I mean, uh, that's just part of life and that's why we have customer service. But the problem is that there's some sort of issue literally every single time I buy from them. I mean, their customer service is good and all, but man, I, you shouldn't need to contact customer service with every single purchase. Now, if you wanna see a company that's even worse than DK Woody's here, uh, check out the video on the screen right now. So I played around with this DS Lite for a while and we do indeed have a problem as I suspected. So like I showed you, we do have some yellow discoloration here at the top and I think there's a little bit down here, but it's hard to tell. I'll show some photos on the screen. Now, the biggest difference here is the brightness. Like you can clearly see this one's from DK Oldies. This is a DS Lite I have. And this is the other one from DK Oldies. And you can clearly see the brightness on this one is just like way darker than these two. So that's the biggest thing here. Like look at that. Look how bright that screen is right there. Let me just show you so you can see these are two different DS lights, and this one right here is from, from DK Oldies. Now, let me uh, just confirm to you that we are on the brightest screen on both of them. So, it's a fair comparison, and yeah, so that that is an issue. But let's go ahead and try out a DS Lite game or a DS game on this DS Lite and just make sure that works. All right, so clearly this game is working. Let's go ahead and turn it off and try out a Game Boy Advance game. All right, Game Boy Advance game is working as well. You can barely see it on the screen because of how dark it is. And man, that's just so disappointing. Every time I buy something from them, there's something wrong, either non-refurbished, not working, issues it's just like every time man but i'm gonna send them an email and get a return on this hopefully and let's go ahead and take these consoles apart and see what they look like on the inside so we'll start by opening up the guitar here one and honestly man i don't even think i'm gonna open up the white one because i don't want them to give me any crap for the warranty sticker being gone i know that that doesn't actually void the warranty but uh, you know they might say something like oh you opened it up and messed up the screen i don't know i'm just not gonna mess with this so let's go ahead and uh <laughs> do the honors here and peel this uh, warranty sticker off with the black one bang man that leaves some that leaves some nasty residue behind there. Got the battery out and it looks like it's OEM, so that's good to see. And something I just noticed here is the uh, the water damage ticker appears to be activated right there. As you can see, it's like basically full pink. <laughs> so we're down to the PCB now. And the good thing is this liquid indicator is not lit up, so that's good to see. Looks like the water did not seep down here. Now, there is some residue there. It doesn't really matter because it doesn't seem to have affected, it, have affected anything. Now, taking a look at the top piece here, it's clearly... Uh, pretty grimy around the edges. You got some grime in there. I'm not surprised they didn't open it up and clean it, but I think for 120 bucks, they probably should. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's what would be expected here. Now, I decided to open up the uh, at least the battery compartment on the white one. And this one also has the liquid indicator lit up, which is interesting to see. <laughs> All right, yeah, so my DS Lite is fine. Here on the right is mine. The left is D DK Oldies. This one, the liquid indicator is not lit up. That one is. Um, so it's kind of odd that both of the ones from DK Oldies are lit up. I guess maybe some sort of liquid they're using to, to clean it is leaking down in there and doing that. Or we just happen to get two uh, consoles that had the, the liquid that leaked down there. Also, I changed my mind. I am going to open up this DS Lite, this white one. Um, if they don't believe me that I didn't mess it up, I'll just send them the video and show them that it was messed up before I open it up. Inside is actually does not look as bad as I thought it would. But like, again, what I was talking about here is if all they had done is open this up, they could have cleaned this grime around the edges uh, because it was pretty grimy. And it's and like I said, it's pretty well known that most white DSs get very grimy around the edge. So all you got to do is open it up use some isopropyl alcohol and a q-tip and clean that up so getting down to the board on the white one it does look pretty good no issues there it's just you know a little bit grimy around this one now uh, obviously the main issue here is the the reduced brightness on the white one with the yellowing screen um the ds Lite, uh, the, the guitar hero ds Lite had a hinge that was like a little bit iffy but again i don't expect them to replace that i think i just think it'll have to be replaced under warranty at some point now uh thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed the video of course as always it seems that something happens every time and by the way i will have one more dk Oldies video tomorrow on a refurbished ps3 that i bought from them like a while back i haven't opened it up yet so i don't know what kind of condition it's going to be in but we're gonna find out tomorrow so thanks for watching guys and i'll see you next time I bought a 60 gigabyte backwards compatible PS3 from DK Oldies for $350 and in this video we're going to take an in-depth look at it and see if it was actually refurbished this time. So here's the box it came in. As you can see it's clearly from DKOldies.com. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. Got the classic packing peanuts which I'm not a huge fan of. So here's the packing slip. We got a few things here. First of all, I bought Strike Force Bowling for the PS2 since this is a backwards compatible it should be able to play PS2 games. I bought a PS3 FET 60 gig system player pack reverse compatible i still don't know why they call it reverse compatible instead of packers compatible but whatever same thing also one thing to note is they call it good condition which is a little bit surprising because there's not very many 
good condition three ps3s out there because of how easily they get scratches i ordered this on back in wow it was back in january when i ordered this so it's been quite a while since i ordered this console all right so real quick i want to show you their website because it looks like they've made a few changes since i uh, last purchased this system so first of all you can see we're on the 60 gig reverse compatible page uh, for 350 which i think is about the same price that i paid for it originally um, the first thing i noticed is it says good system versus acceptable so it looks like they've changed their terminology from cosmetically flawed to acceptable which is interesting i'm not sure why they did that the other thing i noticed is they have a little question mark next to refurbished and quality so you can see like a description of their products which i i don't remember seeing this in the past but like if you go through here you can see their entire process apparently of what they do for each console now the main things to note here are the fact that they say they do blow out every single console they also say if they can't blow it out they'll clean it by hand they even come down here and say replace thermal paste if needed so uh, obviously this is a new page that i don't remember seeing in the past but uh just interesting to see now let's go ahead and take the console out of the box and see what's inside of here and what do you know we got a double shock three no surprise there man <laughs> I, I'm not too surprised because this is back in January when they were, you know, I guess they didn't know that you couldn't play PS2 games on a PS3 with a Double Shock 3, but like still, they shouldn't be sending those out, obviously. We got our power cord, of course, our game down here. We got Strike Force Bowling for PS2, and game looks pretty good. And <laughs> let's see if we can sift through these packing peanuts and pull the console out. Man, I, this is why I don't like packing peanuts, they go everywhere. There's our HDMI cable, by the way. <laughs> now I gotta clean all these up. All right, I guess we'll just have to live with the packing peanuts for now. Let's go ahead and take this console out. Oh my goodness. Good condition is a questionable assessment of that console. Uh, first of all, there's some bubble wrap marks, which is, that's fine. That, that happens with bubble wrap sometimes. But there's some like giant swirl marks on this, clearly from some abrasive. They clearly use magic eraser on this. Let, let me just say that, put it that way. Let's, let's zoom in and take a closer look at it. So this PS3 is like straight up GameStop style. Like if you're familiar, GameStop takes Magic Eraser to all their consoles and basically destroys the glossy finish of it. In case you don't know, Magic Eraser is abrasive. So when you wipe down a console, it leaves tons of little, little micro scratches, which you can see all over the console here. Going to the front, kind of the same thing um, on this flap right here. And uh, even on this little part right here. And flipping over to the bottom, doesn't look like they used Magic Eraser, but it looks extremely beat up. Now flipping over to the back, I think this is actually probably the best side because it appears they did not use magic eraser here i go into this side we've got our classic uh dk audi's warranty sticker there and uh, again just scratches all over it so i just want to reiterate here how bad it is to call this a good condition console i mean using a magic eraser on a glossy console is just a terrible idea because of all, all the scratches it leaves behind and honestly i'm a bit surprised here because although dk audi's clearly doesn't clean out the inside of consoles uh, the outside of most consoles I've received from them have been in solid condition. Uh, but anyways, the takeaway here is that you really should not be using Magic Eraser on your consoles. So one thing I want to do real quick is take the hard drive out and just make sure it's 60 gigs. All right, so it is 60 gigs and uh, it's not quite as filthy as... <laughs> if you guys remember the Desert PS3 when I pulled out the hard drive, that was my first like evidence at a dirty PS3. That one, that hard drive is a little bit dirty, but not nearly as bad as the Desert PS3. But of course, we'll open up this console later and see what it looks on the, like on the inside. Let's go ahead and plug it in now and see if it works. All right, guys, so I have the console plugged in. A couple more things to discuss real quick, though, before we turn it on. Um, first of all, uh, I just noticed they forgot my USB cord, so I had to get my own. It's a minor thing, but, like, man, it's always something. And uh, I, I did, t I tore through the packaging, couldn't find it, so it's not there. They didn't send it. Uh, I also op opened up this DoubleShock 3. I kind of debated just leaving it in the packaging because it's not a good controller, but I wanted to kind of discuss how these old-school controllers are not good. They're, like, clearly made to be as cheap as possible, like, price wise and um quality wise which is like i guess it fits a portion of the market but i would not recommend them if you want a great experience and it's funny because after my last dk oldies video on the ps4 a couple months ago a uh, rep from old school actually emailed me the next day and kind of was not happy that i kind of ripped into the old school controllers that's a whole nother story though but let's go ahead and turn this console on and see if it works so flip the switch on the back first got a red light hit the power button should turn on any free games? Nope. <laughs> so I got this console set up and onto the home screen and clearly they factory reset this console here, which is good to see because the last one they sent me was a PS4 that was not factory reset. Still had somebody's gamer tag on there. All right, we're on 4.5. Oh, That's a little bit old, not too old, but a little bit old. Now let's go ahead and start out with a PS1 game <laughs> with my nice broken disc. This is, this is just a random game I have. Dukes of Hazard. I don't even know why I have this. All right, so it does accept discs. Test number one, that's good to see. There it is, PlayStation format disc. Got to create our internal memory card. All right, so we're on the PS1 game now. And one thing to mention is that this uh, the third-party controllers do work on PS1 games and not PS2 games, which I'll show you in a minute. And something else to mention is the fact that this console was on fan level number three uh, on the home screen. It's still on fan level number three on the PS1 game, but 
that's a uh, <laughs> it was ramping up pretty hard just for being on the home screen for like 15 minutes now one more thing to mention along with the fan speed is the fact that this is a ceh a01 which has the actual ps2 hardware inside like it has the leg legitimate chip that runs the ps2 games instead of just emulation uh, which makes this console the hottest ps3 of all of them so it makes sense why the fans would ramp up uh, but again it's, it's not good for it to be on fan level 3 on just the home screen so i played the ps1 game for like five minutes and it worked no you know no problem so we're trying to boot up a ps2 game now and of course this is where we have issues because the ps2 game seems to work fine like it's loading up but uh, we can't use the double shock 3 because it's a third party controller and if in case you didn't know you can't use third party controllers on a backwards compatible ps3 to play ps2 games so that's an issue that they're sending these out let me find my own dual shock 3 and plug it in and use that so guys this game is kind of funny I, i've never actually played it but it reminds me of a time back in the early 2000s when there were so many different types of games uh, like between the Dreamcast, the, the Xbox, PS2, GameCube, and just like all of the developers and publishers that were putting out games, you know, you got multiple, there were probably multiple bowling games. And like, there's, there's no bowling games on the PS5 nowadays, like it's just a, a random game. But, uh, you know, I kind of miss those days and uh, it's kind of sad to see, but this game's working fine. Let's go back to the main menu and try to PS3 game. So just a clarification on the rant I just did here. Uh, there are actually more games being made nowadays versus the PS2 days because of all the indie games that are released. But I said what I said for two reasons. Now, first of all, nostalgia. And, you know, those nostalgia glasses always make it seem like the old games and consoles were better than the new games and consoles, uh, whether they actually were or not. Now, second, uh, I'm mainly referring to sports games here because that's what I played the most as a kid. For example, back in the early 2000s, if you wanted to play a football game, you got to choose from Madden, NCAA football, NFL Street, NFL 2K, and so on. Uh, but nowadays, you get Madden, and that's it. So I'm playing Modern Warfare 2 now, and I'm just now noticing that the heat coming out the back is like, there's not much heat, which means that the thermal paste is not doing much. Of course, I'm not surprised they didn't replace it, but we'll, we'll take a look at it soon. But let me, I'm going to play this for a little while. All right, so you can see here that clearly the PS3 game is working. I've been playing for like 30 minutes, and it's, you know, no problem. Uh, now, before I open this console up, I have something cool I want to show you. I recently bought this thermal camera, and here I'm comparing the thermals of the A01 PS3 from DK Audis to another E01 PS3 that I have that was cleaned out and had thermal paste replaced. Now, clearly this is a flawed experiment because I'm using two different model PS3s and different PS3 games, but I still think it's interesting to look at. I mean, this is the A01 PS3, and you can see the heat coming out the back is close to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, and on top where the power supply is, you can you know clearly see the outline there. Uh, it's about 91 degrees. Now moving on to the E01, uh, the heat out the back is 110 degrees and the power supply is about 81. So overall, everything here is about 10 degrees cooler than the A01 PS3 from uh, DK Oldies. Now for reasons I'm not gonna get into in this video, you shouldn't take these thermal temperatures as exact, but it's, it's a good comparison tool. I really can't give you any clear conclusions here since this is a flawed experiment, but let me know down below in the comments what your thoughts are. So let's go ahead and open this console up and you know, see if it's been cleaned out, see if thermal paste has been replaced, that sort of thing. Um, I guess it's probably not, but maybe they'll surprise us. And let's go ahead and just start here by taking off that classic uh, warranty sticker. Bop. All right, top cover is off and it's a little bit dusty, but not too bad. Now, let's go ahead and take all these screws out and get down to the insides. So a couple thoughts right off the bat. Uh, first of all, we only have six screws. There should be seven. Uh, there was a missing screw there, which is not a big deal, but it tells us that somebody has been in here at some point, whether it was DK Odys or somebody before. I don't know. And uh, also these screws were tightened down like pretty tight. And I mean, the screws weren't terribly tight, but they were definitely tighter than factory. So taking this top cover off, uh, obviously it has not been cleaned out by DK Audis because there's just, you know, piles of dust in here. Uh, of course, it's not nearly as bad as the Desert PS3, but I can, I can make a smiley face and will make a smiley face as you can see there. And then coming down here, it's not terrible, but you can definitely tell it hasn't been cleaned out recently. And I know some people are gonna comment down below and say, well, you waited five months and left it in a box to open it up. So of course it's gonna be dust. And, that's just not how dust works. This was uh, wrapped up in bubble wrap, sealed in a package. Um, you would not have dust on the inside of this cover right here if it was uh, if it was from the package. And the outside was not dusty, so I rest my case. Now, something else here that's interesting to know is this power supply is like one of the OG power supplies. So you found it in the A01, the B01, and the E01, which are all backwards compatible. So it makes sense that we see this here. Uh, now, the problem with it is it's the least efficient, has the highest power draw, and therefore runs the hottest. So it makes this console more prone to failure because you got to push out more, more heat and that sort of thing. So a lot of times people like to swap this power supply out with a slightly newer version. Now, it doesn't really matter here because I didn't expect them to swap it out, but just uh, something interesting to note. Another thing to note here that I find kind of funny is somebody actually wrote in here the S for small screw right there, another S for another small screw there. I'm just gonna, you know, another confirmation this console was open in the past. All right, so time for this reveal. Oh yeah, still pretty dang dusty down there. It's, it's turning into a desert PS3. Still not still not quite that level, but it's it's getting there. So this console is dirty, but I'm gonna play a clip right here of the, the desert PS3 from a few months ago so you can remember just how filthy the desert PS3 was. All right, here we go, and the big reveal. Oh man, that is amazing. 
man, DK Williams really outdid themselves this time. This is wow. Yeah, this bottom piece is even wow. <laughs> it looks like a desert. <laughs> this was four hundred dollars, guys. We got a pretty dusty fan and stuff. So uh, let me put that to. The, oh wait, hold on. Got the, those clumps of dirt and dust on the front there. Now let's take this all the way apart and take a look at the thermal paste. And of course, I ran into a strip screw as well. Able to get it out with needle nose pliers, but it's, you know, it's always something. So this is interesting. I see some liquid on the board right here. Almost looks like somebody spilled like coke in here, but that's weird because I don't think it would be isolated to that one spot. Uh, maybe it's some kind of flux, like somebody was doing a repair. I do see a few components there where it looks like somebody might have worked on them. So maybe that's flux. I don't know. Let's just keep going. All right, got the board popped off. Let's go ahead and look at this thermal paste. Very excited to see how it looks. Three, two, one and ew now hmm is that oem thermal paste i think it is it looks white it looks like it has the same kind of signature that it usually has but there is a chance that somebody came in here at some point and replaced it because we saw we saw somebody came in here and did something um now the other thing i noticed here is this chip down here has a lot of heat uh, you probably can't see it but i'll take a picture but it's got a lot of like it's got a huge heat rink there let me just take this off and look at it all right so this chip right here is the emotion engine and this is what runs the ps2 games on this a01 ps3 now as you can see it has this like a uh, heat ring here i'm not sure if that's typical because it's been quite a while since i've opened up an a01 ps3 and of course the e01 does not have this chip because it's just emulation yeah guys so clearly this console was not refurbished i mean that's what we expected but it's still interesting to open these up and see what kind of condition they're sent in now honestly the most surprising thing here is that they pulled a gamestop and and did a complete magic erasing job of the outside of the console like i i'm i'm kind of surprised they called that good condition because that thing is scratched like crazy it does not look good and uh yeah let me know down below what you guys think about this console thanks for watching guys and i'll see you next time So DKLD sent us a replacement DS for that one from a few weeks back that had some problems. And in this video, we're going to open it up, see what it looks like, see what condition it's in, and see if it's actually like refurbished and in working order this time. All right, so you probably got, got two questions right off the bat. First of all, who the heck is this guy? This isn't Jacob. Uh, I'm Danny, the editor. Nice to meet you. Uh, in case it's your first time seeing me, I've been in a few videos now, but um, I figured it, it'd actually be a good idea for me to do this video. First of all, second channel, you know. Let's, let's have some fun. Let's do something different. I'll do the video for once. Uh, also, I'm actually the one who's been, um, for the past while now, uh, we've been getting DK Oldies orders for, uh, for a few different addresses. You know, we're playing the, the sneaky game with it, but I, I did a few, and this is one of them. This, uh, this DS is an, is an order I placed, uh, so I did the return and everything. So it would only made sense that, hey, why not try doing the unboxing uh, <laughs> myself and see how it goes. And then the uh, other question you probably have is like, which DS was this? This was the one, um, if you remember, we did that video with two DS uh, lights, uh, the Guitar Hero one and a white one. And the white one had some weird color issues where like the top screen had some discoloration on it and both screens had some, some dimness going on. They weren't getting up to the peak brightness that they should be getting to. Now, immediately what's interesting about this, right, uh, is DK Oldie's customer service, right? We talked about this in the past. It's come up a few times. Notably, the last time it, it was really a big deal was when we had to get that refurbished PS3, the, the Desert PS3. We sent that back. Uh, they sent us a refurbished console back, and it was like okay, but clearly wasn't open or refurbished. Now, the thing about that is that the customer service on their end, it really is very good. That is the one good thing about DK Oldies compared to other companies that we've seen. When I emailed them about that, the issues we were having with that DS Lite, they pretty much instantly got back with the replacement one that I have here. Um, they sent me the, the tracking info for that before they even replied to my email. Like, so their customer service really is very good. They really like, they don't ask any questions. They just, you know, they, they honor all return requests or replacement requests. And that part of them is pretty good. I, you know, I've, I've encountered other issues with them, but that's a, that's a story for another time. But this, this is actually like pretty nice. Uh, they did ask me ultimately, I'll show the email on screen. They did ask me ultimately like, Hey, what was the problem exactly? I didn't get back to it just cause it was hard to even capture on camera. It honestly would be easier for them if they just saw it in person. It, it's very obvious when you compare it to another DS, what the problem is, but you know, if you're inexperienced and maybe it was like the only DS you had around, maybe you wouldn't realize what the issue was, but like you're supposed to be DK oldies getting a crap ton of consoles in. You probably see a bunch of DS lights. You think you would notice a problem pretty quickly, but you know. We'll let them go this time. Let's go ahead and open the uh, box up and see what they sent us. All right, I got the box cut open. Let's go ahead and see what we got in here. All right, we got two things here. Just a little piece of paper that says what they 
uh, through in the box. And then I have a return label here that I won't show the address for obviously, but this is what I will end up putting on the box that the original DS came in. I'll just slap that on and send it back to him. All right, getting to the meat of this thing. We got power supply or charger, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, it looks like a actual OEM charger. I don't see any reason to think that it's like a third party one or anything. And then of course we have the console itself. There was nothing else in the box. Let's go ahead and unwrap it. Yeah, once again, no tape. Gotta love that. All right, I have the DS here. First impressions, it's not too bad. It's a little yellow. Um, <laughs> it makes me laugh every time. The DK Oldies warranty sticker. It's a little yellow and ooh, immediately I can tell the hinge is a little uh, not great because it's like, I don't know if you can see that, but it's, <laughs> it's kind of already opening up on me. Usually uh, the DS lights kind of kind of stay closed relatively nice. Uh, before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and grab the uh, the Guitar Hero DS. I, I already have the other white one packaged up so I can get that going, but I'm, I'm gonna grab the Guitar Hero one just so we have like a reference point because that one, the screens on it and everything on it was pretty average, I would say. Anyways, uh, here on the top, it looks fine. Just a bit of scratching, some fingerprints, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's Yeah, the main thing is just that it's yellow. You can see it, it's pretty yellow here on the shoulder buttons especially, but it's not too bad. It's really not the end of the world. Uh, stylus is OEM and is in okay condition. Actually, that's kind of shocking. Let's see what the dust cover looks like. Looks fine to me. I don't see anything that's like immediately noteworthy about it. Got a bit of a crack right there. A few little marks right there. So it was probably kind of dropped right there at some point or just kind of hit right there. These things are really very fragile. So it doesn't surprise me that it got a bit, of, a bit beat up over time. But really this for a white DS Lite, this is, this is not too bad. All right, let's go ahead and open it up. See what we got going on in here. Doesn't look too bad. Let me give it a closer look. Yeah, it actually looks pretty solid in here. Um, screens, you probably won't be able to see that on camera, but the screens have a bit of scratching, bit of smudginess on them, but really like, I don't know if I would call this like good condition because I, I don't know, I feel like I feel like a lot of these white DS lights really just look like this over time, but this is, this seems decent. I wouldn't be uh, disappointed. Like just first impression, I would not be disappointed. Now, uh, maybe maybe for like the $120 or whatever he originally paid for this console, I, I would be a little more disappointed in this condition, but... I don't know. It's not it's not anything like significantly below average for a white DS Lite. The hinge though is like really weird. It kind of feels like it was replaced. So first off, you might be able to kind of see that there, right? Like that's a lot of wobble, a lot of play in that. I mean, again, there's there's usually a little bit of play and actually the Guitar Hero DS Lite kind of has a similar level of play, but this one this one feels much more uh sturdy and it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's going to like move on me and just listen to like the sound. I would say that's, you know, average for DS Lite. This one, this one's really weird. It, so it sounds like I'm cracking a bone. <laughs> that's pretty rough. So it kind of it kind of feels like it was maybe replaced, which isn't inherently an issue. It, it does stay in place. It just it really it really wants to wobble around. First impression of the buttons, they feel fine. Nothing uh, stands out about them. They all feel pretty clicky and responsive. All right, let's go ahead and turn it on. It does have power. Nice. Looks like it was factory reset. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the setup stuff and give it a, a good first impression, good test with the touchscreen and everything, go through, make sure everything's working the way you would expect. So obviously the first and most important thing we want to check out here are the screens. And I will say like right off the bat, it kind of is giving me similar vibes to the, to the other one. I don't know about you guys. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it just looks darker and there's something there's something different about it where it's got like a a hint of pinkness to it like pink or just like different colors to it than, than this one this one just looks crisp and, and and clear and pretty bright and this one just doesn't doesn't look the same it almost makes me wonder like is this like a model issue like did different models of the ds light have different screens in them or something so i can't really see the exact model number because it's it seems to have come off at some point on the white one as opposed to this uh, guitar hero one you can see the exact like barcode model number right there but they both you know in the writing here and here they both seem to be the same baseline model of DS Lite there might be some variation but I, I don't see like a manufacturer date on there or anything that would indicate like you know the Guitar Hero one is like significantly newer or something than the DS Lite it is possible though that all these white DS Lites maybe just have this problem now even then uh, this one this DS Lite here the white one doesn't look as bad as the original one they sent us because the discoloration isn't really there it's more just like there's kind of shades or, that are different and the, co the color isn't like consistent across the whole screen on this white DS Lite it must just have like a different 
screen in it than maybe the other models of DS Lite, or maybe this white one and the other white one just have the similar issue with it. But I don't, either way, this one does definitely look better than the old one. So I'm not really sure what to make of this. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys know any more information about these different types of screens and stuff, or if you guys have noticed anything. Uh, that I'm seeing here with the white DS Lite or maybe the early model DS Lights in general. Uh, let's go ahead and test the game. Let's make sure it goes in the slot properly. Ooh. Ooh, that was crunchy. What the? Hold on. Ooh, I don't know if you guys can hear that. Let me let me put that up against the mic. Ooh. <laughs> let me just make sure I'm not crazy. I'm going to put it in the, uh, the Guitar Hero one. Hold on, hold on. That's what a normal <laughs> car just slot would, would feel like, I would think. Oh, yeah, that's crunchy. I don't, it kind of sounds like it's like hitting up against something, but I don't know. I guess as long as it reads the game, it's fine, but that does not sound right to me. There it is. It showed up no problem. Let's go ahead and play. Man, this takes me back. I haven't played this game in years. This is definitely the game I played the most when I was when I was a kid with uh, my, uh, my DS. But yeah, it seems to be working perfectly fine. No issues to really note of. All the, the buttons seem to be functioning the way you would think they would. Let's go ahead and try out a Game Boy Advance game. Now I'm kind of curious if this one's going to make a weird sound too. Nope, that was normal. Oh, I, I just noticed too, like, I don't, I don't know if I saw this earlier. I don't think I did, but there's a, uh, let me see if I can show up in the camera, but there's a crack next to the right shoulder button. You might, you might see that there. And there's another one kind of on the side. So yeah. The corner right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can definitely see that. All right. It's not the end of the world, but again, for a $120 DS Lite, you would really think that, you know, you'd be getting a better condition console, but you know, you can't win them all, I guess, with DK oldies game popped up no problem all right the game seems to be working just fine let's go ahead and shut it off let's go ahead and open the console up and see just how dirty this thing is on the inside because uh i don't know man the outside first impressions are not so solid oh yeah goopy got the battery cover open let's go ahead and pop this off and it looks like an oem battery yep definitely oem i don't really see any signs of swelling or anything i'm really not sure if an oem battery at this point from a DS Lite is a good thing. <laughs> I don't know how old these are or how long they're really meant to last, but I, it is there. All right, pretty sure I got all the screws out. Let's go ahead and pop it open. All right, I got it off. Let's go ahead and look at the back side of this. And I'll say it looks pretty solid. I mean, there's some, I see some gunk right there that should probably be cleaned off, but really there's not too much to write home about. It looks pretty decent here, actually. And then the board here actually looks really good, I'd say. Um, again, there's there's definitely some things that probably should be wiped off. Like, I don't know. I don't know if these fingerprints on the... Yeah, th those definitely would come off if you wiped them down. But <laughs> So those should probably come off. And there's definitely some... I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there, there's definitely some gunk all along the edges like there tends to be on these portable consoles uh, that probably should have been wiped off if it was open. So I, I don't know if they opened it, cleaned it. If they, if they opened and cleaned it, they definitely didn't do a great job. At this point, I could probably open it up a little farther to see like if I could figure out what's going on with the, the cartridge slot reader or the hinges or whatever, but I, I, I think this is this is more than enough to prove that they really didn't do uh, much of anything to this DS. Oh, I'm actually just now noticing too, I, I think this is somewhat common with DSs, but you can kind of see that there's a bit of a bend as well to the, the top portion here, especially right here, it looks like there's a pretty significant bend in the casing. So that might be the source of our issues here with the cartridge slot or the hinge and, 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 and whatnot. Uh, I'm not really sure though, but either way, uh, I think that's going to do it for this video. Um, is it worth the price? <laughs> definitely not. We've definitely established that. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, you may or may not see more of me. This is kind of a special little one-off thing we're trying out. If you really want to see me do more... Uh, you know, out there consoles, maybe consoles that don't belong on the main channel. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll live here on the, on the second channel for a little while. Make sure to let me know if you, you don't hate my voice or anything significant like that. I mean, if you do hate my voice, I mean, I'll, I'll only, I'll only take it a little bit personally and, um, cry a little in the corner, but you know, I'll get over it I, yeah, probably. So make sure to be honest in the comments and don't let that dissuade you be as mean as possible. But anyway, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And I may or may not see you next time. Well guys, it looks like DK Audis is back and it all started a few days ago when a, uh, one of my Twitter followers sent me a link to a post they made on YouTube and Facebook about uh, their warranty and refurbishing policy and it was like a little bit strange at first, then they kept almost reposting the same thing daily for four days in a row and just a few minutes ago they posted a short about refurbishing consoles. So let's just start there and let's talk about it. Alright, so here's a short. 
you all actually refurbish them? Because there have been some videos posted that show that that's not always the case. A little while ago on YouTube, some people had bought our consoles and they just weren't happy with them. One of the things they were finding, in some cases, the insides were dirty. <laughs> so we're starting off strong here. This might be the first time Joey and DK Audius have actually acknowledged that, maybe like the second time, that, that they've acknowledged that YouTubers were making videos about their consoles being dirty and non-refurbished. And eight months later, they're magically just talking about it. Like, very strange behind the scenes things going on here. We'll get into it later. Let's just keep going. So we completely revamped our refurbishing process. Every console and every handheld gets opened up and is thoroughly cleaned. Everything is fully tested, and if anything's not working, it's fixed or replaced. Capacitors will be checked and replaced if needed, and new thermal paste is applied. Now notice here that they talk about capacitors and thermal paste after they talk about fixing consoles, because I think there's a little caveat here that we'll delve into once we get into their, their new, new policy they posted on their website, because it's a little, I feel like it, I can't tell what's going on here. We'll read into it and I'll, I'll uh, tell you my thoughts, but I'm not sure if they're actually replacing thermal paste and checking capacitors in all of the consoles. I think it might only be the ones they're fixing. We'll get into that, but let's just keep watching. And the consoles come with stickers that show exactly what was done. Our refurbishing process is constantly evolving to meet the needs of our customers. We want you to feel comfortable knowing you'll get a quality product from DK Oldies and everything we sell is backed by our one year warranty. I don't even know what to say, man. This is a, uh, this is wild stuff. Now, if they are actually fully refurbishing, replacing thermal paste on all consoles, cleaning out all consoles, like great for them. I'm glad we made an impact and I'm glad the customers that are buying stuff from them are getting decent consoles now, but I'm not convinced yet. So guys, first of all, let's start here. Let me know down below, should I buy some consoles from them? I've been, I've been thinking about this for a few days now. I really don't want to spend any more money with them, but if you guys want to see it, let me know. I'll probably buy, you know, a PS3, a 360, OG Xbox, basically everything I've bought in the past, buy it all again, do it in a video, and see if they're actually refurbishing now. Well, let's, let's first start here by looking at these comments. Now, first comment is not gonna lie, the fact that you guys addressed this and fixed the problem is amazing. Now, let's hold on a minute. Nobody has actually bought a console from them after this process and seen if it's clean and refurbished yet. Um, but it, it, yes, it is a good step in the right direction that they are maybe refurbishing consoles now. Um, but guys, let's just start back. Let's step back to where this started a few days ago when things started getting weird. And like the first day, I told you the Twitter followers sent me their, their first post a few days ago. I think it was like three or four days ago. And it was like a little bit strange. Let me just show it to you. And uh, yeah, so it says, DK Audio's controversy. Everyone was slash is covered under our one year warranty. We always listen to all our cost customer feedback and improve. Check out our new and evolved refurbishment process, link below. So this in and of itself was not a big deal. It's kind of like, okay, maybe they published something new and they posted about it. So I was like, all right, uh, interesting, but I'll, I'll keep an eye on it. And then sure enough, next day, they post basically the same thing. Our warranty is always there to protect every purchase and our, our refurbishment process is always evolving and improving. We take all feedback and continue to improve our processes. And then they link their refurbishing process. Again, exact same link. Strange, two days in a row, but still like two days in a row is not a, nothing too crazy. Now, third day in a row is where I was like, okay, something, something is definitely up here. And they say, at DK Oldies, our focus is on quality products with a one-year warranty and exceptional customer service. While our approach may result in slightly higher prices, we're committed to delivering value and peace of mind to our customers. We're proud of the close to 100 employees who work hard to serve our community. Um, so again, they're saying almost the exact same thing, but they throw a couple more tidbits in here. First of all, they talk about their slightly higher prices, which, uh, come on now, guys, slightly higher? Let's get real here. Let's, uh, let me just do a little comparison for you here. Um, one in particular that I've seen recently is a, a PSP. So if you go to their website, go to the PSP 3000, which is the most recent PSP, excluding the PSP Go, you get a good system for 280, which good system is that, <laughs> I don't know why you would want to buy an acceptable handheld because that, that to me screams scratches all over the screen, which you don't want, obviously. Then you go to eBay. Let's just go ahead and see what a, a standard PSP 3000 goes for on eBay. Now, uh, one of the first listings you see here is eBay refurbished. I don't know anything about this, but uh, assuming it's from a, somewhat reputable seller, you know, maybe as reputable as DK Audis. Um, they have 3,000 feedback, and if you go to PSP 3000 and you go to Piano Black, it's $120. So for the exact same console you're getting, getting from DK Audis, it's more than double the price, more than double market value, and uh, you're saying your prices are slightly higher? Now, if you guys are actually doing a full refurbishment here and cleaning everything and making it like new, then sure, higher price is great. Like, I, I'm all for that, but if it's still like it was the last time I bought like 10 consoles from them, yeah, that's not worth uh, almost triple market value. Like, come on here, guys. <laughs> and the second thing that pops up to me is close to 100 employees. So people have been talking about DK Audis being a, being a small business for, for years and small business with 100 employees, 
I don't think so. Like th these guys are a multi-million dollar company. I don't know how much their revenue is per year, but some numbers I've seen online are like 25 million, which I don't think is out of the stretch of the imagination considering um, they claim to ship out thousands of orders a day. But uh, just, just very interesting. And then, <laughs> so this is, this is funny. Now, they actually posted a fourth post, which is today, and I actually filmed a video a couple hours ago about these four posts before they made the short. So now I'm refilming the whole video because they made this, this short, which is kind of a game changer here to the whole. It's basically like four days of posts leading up to this short, which is essentially the, saying the same thing, but very interesting. But the, anyways, the fourth post they did is our goal is to continually enhance our refurbishment process. I'm not even gonna read it. It's just basically the same exact thing as the three days before. And uh, the other thing to note here is that something just seems off about these posts. They're very, they're very corporate, very, you know, lawyer-esque, like somebody is behind the scenes telling them exactly what to post so they don't get in trouble, which honestly would not be surprising. I mean, we, we saw a few months ago that uh, there was a DK, DK Audi's lawsuit with this whole refurbished thing. Um, very, just very strange things going on behind the scenes. We, I don't know what exactly what's going on, obviously, uh, but it just seems strange. And I've even seen comments saying like, hey, these responses seem almost like they were, came out of ChatGPT and like, not gonna lie, they, they look, uh, they look like chat GPT-esque, um, but let's look at some of these these comments here because so like, yeah, this guy right here, uh, Seth Carnes 8929 on the second post they made a few days ago, basically gave my exact thoughts. So something, something is obviously happening. You guys making posts like this out of the blue is out of character. And like, it is very strange because we talked about it, like they probably posted because of a new refurbishment process. But the other thing here, hold on. Wait, this is interesting. This photo, I looked at this refurbishment inspection process one hour ago and this photo was not here. It is now. Okay, oh, strange. Um, but we'll, we'll look through this and there's some interesting tidbits here in the uh, refurbishment process. But anyways, essentially back when I was buying consoles from them, they had absolutely no details about the refurbishment process except for on their on their channel they would post shorts saying like we open and clean every console and they would show the process which was clearly not done because of you guys have seen all the videos i've made uh everything was not open i think there was like one console that was actually open and that was just because it was repaired everything else was not opened uh, they were dirty especially the, the desert ps3 is just like the epitome of the dk always experience from from back in february and just wild stuff but let's go ahead and step into this refurbishment and inspection process and look at it and see if they've actually changed anything. I guess the, actually, the other thing I was gonna say is they, they actually posted a refurbishment process like a few months ago, um, but I think they've updated it since then, I'm assuming since they posted about it like four times in the last four days. But looking through here, the first thing they say is for every console to be considered in working condition, the following must apply and it's pretty standard stuff like it must turn it on and off, read games, all the standard stuff. So now next up here is where we really get into the meat and potatoes of this whole process. And it says every console goes through all steps of our detailed cleaning process listed below. It says opened, exposing the interior components of the console and dirt and debris uh, inside the console and inside the lid is blown out using air. That, that whole sentence seems odd, but basically they're saying they open and clean every console and blow it out. Um, if anything cannot be blown out, they clean it by hand. And then <laughs> this part gets me. They say rust discoloration and visual deficiencies are not included. So they're basically saying if you have rust in your console, it sucks for you. We're not dealing with it. Um, to me, it feels like they should, if there's a console that has rust in it, they, they have an eBay page. They should just go and sell it as a, like a one-off on eBay instead of giving their customers a rusty console, but that's just me. Um, now, consoles that have been previously repaired by DK Audis will be opened to the motherboard and all the components re-cleaned. Okay, so that all seems fairly normal, right? Now, this is the part where it gets interesting, confusing, and I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, but let's, let's read into it. So, it says, all consoles that are deemed as not functioning and go through our repair process are opened in order to troubleshoot and repair each component that is causing the console to not be functioning in its playable state. Once the console is repaired and is considered functioning, all components are assembled and will go back through the DKOD's testing process. And they basically list a bunch of stuff like clean the exterior shell, motherboard inspected, capacitors replaced, laser adjustment and thermal paste is removed and replaced. Now, what I don't understand here is, are these, you know, like, what is that, like 10 points? Are these 10 points done on every console or are they only done on the consoles that are deemed not working and they fix them? Because that's what it seems like to me. Like they, they show these three points right here that every console goes through these points and then only the consoles that are non-functioning go through these points. That's how it reads to me here, which seems like they're still basically doing the exact same thing they did uh, eight months ago where they only did a full, full refurbish if the console was broken. That's how it reads to me. Let me know down below what you think. Again, this kind of leads into, I guess I should buy some consoles maybe and, and see what they're doing. This almost seems like a thing where we're gonna have to buy some consoles something like once a year and just see if they've uh, updated the process, see if they're sticking with it. Uh, I don't know, the whole situation is here. here is just weird. I mean, it's been weird since it started. And the fact that they're like finally 
addressing it somewhat eight months later, it's just like mind blowing. And it's almost like, yeah, you bought a console from us before this kind of sucks for you. You didn't get a refurbished console, but yeah, we updated our process now. And so now you're getting a refurbished console, but again, we still don't know if it's actually refurbished. We'll have to check into that. Now, the funny part about this is you guys saw it on all, all this on YouTube. They actually posted like the same post. I don't know if they're exactly the same, but they did them on Facebook as well. And you know, you guys know Facebook, uh, just a, a wild place, especially for DK Oldies posts. About half the comments on, on Facebook, as it goes to YouTube as well on their posts, about half the comments are positive, like, wow, this is amazing. I can't believe you're doing this. And the other half are like questioning them and saying like, dude, I saw a video four months ago that had a, that you sent out a dirty console and that sort of thing. Um, now I have this one pulled up because I think this is interesting. Uh, it says, call me crazy, but wasn't this an issue that's been known for like a year or so now? Why so late to address the issue? And how can you be calling it a controversy when there's no video proof that you weren't refurbishing all of your product? You never apologize, blah, blah, blah. And they respond and say, we're not late. We've said this from the beginning, which is absolutely not true. Uh, we've always apologized to any customer that got some someone in poor condition. Our warranty has always been there and supported. We just listen to fixes, fixed issues in now and in the future. Nothing there has changed our refurbishing process has gotten better. So this this whole comment is like, they have not said this from, from the beginning. They clearly, if you go back to the old videos, you can clearly see they pushed everything under the rug anytime that something happened um, and basically said, yeah, those YouTubers are wrong. We refurbished all of our consoles. Like, do you guys remember the very first video they made that said, it was like, DK Audios refurbishes their consoles. That was after I had already unboxed and, and, and opened like, you know, I don't know, three, four, five consoles from them and they were all non-refurbished. And then they just clap back like, yeah, we do refurbish our consoles. So now they're like, they're just contradicting themselves the whole time here. And the funny part is this last comment, you can kind of see that they're getting back into their old commenting ways where they say, we've said this many, many times. It seems by all the response that we need to keep saying it. I just like, I can't believe that they're still in this mindset that like, they are not the ones in the wrong here. That they've been selling these consoles as refurbished for years and not been refurbishing, but they're... Uh, all these commenters are in the wrong for, for assuming they don't refurbish. And, but yeah, guys, just interesting stuff going on here. I do have some other just random comments pulled up um, that I want to show you and kind of talk about and, and just go, kind of go into the fact that they're still, like I said earlier, these seem very corporate responses like ChatGBT. Like this one, you can, I don't even know what their original comments was, but we appreciate your candid, candid feedback. We are sorry if our recent post to come across as defensive. That was in our attention. Our goal is to engage the community, community in a meaningful way. And it just like goes on. It's just all, all these words. It just it just seems automated, corporate lawyer. Now here's another one. Uh, we want to clear up any misunderstandings. Our focus is on providing genuine value and a great experience for our customers. If anyone has any concerns, contact us. Just, uh, just all the same stuff over and over again. And here's one of the guys that said, we want to clear the air, but we, we are using chat GPT for, for responses. Again, that's, I, yeah, I can't blame them. Um, this one is interesting. They say, we have seen a lot of videos from people who have never been a customer speak ill about us. Uh, views can go a long way for some channels. Some channels don't need them and hop on a bandwagon without any firsthand experience and just go based off of what people on the internet say. Now, I, I think when they talk about this, they're talking about there's a few YouTubers that basically after the Desert PS3 video came out, there were that's when it started getting like the controversy started getting really big. And I think a few of other, uh, you know, the really big YouTubers uh, saw that video and the other videos and, and, and talked about it. And I think that's what they're talking about here because clearly this is not me. Like I, I've purchased a bunch of consoles from them, so I have a bunch of firsthand experience, but that's just like an interesting take. It's kind of still going into the fact that they're blaming people on the internet for them not refurbishing consoles. Um, this is the same, I already showed you that one earlier, but there's just, there's just more here. They're all like corporate type of responses. Here's another one. <laughs> wow, you finally responded after six to eight months. And uh, we appreciate your feedback. We've been actively addressing concerns over the past few months and we'll continue to do so. Thank you for your patience and understanding. And it's just like, it's things like that where like maybe they are fixing the issue now, which is great, but what were you guys doing for the last eight months when you were sweeping under the rug and, and just basically claiming that, yeah, we do refurbish consoles. You guys are just wrong. Like, we're not going to forget that. You guys were just <laughs> claiming that you refurbished consoles back in January and February when you clearly weren't. And we're just doubling down on the fact that we were, we were wrong. And it's just, you know, same thing over and over again. This one is funny. Uh, this guy says, how about making a documentary on your refurbishing repair team? Could be pretty cool. And they respond back saying, a few videos showing them off is a great idea. Though we know some people will still claim everything we do is fake and just for shows. First of all, has anybody ever called the DK Audio's videos fake? I, I don't think there's anything fake about what they do, but the just for show thing is for sure. Like, uh, I mean, back in the day, they were showing all this refurbishing process and then we would buy console and see that it wasn't refurbished. So that was definitely just for show. I forgot about this one. This one is funny too. This latest updated refurbishment process was posted last winter and hasn't been, been in full effect since then. 
Joey and the team were afraid to show it or talk about it because of all the death threats to him and his team. Okay, so first of all, I don't want to get too much into the, into the death threat thing, but, uh, because I don't know how serious the one they got was, but if they're talking about the one they posted about, that was like well before the whole uh, refurbished controversy. So I don't know what that has to do with it, but I'll, I'll leave that out of this. Um, but the fact is they're saying that their this latest updated refurbishment process was posted last winter and been in full effect since then. W what are they considering winter? To me, winter means like when they say last winter, that sounds like last December, last January, something like that. Clearly it wasn't, in, in, clearly that was not in effect then. Cause that's when I was buying the consoles from them. And that was, uh, they weren't for refurbishing anything. Now maybe up in Pennsylvania, they have winter year round. like. I, I'm pretty sure the first time they posted any sort of refurbishment process was like April or May, which to me is clearly not winter. It seems like they're really trying to stretch it and be ambigu ambiguous here. Well, uh, I guess that's it. Uh, <laughs> just strange stuff coming out of here, out of the blue. Who knows, something's going on behind the scenes probably where they're, I don't know if they're lawyers telling them to say this or if they just randomly decided to post this. Who knows, guys, but let me know down below. Do you want me to see, do you want me to buy some more consoles from them and re review them, see if they're refurbishing them now? Um, I don't really want to spend that money, but if people are people want to see it, then I'll then I'll do it. Uh, but let me know down below. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. I bought 18 untested consoles from DK Oldies, and in this video, we're gonna unbox them, test them out, and see if you got a good deal. So here's the label, and clearly it is from DK Oldies, and in case you guys didn't know, they actually do sell stuff on eBay, usually like untested consoles, broken consoles, that sort of thing. So I found this lot, bought it, and here we are. Uh, we should just have a ton of random stuff in here. Here's the first one. It's one of the, so there's a bunch of like little mini consoles in here. We have the AT Games, or At Games, however you say it, Sega Genesis, console only. Uh, we have a bunch of those, plus just some other random things, so. Let's just keep pulling everything out. All right, next up we got these random retro duo controllers and then more of the Sega <laughs> Genesis things. <laughs> there are so many of these things. Got another Sega Genesis, another one here. This one's actually got a gray siding, mm, a little different. All right, here's an NES looking thing. I think it's one of the legit uh, NES mini consoles, but it's like completely faded on the, on the front. It's just yellow. It's not actually red anymore, which is kind of crazy to see. But then we also have this retro duo thing, which looks kind of like a newer third party kind of Super Nintendo playback machine. And next up we have another NES mini, which, oh, here we go. So this one, is clearly not a real NES mini console. It's a, uh, just as entertainment system, it feels like junk and has different uh, ports there. We'll talk about this in a second, but let's uh, keep pulling everything out. Oh yeah, down here we got another one of these knockoff consoles. I think we have some more, do we have more in here? We have, this is one of the Super Nintendos. Oh yeah, okay, okay. So this is actually, I think this is a legit, yeah it is. It's one of the uh, Super Nintendo mini consoles, but it's like the, uh, the European version which I actually think looks the best. And then next up we have uh, a real size Sega Genesis, but again, made by AT Games, at Games, however you say it. And then we have two more of these entertainment systems, which are clearly uh, knockoffs. And then last but not least, we have one more of these uh, Sega Genesis things down here. So I have everything out of the box. And last but not least, I wanna actually open up this uh, <laughs> mini game anniversary edition entertainment system with built-in 620 classic games and see what's inside of here. We have, oh wait, hold on, we got like an actual, that's not a legit controller, Never mind. I thought that was a legit controller for a second. We also have our AV cable, another controller in a Ziploc bag, and then the console itself in a Ziploc bag, which is clearly just another knockoff console. So guys, let's let's talk about this for a second. So when I looked at the eBay listing, I was like 95% sure there were some like knockoff NES mini consoles in there, which to me is not a big deal. Like I knew I was what I was getting. I didn't pay too much. I paid like 71 bucks for the entire thing. But the strange part here is that DK Audios is very like verbally against uh, knockoff consoles and knockoff games. They say it in a lot of their shorts, their videos, their Facebook posts and stuff. They say like, watch out for illegal games, watch out for knockoff games, watch out for knockoff consoles. I'll throw some actual screenshots on the screen of them talking about that stuff. And here they are selling knockoffs. Like they are, un to be fair, they're untested as is on eBay, but they call them themselves. They say it's illegal to sell these multiple times, but, but here they are, they're still selling them like they, they clearly looked at these and could tell they were knockoffs. Like it's not too hard to tell it's a knockoff. I mean, you have, you even had a real one in your lot right here, which clearly looks much different. They even have an article on their website posted about a month ago uh, that says, don't get scammed. Fake games are known to have tons of issues and really only exist to scam people, which that's an interesting statement, but games like this are everywhere, including some of the biggest retailers in the world. DK Audios not only never sells fakes, but they are always actively fighting against them. Now, I, I get that I bought an untested lot from eBay, but it was from their eBay page, which is synonymous with their DK Audio's website. It's just funny to me how adamant they are against this fake stuff. And they're 
here they are selling it on eBay. And then coming down a couple paragraphs, this one right here is really funny. Like it's describing the exact situation that I had with eBay with, with their listing. It says, at first glance on an auction website, uh, things can look promising. So AKA eBay, uh, you'll see tons of listings available for not a lot of money aka I paid 71 bucks and there's a high chance they're all counterfeit reproductions and that means they're illegal illegal fake games uh, so to be fair most of the stuff in this lot was not fake not knockoff but when you're including four fake consoles in there just I don't know man you get the point I, I, it was probably a slip up by an employee but when you're this adamant a about fake consoles, you, you gotta be more detailed about <laughs> and not let these fake consoles go out the door. I don't know, let me know down below what you guys think about that. I think that's a little bit sketchy how adamant they are against these consoles and here they are selling these like Chinese knockoffs with 620 built-in games like with just, it's not even just knockoff consoles, it's knockoff consoles with built-in games. And you know, I don't really have a problem with people buying these or selling these or using these. It's a cheap way to play games instead of buying the real thing, but and as long as you're like, as long as the seller tells you up front what you're buying, that's fine. So we're gonna start here with the 620 classic games and just see what it does. Uh, we'll click the power button and awesome, no power. All right, let's try that again with a different power brick. There we go, now we got power. Let's check out these 600 classic games and see what they included. All right, well this one's not outputting any video, so let's try another one of these little knockoff consoles and see what it does. This one is like the exact same thing, same ports and everything. Okay, yeah, that one's, that one's turning on. There we go, nice, sweet. So this is like the exact same console. I'll just plug my controller in here. And we got, <laughs> this is this is, might be one of the worst ones I've, the worst interfaces I've seen on one of these consoles. Uh, now, at least they're spelling things right. It says Ninja War Turtles 1 through 4. We got Contra, uh, Tiny Toon, Ninja, Ga <laughs> Ninja Gate, Gate In, instead of Gate In, that's funny. So it looks like, yeah, it looks like just tons of NES games. Oh, wait, they even have like the, the ROM hacks, like Mario 14. Let's go ahead and boot that up and see what it does. Yeah, there we go. Ninja Mario, my boy. And we got this like stuck A button here. It works, but it's kind of stuck. Great, controller broke, awesome. But yeah, so indeed there actually are 500 unique games on here, which is surprising. Most of the time when you buy these things, they have, they say like 4,001 and it has the same 100 games repeated a bunch of times. So this one's actually 500 unique games, but let's put all these to the side. These things are all like, you know, the same 501, whatever junk. And let's try out this, uh, I really wanna try out the Super Nintendo Classic right here. Again, this is like my favorite little form factor and it looks like it's in pretty good condition as well. Let's plug this in, see what it does. The console's plugged in. I also have this Super Nintendo Classic controller that's actually wireless. I'm, I'm gonna try it and see if it works. Hope it does, cause I don't have another one with me right now, but we'll turn this on. Yeah, we got life, let's go. Hey, there we go, and the controller works just fine. Oh, that's, that's nice. Okay, okay, so it uh, doesn't look like this has been modded, but it's still, this is a great console. It's got all the classic, not all the classic games, it's got a lot of classics. We got Super Mario RPG, we've got Super Mario Kart, got Super Mario World, uh, just the standard stuff, Super Punch-Out. Dude, I played Super Punch-Out for a while one time. That's a, that's a hard game. And you know, I'm actually kind of surprised DK Oldies doesn't sell these on their website. I mean, it's like a great classic console, maybe because it's the European version, but it clearly works perfectly fine on a US TV in the US, so I don't... I don't know, I would think they would sell these, maybe they just didn't have controllers for it or whatever. Yes, yeah, so I'm scrolling through every single game here and none of them have any save data. So it looks like this console was either not used or somebody booted this up and factory reset it, which would, somebody might have, but it's pretty surprising. Usually these consoles, people just dump them to the side. Like I said earlier, this kind of makes the lot because I paid 71 bucks total and this thing right here is worth like 70 plus on its own. We also have this other NES Mini here, or NES Classic that's uh, in the same vein as this, except it's an NES. Let's go ahead and turn this off. And I'm gonna try to plug into the, the NES Classic here and see if this works. Do we have power? Yep, we got power. Ooh, we got power on here. Yes. Let's go. This one's booted up as well. It doesn't look modded, but it, like, dude, I, I cannot believe this Super Nintendo, or I can't believe this NES Classic is yellowed just like a classic NES. I mean, to be fair, like that's, that's the authentic experience, but how did that happen? This is like the only NES classic I've seen that yellows like this, but whatever, let's keep testing this thing and just see how it runs. Yeah, scrolling through here, it looks like we have just all the games that originally came on it. Curious again, does this have any suspended data? Like did somebody refactor reset this one as well or, or what? Oh, whoa. We got one suspended game here on Super, on, on Super Mario Bros. I don't know, let's, let's boot that up and try out that suspended save point right here. Uh, yeah, it's probably like 10 seconds into the game. because This is right at the, oh. So I've now scrolled through every single game and haven't found any other suspended points. So this person <laughs> booted up the console, played Mario for 10 seconds, 10 minutes, whatever, and, and that was it. Or maybe somebody else tested it out. I don't know, but this console is fully working. And uh, again, like we've easily made our money back just from this console and this console here and, may, and, and then some. Uh, let's go ahead and test out some of these other random consoles they have here. I'm very curious how this 
AT Games Sega Genesis runs. I looked it up briefly and apparently it's got really poor emulation even when you put a cart in here because like it basically has built-in games here and you can put games in the cartridge slot here. Um, and the difference between this console and basically let's start here. So these two consoles right here are licensed by Nintendo, made by, by Nintendo, like just classic Nintendo. Uh, these Sega Genesis things are licensed by Sega, but they're made by obviously AT Games, so not made by Sega themselves. These things right here are just pure ripoffs of somebody in China who just decided to make a, a fake game console with a bunch of ROMs on it that are, this is the illegal part, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and plug in one of these AT Games Sega Genesis and just see what it does. So I finally got the thing plugged in. I, I had to go through like four different AV cables to find one that would actually fit in this plug here, which is like so deep, very strange, but let's go ahead and see if it turns on and it doesn't. Awesome. All right, guys, I've, I've made a huge mess on this table, but I finally, we're back in business. I finally found a legit Sega Genesis power supply and it fits, it works, and it does supply the correct power here. So let's go ahead and see if this works now. So I finally have this thing booted up and I'm not gonna lie, this looks just as bad as the like straight up knockoffs. What kind of menu is this? <laughs> On this specific console, the power button doesn't stick down. Oh man, let's, let's find another one. So my issue now is that the controller I have that came in the lot fits, but doesn't work. I also tried this other random controller, doesn't do anything, um, but I'm gonna just turn this thing off. Try to put a game in and see if, uh, see if the game works. I got this random RBI Baseball 4. I don't know if it'll just boot straight into this game or nope, it just boots into a black abyss. Great. Oh my goodness. The pins on this thing are so tight that my game was stuck in there. That's not the first time it's happened either on one of these, these consoles like this. I've done this on some Retron consoles where the pins got bent and uh, games got stuck. It, I don't know, forget about this. Let's, let's move on to one of these uh, Sega Genesis things right here and see what this does. Oh, there we go. Okay, I got this one turned on. And hey, this, this is a real menu. It's even called HD and the controller works, kind of. Some of the buttons work. Okay, well the controller is partially working. At least I can do something here. Oh, wow, they even have a special category for, say, for Sonic games. Not surprising considering Sonic, you know, it's Sonic. Oh, we got Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic 2, 3D Blast. Uh, a little bit of everything here. We got some oh, bonus games. Okay, air hockey, bomber. <laughs> what are these from? I don't know. Mr. Balls. What is that? But yeah, like not gonna lie, this is actually not bad. This is a whole lot better than that that little tiny Sega Genesis. Let's go ahead and try to boot up Sonic the Hedgehog and play and see what happens. Yeah, there we go. Okay, kind of hard to play when half of my D-pad doesn't work, but at least I can jump around. You also have this mini button right here, which takes you back to the menu. You also have this. Uh, kind of placebo effect. Placebo is not the right word, but it doesn't actually do anything. It's just here for cool looks. Uh, oh, you can even got a scan line filter. Hey, that's pretty cool. But yeah, glad to see one of these things works and this is actually pretty nice. It's got a you know micro USB input. It's got HDMI output. And let's go ahead and try to play the uh, Tengen game if I can get it out of this other Sega Genesis thingamajig. All right, turn this bad boy off. Plug the game in, turn it back on. Why is the console, I turned the console off and it's still on. This console is so weird, I just unplugged the power and it's still on. Well, I don't know, this game's not working. I guess it's just, uh, I cleaned it off too. I guess it's just, I don't know. If I find another Genesis game, I'll test this out. But let's go ahead and move on to the next console we have, which is this Retro Duo, which has a random rubber band around it for who knows what, I, I don't know, but let's plug it in and see if it works. So we got the Retro Duo plugged in and it appears that it has a reset button. It also has 8-bit versus 16-bit, so I'm assuming that's NES versus Super Nintendo. And I don't have any NES games with me right now to test. I do have, have some at home, but I want to try, this, let's try out the Super Nintendo game first. Got Madden 95, uh, go down to 16-bit. Kind of cool naming convention now. It's flashing me and it's not working. Uh, all right, I'm gonna use the Costco card trick here where I got some isopropyl alcohol on this with a card and we're gonna go in here and see if we can clean out the context, assuming that's the issue. Man, I'm telling you, even if that doesn't fix it, like I've, I've used these things, things before and they're even more finicky than the original like NES and Super Nintendo, but maybe this will work? No. Okay, I, I don't trust this thing. This thing actually smells, it's starting to smell bad. Like there's some magic smoke coming out of there somewhere. I don't know, I don't see any smoke, but it definitely doesn't smell good. It, there's some burning plastic inside of there. So this thing is, I'm just gonna call this thing dead. Yikes, that's strange. Oh yeah, that's some burning plastic. I wish you guys could smell this right now, but that's not a good smell. But guys, that's it for testing in this video. I'm just gonna do one of each in this video. We have clearly have like 15 other consoles we didn't test. I'll, I'll test them off camera, but uh, we got some interesting finds here. Honestly, pretty good, worked out pretty good for me because I paid 71 bucks and those two, the NES Classic and the Super Nintendo Classic are worth like 150 total together. Uh, so that's pretty good. But of course the, the whole, fake knockoff consoles that they sold me is questionable. I don't really care that much, but it's just questionable considering what they advertise on the internet. But I don't know, let me know down below what you guys think. Thanks for watching.
and I'll see you next time. A refurbished PS3, PS4, and Xbox 360 from DK Audis, and in this video, we're going to unbox them, test them out, tear them down, and see if DK Audis is actually refurbishing consoles now. It's been a little over a year since I bought my first refurbished console from DK Audis, and they still claim to be refurbishing all of them, so we're going to start with the PS3 here, open it up, and see this in us. All right, and we first got the, the classic pack, packing peanuts, which is fine if it's packaged well. Let's go ahead and see what's in here. I did order a game. Uh, what did I order? Last of Us. Yeah, nice. Let's take a look at this first. So we got The Last of Us. Ooh, that's a nice condition. Let's see what's inside. It is complete in box. We'll take a closer look at that in a second. I also have my packing slip in here. All right, so here's the packing slip. You can see about The Last of Us. I also bought a PS3 80 gig reverse compatible uh, acceptable system. There's a little QC procedure thing here that says it's 80 gigs. Backwards compatible, yes. Uh, date 121223. Um, Hold on, did they actually delid this thing? That's kind of next level if they actually did that. Well, let's go ahead and take the rest of the stuff out of the box and see what's in here. We should have an OEM controller. Uh, those are two cores right there. All right, and here is our charging cable, our OEM controller, which is a DualShock 3. Hey, that's a nice condition. That's a nice change, no third-party controller. And last but not least, we got our console. All right, I got this thing out of the bubble wrap. Let's take a closer look at it. And it is supposed to be an acceptable condition console, so I expect it to be pretty beat up. And you can tell here from the top, uh, tons of scratches and hold on actually this front flap is completely missing which I, I guess that's fair I think they say on their website that flaps and stuff could be missing because it's acceptable and flip into the back You can see we have a CECH E01 console, which is a backwards compatible uh, 80 gig PS3, which is uh, what we expected here now flip into the side. Wow. 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 Okay. Okay So <laughs> the warranty seal is actually gone Which is amazing. I'm actually kind of sad like I don't see the warranty seal anywhere on here and I, I used to collect those because it was just like a, you know, a nice little keepsake. But it's good to see that it took some feedback, took the warranty seal off of there, and that's good. So now flip it to the front. As you saw, uh, this flap is missing. We've got four USB ports and everything else looks fine. It is, it is clean. It's very beat up, which we expected. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and we'll plug it in in a second. Actually, first I want to take a closer look at this game. You saw it is in nice condition, complete in the box. Disc looks good. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and turn the console on, see if it works. Console is plugged in. Moment of truth. Let's turn the power on. we got a red light. Will it turn on? We're about to find out. Any free games? Nope. <laughs> Don't expect there to be any. But let's make sure it boots up. All right, so console was factory reset. We got it booted up, connected to the internet. Let's go ahead and check and make sure we have 80 gigs on here first. All right, we're on version 4.8. Uh, we're on, yeah, we got 80 gigs of space. Okay, so it makes sense. And I will, I will actually mention something I just noticed is that this this USB-C cable, or USB-C, I mean, this USB mini, mini USB cable is actually like a nice thick cable. That's, that's good. It's not one of those old school cables that are very thin and cheap, but yeah, let's go ahead and put a disc in here. Make sure The Last of Us works. And we'll of course try out a PS1 game, PS2 game, make sure everything works. All right guys, well we have somewhat of a predicament here. I booted up The Last of Us, updated it, played it for like 10 minutes and the console seems to have overheated. <laughs> you can still see that the red light is flashing on the front. Uh, I didn't record anything while I was doing that. I was just kind of playing around for a little bit. So let's go ahead and try to turn the console back on, play again and just uh, see if the same thing happens. Well, I should also note that uh, I've tried to boot up The Last of Us like four or five total times so far, and it's worked one time. It just keeps getting stuck on this loading screen. I know The Last of Us was kind of like a PS3 killer, but it, it should be loading it up at least. Oh, 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 it's booting up. Hold on, hold on. Finally booted up to the main screen. Let's go ahead and <laughs> boot back into the prologue and see if it even makes it that far. So just a little update here. We are finally actually booted into the game, playing the game. Uh, console's been on for like 12 or 13 minutes. Uh, fans are probably 50% speed. We're blowing out a little bit of hot air. It doesn't feel like super hot or anything, but this is the true test. Let's just go ahead and start playing the game and see how long this thing lasts. Oh, oh no. All right, I saw some frames drop, which is, I'm, I'm not sure if that's, that might be completely normal for The Last of Us on the PS3. Like I said, the PS3, or The Last of Us is kind of like a PS3 killer, but the, the fans just ramped up to like, I don't know, 60 or 70%. Uh, let's just, uh, let's keep playing. Oh, yikes. There it is. All right, so we got about three and a half minutes into gameplay, uh, and it overheated. And yep, there you can see, we got the red light flashing. And honestly, I don't think the fans were even at 100% yet. I'm just using the ear test, but I think it was like maybe 60 to 80%, something like that. But um, I honestly thought they were like actually refurbishing consoles now at this point, but considering they sent me a console that dies within five minutes of playing a game, uh, I guess they either didn't refurbish this thing or I don't know what the deal is here, but let's go ahead and try out a PS2 game and then we'll open this bad boy up and see what's happening inside this thing. All right guys, so I played this PS2 game for like five minutes and it's working without an issue except for the fact that the, the fans are just going crazy. It's kind of like 
PS4 jet engine kind of situation here. But anyways, I just want to open this thing up and see what's happening inside. So let's do it. So first thing I'll do here is pull out the hard drive and kind of just, uh, that gives us a good gauge as if this console is going to be dusty. Um, if you guys remember from the Desert PS3, that was kind of my first indication that the, the Desert PS3 was just not going to be clean at all. So let's pull this out, take a look and oh yeah, yeah, it's clean. All right. So they probably did clean out the inside. Maybe. I don't know. Let's open it up. All right. Top cover's off and it looks pretty clean there. I got all these screws out. Let's go ahead and take this piece off. And this is kind of the, the big reveal here. Let's see. Yeah, it's pretty clean. We've got some fingerprints here, probably from the person who cleaned it up. I see you guys. You cleaned out something. That's good to see. But now here's our real test. It's going down all the way to the throw paste, obviously. And then the bottom part of the PS3 is usually the dirtiest part. So uh, there is a chance they open it up, clean out this top cover, put it back, and that was it. But yeah, let's, uh, I'll come back once I'm all the way down to the throw paste, and we'll see what it looks like. All right, let's take this piece off and, oh, wow, okay. That is pretty clean down there, hold on. Let's just do a little quick comparison to the Desert PS3 if you wanna show a clip on the screen compared to this one. Yeah, this one is, uh, oh yeah. Okay, they actually came down here and cleaned that out. All right, big reveal time here. We got this loose, let's see, did they? Wow, yeah, they did delit it because you can, <laughs> you can see the heat, heat spreader just pop straight off there. That actually just makes this whole situation even more confusing because uh, not only did they replace thermal paste, but they delitted the, the, the console, which if you don't know, basically that means that they take the heat spreader off and, and take that off. Usually by default from factory, there's like a bunch of glue there that holds it down and it's really difficult to pop it off without uh, breaking the console even further. But, but let's think about this. So my theory here is that the console came into their shop uh, with either yellow light of death, overheating, something along those lines. And they decided that they were going to open it up, replace thermal paste, delid the console, see if that would fix it, uh, which is a good, you know, good, good option there. Probably does fix it. But um, they put it back together and said and tested it for like five minutes and said, hey, it works. Let's go ahead and ship it off. Uh, that wasn't quite the case, obviously, because you can't play The Last of Us for more than about five minutes of gameplay without it overheating. Uh, yeah, I'm torn on this console. Like, they clearly are putting in more work now. They're at least cleaning it up, uh, replacing thermal paste, delitting, which is actually impressive. But it, they're still sending out consoles that are broken, which is not great. But yeah, let's put this thing back together and move on to the next console. Now, next up, we have a 360 and a PS4. You can see the label says DK Oldies on it. Uh, so you know it's from them. Let's open it up, see what's inside. All right, we got some, um, what is this? Oh no, come on, man. Really? <laughs> All right, so as you can see, we have an official 360 controller, which I had to pay $10 extra for. We got Fallout 4, Assassin's Creed 3 for the 360, PS4, 500 gig player, system player pack, whatever that means. Um, and it's supposed to be the original PS4, not a PS4 Slim. And then we have the 60 gig Xbox 360 standard. Nobody knows which model that is but you know hopefully it's a, a good one um and these case wow these cases are actually like in a little plastic bag that's kind of cool and then the part that i kind of scoffed at earlier is that we saw this uh old school power adapter which is just these third party power adapters for the 360 are just n not good but anyways let's move on to the 360 controller here and hey yeah that looks pretty good uh definitely oem Battery pack is, is a new battery pack, which is good. Pretty clean. We don't have too much of the gamer juice. It is pretty yellowed and stuff, but that's just what happens with 360 controllers. But yeah, other than that, looks looks pretty good. Feels pretty good. We got an HDMI cable in here. We have a power cord for the PS5 or the PS4, obviously. And the PS4, do we have an OEM controller? It appears so. A hey, nice. And this one, oh, that one's in nice condition as well. Hey. Okay. Well, <laughs> the back does not say that, but the the rest of it actually looks pretty good. Oh, these are definitely new sticks. Yeah, I won't, I won't say they're bad, but they're definitely different now. Wait, hold on. <laughs> I just noticed that this controller is like chewed up right there. Not a big deal, but when you're going like this, you can definitely feel that, that chewiness right there. All right, now let's move on to the consoles next. We got the PS4 here and the 360 here. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I have no idea which 360 model this is because they don't specify in their listing. They just say 60 gig or 20 gig or 120 gig. And 60 gig could be a few different consoles. Like I, I think there was a 60 gig Xenon and a Falcon and a Jasper. Don't quote me on that, but I'll, I'll look it up. But there's just multiple models and you can also just throw any old 60 gig hard drive onto any old 360. So no idea if I got a good motherboard or not here. Uh, maybe we got a Jasper, I really hope so. Uh, no, that's a Falcon, I believe. And it actually has a service date on it, which is not the best sign. But yeah, overall the console looks pretty clean. I think I bought the acceptable version, maybe. I don't remember actually. Uh, that clicks and yeah we got a 60 gig hard drive here on the side now i will say it kind of looks like this console's never been opened before because if you look at these holes here like 95 percent of the time when i get a 360 and it's been opened before it has just some rough marks around these holes because you have to basically poke into them uh, to open the case up so that's 
interesting. I, I guess if they did a pro job on it, it won't show any marks. But if we pop off the faceplate, we should see if there's still a warranty seal intact here. Nope, it's broken. Okay, so definitely been open before, um, which is a good sign. Hopefully they refurbished it. Let's put that to the side and take a look at the PS4. All right, let's see what's in here. All right, we got the fat PS4. This appears to be like the OG OG because we get a glossy finish here, not a matte finish. And it is very beat up. Now I did buy the acceptable version, so that's kind of what I expected. Flipping to the front looks fine as well. But now flipping to the back, let's take a look at the manufacturer date. So first of all, we have the model CUH1115A manufactured in August 2014. So yeah, this is less than a year after launch. So it is truly one of the launch PS4s. And you can see it's definitely been opened before because all of these uh, warranty seals are gone. Again, no DK Audi's warranty stickers on here, which is good to see. But yeah, hopefully this thing's been opened up before because these launch PS4s, um, yeah, these things are like jet engines. So let's go ahead and start with the 360, plug it in, turn it on, see if it works. Hold on, sorry guys, I forgot to take a look at these these games here. And yeah, they did came in these they came in these little uh, packages right here, which is pretty nice. I guess that's to package the or to protect the game. Now Assassin's Creed 3, complete in box. Got both the discs in there. And we got Fallout 4 for the PS4. Looks good as well. Let's take a look at this disc. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and turn on 360, see if it works. All right, guys, console's plugged in, ready to go. And uh, one, one funny thing I found inside of the packing box or the shipping box is a, uh, a broken silly band. You guys remember these things? I don't know why that was in there, but just an interesting find. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Three, two, one. We got power. Let's see if the disk drive opens up. It does. It's Yeah, that band looks new. That's good to see. But let's go ahead and turn this console on. There it is. It's sweet. All right, boot it up. That's what I love about the 360 is how quickly you get to the main menu here. Let's go ahead and put in Assassin's Creed 3, which is the game that I bought from them. And one more thing while this thing is booting up, I, I realized I forgot to look at the back of the packing slip, which actually has our QC procedures for both the PS4 and the 360. So the 360 was, I guess, done on January 9th, 2024. HDMI, yes, plug B. Interesting, they go by plug numbers. And we got functionality confirmed, drive belt replaced, thermal paste replaced, capacitors inspected, uh, acceptable. Okay, cool. And then the PS4, also clock battery, thermal paste, functionality confirmed. Okay, I mean, if these are matching up, then that's good to see now, <laughs> hold on. There's actually no condition listed there, which it was definitely an acceptable condition console, but yeah, let's go ahead and make sure this game works. So the game is working. It's been on this uh, initial cutscene for like three to five minutes, so I haven't actually played it all, and wow, what do you know? As soon as I say that, I'm actually playing now. And yeah, so the game is working. It's blowing out some, I don't know, I'd say it's some warm air. It's, it's not cold air, which is a good sign, so that thermal paste probably has been replaced. And one more thing I noticed is the controller definitely has some replacement thumbsticks right here. So you can see right here, the texture is just like slightly different. They're actually pretty good for third-party thumbsticks, but they probably had, you know, really worn down ones before, so they swapped them out. This is an OEM controller right here that you can see is, is worn down itself. Um, I will say the OEM ones just feel better. They just feel OEM. Uh, these are not bad though. And they're certainly better than the third party controllers that they sent me in the past. But anyways, there's not much else to look at on this console other than the storage. We can make sure it's 60 gigs. Yeah, it's close enough. And the initial setup is not grayed out, so family controls are not on here. But let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what's going on on the inside. Got the bottom cover off, and so far everything is very clean. I don't see like any dust at all there, which is good to see. We are missing one, two screws, not a big deal, but just something to note. Actually, three screws, but again, not a big deal, just something to note. I am curious why they're missing three of the long screws, though, because these things are so easy to find. I'm sure they have like an abundance of them, but whatever. Let's go ahead and take this top piece off, see what it looks like beneath here. And top piece is clean, you can see. And heat sink is clean there, heat sink is clean there. Let's go ahead and pull the disc drive out. And yeah, it definitely looks very clean in there, wow. Got the fan out, got the shroud out, those are both very clean. Next up, we'll take the entire motherboard out, take the heat sinks off, take a look at the thermal paste. So down to the X-clamps now, we're gonna go ahead and pop them off. And in case you haven't seen this before, this is an X-clamp removal tool that somebody in the comments told me about like six months ago. You just slide it kind of under like that and it pops off the X-clamp very easily. It's actually a whole lot easier than what I used to do in the past, which was basically like a flathead screwdriver. And yeah, it just makes the whole process a lot easier for the most part. There it is, pops right off. Let's go ahead and check the thermal paste. We'll go ahead and just lift it off like, like so. And yep, that's definitely been replaced. Nice, dude. Okay, okay, I see you. <laughs> All right, <laughs> refurbishing some consoles. All right, let's go ahead and take off this X clamp as well. Put that one off. Let's go ahead and pop off the heat sink here. And yep, we got thermal paste on those as well. Guys, I'm actually <laughs> very surprised that we are looking at refurbished consoles from DK Woody's right now, uh, based on what happened in 2023 and 2022. But hey man, at least we got some improvements here. Uh, last but not least, let's go ahead and open up the disk drive here, and I wanna see if they did anything inside of this. So I have the disk drive open now, and it looks like they came in here and cleaned it up because I don't see like any dust or dirt on either side of it. Uh, this band right here also looks, looks new or cleaned one of the two, and then we also have some more grease, I think, on these three rails. It looks new, might not be, 
not 100% sure. But there you go, guys. We finally have a DK Oides console that is fully refurbished and fully working. You know, the, the PS3 was refurbished but didn't actually work. Uh, but anyways, this console is good to go. Let's go ahead and move on to the PS4. I got the PS4 plugged in. Let's go ahead and turn it on see if it works. Three, two, one. We got power. Let's see if we have any free games. Nope, nothing in it. If you guys remember the last time I bought a uh, PS4 from DK Oldies, it they clearly never tested it because it still had the users, the, the, the old user's data on it, everything. I think it might have even had a disc in it, maybe. I don't remember, but um, that, that was pretty wild. We'll see if this works. So the PS4 controller appears to not be working. It is plugged in. I tried plugging it in multiple, multiple times. Let's try the other USB port here. Okay, great. So either the PS4 controller is dead or the cable's dead or the ports are dead. Let me try another cable. All right, I'm trying another cable and that seems to be dead as well. All right, guys, so final test here. I have the same cable, same USB port into the DK Audis controller here. Doesn't turn on, doesn't do anything on the screen, but then I plug it into this other random controller that I have laying around from the Hampton Hall, which is a series I did recently, and it just works perfectly. And this controller is just ugly and stuff, but okay, uh, great, thanks. So, <laughs> so, you know, maybe they refurbished the console, but they didn't refurbish the controller since it just doesn't work. Uh, so let's rely on this Hampton Hall controller for now which only partially works in the first place. We can see it is factory reset, obviously. Now let's go ahead and put a game in and make sure it works. So we got Fallout 4 here, make sure it boots up. Nice. All right, so um, do they say in their terms that they refurbished the disk drive as well? Let me, let me check. Yes, yeah, so I don't see anything specifically on their, on their website about the disk drive, but clearly the disk drive needs to be f f pulling in the disk is like a part of making sure it's fully functional. And I like, it, it's, you know, it's, it's mostly good, but like, yeah, all it needed, all the rollers needed were a cleaning there, and it should be able to pull it in just fine. Uh, so I, I would think that's part of their refurbishing process is if it doesn't pull the game in all the way, it'll they clean off the rollers or whatever. But let's make sure the game actually boots up now. All right, guys, so we moved on from Fallout 4 to Gran Turismo Sport since I could boot it up pretty quickly without having to install the entire game. Uh, I've been playing for like 10 or 15 minutes, and it was working, working without an issue. The fans are blowing out some warm air. It's actually not a jet engine yet, which is, is you know, uh, surprising, actually. But uh, yeah, this console is good to go so far. Uh, I guess I'll, let me connect to the internet, make sure it's not banned or anything, and then we'll move on to opening this thing up. Sweet, so it looks like we're good to go here. I just connected to the internet, logged in and everything, and you can see there's a million just random things popping up now. Apex Legends, why did that pop up? I don't know, but it's working, not banned. So this console is good to go, except for the disk drive is weird and the controller doesn't work, but let's open it up and see what it looks like on the inside. So I got the bottom piece off here and it's definitely very clean, so it's for sure been opened up before. Uh, fan looks clean and everything. Let me go ahead and tear this down to the, Maybe the disk drive first and see what that looks like. All right, guys, I got the disk drive out and you can see there's two rollers here. So basically one right here, one right here. And that's essentially what it, what the disk rolls on to go into the disk drive. And you probably can't see on camera, but I can look at them and see that they're definitely dusty. So all they had to do was clean these off and that probably would have fixed the roller issue. I don't know 100% sure because I'm not fixing it right now, but that's most likely the issue. Uh, but yeah, so far this thing looks mostly clean. There's still definitely some dust in it. So I don't think they tore it all the way down, but maybe, I don't know. Let's keep going down to the main board. So I got this plate off and at this point, I'm a bit concerned this thing was actually not clean all the way because you can see just a bunch of dust on this panel. Actually, you can see it pretty good on this panel. You, you probably can't, but it's definitely dusty. And then this board right here is pretty dusty, which in and of itself is not a big deal, but it kind of tells you that uh, not sure if they took it down this far because if they were taking it down this far, why did they not just clean it anyways? All right, but this here should be the big reveal of the thermal paste to see if they did anything there. Let's go ahead and check and Yep, that definitely looks replaced. It's even more confusing. Why did they replace the thermal paste but not finish cleaning the board? Like, it's actually, yeah, it's super dusty in here. What, <laughs> what in the world, dude? Like, look at that. It, it, again, it doesn't really show up on camera very well, but the entire this entire section is dusty. But guys, I guess that's it. And honestly, my conclusion at the end of this video is that DK Audis has made some improvements, but they still have a long ways to go considering we had an overheated PS3, bad PS4 4 controller, bad PS4 rollers, they're partway there. They're making improvements, but yeah, still not good for how much you're paying and what they're claiming to do online. Uh, so guys, let me know down below what you think about this and thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. So guys, thanks for watching this entire five hour compilation of videos. If you made it this far, make sure to let me know down below what your favorite video is. And guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.